Welcome to my channel, if you have already seen this manga, then I specially made a continuation at your request, so I advise you to watch to the end, enjoy watching. This story took place in a world called Yukai. This is a world in which every creature must prove its existence only through force. This is an amazing world with unusual architecture and various mythical creatures. One of the Yukai was very angry. He bared his teeth and blood was running down his face. And he himself looked like a tiger man. He was jumping from one rock to another and trying to run away from someone, this creature was very fast and agile. At some point it stopped and decided to look back. This tiger man said that he would not allow his enemy to proclaim himself the mountain ruler of the kingdom of people. Suddenly, he appeared in front of him, the same Yukai about whom our story will be, the same creature who had no equal here, he hit the tiger man and broke the rock. The tiger fell to the ground and with its back a block of different stones began to fly apart and crack. He screamed in pain, his blood began to stain his face, he did not know how to resist this creature. The guy defeated the tiger and, as a sign of his victory, put his foot on its back to show his dominance over him. He looked at his opponent lying on the floor and said that the tiger boasted a lot when he challenged him to fight and now he, like a real coward, tried to escape. The fox said that he was able to defeat the tiger for the third time and this means that he is a full-fledged winner and has no equal. The fox stepped on his face and warned the tiger that he and his friends would never bear their fangs to foxes again. The fox said that his opponent ignored all the warnings that he told him and still entered the fight and therefore he does not know whether to spare the tiger or not. But his opponent at that moment began to experience strong anger and aggression. His eyes began to glow red. He changed his form and turned from a man into a real tiger, his size became twice as large and he became much stronger. The fox looked like a small puppy in comparison. The fox at that moment began to laugh and said that when a tiger enlarges his body, he does not become stronger, he only becomes bigger and has more meat in him, but this does not mean that he can win. He hit the tiger right in the face with his fist and his blow had incredible energy force that caused great damage. The tiger's body could not withstand such damage and he experienced incredible pain and a huge hole appeared inside his body. Blood began to flow from the body of this tiger and there was so much of it that bloody rain began, but the fox just stood and watched as his opponent died. This guy was not as simple as it might seem at first glance, he was the head of the fox Yukai and was the king of their kingdom. But in fact, this guy did not intend to become a king, he dreamed of completely different things. But it so happened that one day he was able to defeat one very strong dragon monster who had been chasing foxes for 500 years. And after she defeated this monster, the foxes chose him as their king. But the guy was very tired, he just wanted to sleep. He liked that after he became the king of the foxes, they constantly began to bother him with various questions and requests that he did not want to solve. On one of these days, a man came to him and demanded something from him, but the fox asked this man who he was. The man replied that he was a follower of the Dharma and a monk from the human kingdom. This man was very unhappy that yokai foxes caused a lot of harm to people and caused great damage to humanity and he was very angry at the foxes. The assistant to our main character reported that this strange old man defeated as many as twelve foxes using his strange gestures, which he calls martial arts, the king asked what martial arts are. In those days, there was no border between the Yukai kingdom and humans, so Yukai often did not visit people and caused problems for them. The king was very tired of the constant problems in the kingdom and did not want to solve another problem with this monk, so he allowed him to find the fox that created problems for him and do whatever he wanted with her. Nak heard the answer of the king of these foxes and decided to listen to his words, he activated his combat ability and realized that the main fox that was causing him problems was the king. The fox at that moment understood that you couldn't just get away from this old man and would still have to fight him. The monk struck the ground with his staff and wanted to kill the fox with one blow, but he missed because the fox managed to jump away in time. The king noticed that the physical strength and speed of this man is not inferior to Yu Kai and he is just as capable a warrior as they are. The monk began to strike very quickly with his palms and constantly controlled his breathing. The king at this moment assumed that his movement was called martial arts. But the king managed to easily fight them off by blocking them with his tails. He looked at his tail and noticed that after these attacks he had lost a lot of hair from his tail. He understood that in the human world, this monk was most likely a very strong warrior. 
but for the fox king, he was nothing more than an ant playing on his leg. The fox, with one movement of his hand, threw the enemy very far and did it with such ease that the monk did not even have time to understand anything. This man fell to the ground and sat near a tree, he was coming to his senses after such a strong attack and the king could not understand how you can hit someone and not kill him after that. His assistant approached the monk and saw that he was now unconscious, after which he asked the king what to do with this man. The king replied that there is no point in killing an insect that crawls under your feet. After all, it does not interfere much, but can only irritate you at times. This is how the king spared this monk and sent him to the kingdom of people, saving this man's life. But this man apparently went crazy because after fifteen days he returned back and again gave the lab and gave the king of Yukai. This time he was not alone and brought with him a comrade named Jan Sambong. His comrade also made strange movements, most likely these were martial arts and tried to attack the king using the energy of Yin and Yang. The fox king fought off these two crazy people using only his nine tails, he didn't even move during the fight. The king was thinking throughout the battle that if he let these people out of here alive again, then they would come back again and drag even more people here and this cannot be allowed. He used his tails to wrap them around the monk's neck and strangle him. She began to choke two opponents at once and this is the only way to end this disgrace. He didn't want to kill these two people but it was the only way. Stop him and make sure they don't bother him anymore. After he killed them he said that these guys should have retreated when they saw the strength of their opponent but their choice was to fight so they died in battle. He looked at the two lying corpses and after that he decided to leave here and he left the dead guys here. When he was leaving here, he suddenly heard a woman's voice shouting that someone had killed her older brother. He turned his head and decided to look carefully at the woman who had just said that her dead brother was lying here. The girl sat near the body of her deceased older brother and cried, she said that now she would have to survive alone and she did not understand how she would do it. King all my life I considered myself a cold-blooded yukai who does not feel pity for his opponents, much less for the creatures of the human race, but when he saw a crying woman, something changed inside him. He began to experience strange sensations that were inaccessible to him. Previously, he did not understand why he now feels so unpleasant and feels guilty for his action. Her tears looked like chicken droppings but nevertheless did not evoke negative emotions in him and the king of the foxes, it was disturbing. He felt very sorry for this girl and for some reason he wanted to feel sorry for her, but at the same time he understood that he was not guilty of anything, because these guys themselves came here and no one forced them to fight. She sat in the cemetery all alone and crows flew across the sky and looked at her as if she were prey who would soon die too. The fox became very interested in this girl. He decided to watch her and a week has passed since her brother died. But she didn't even drink water during all this time. He asked his partner if he was able to find out why this girl did not return to the human world for a whole week. His assistant replied that he was talking with rats and they told him that this girl's whole life depended on her brother and he had a lot of enemies during his life. The king began to understand the essence of the problem and he felt a huge burden of responsibility for this girl because because of his action she is now suffering. He knew that if this girl returned to the human world, she would die because her brother's enemies would simply kill her and she would not be able to defend herself. The king's assistant said that it is also dangerous for this girl to remain in the yokai world and she will not be able to survive here. The king said that this girl will die of this hunger faster than the hungry yukai get to her. She sat in one place for a week and didn't move, all she could do was cry and suddenly the girl heard someone approaching her and turned her head. A plate of human food was placed in front of her, it was very tasty and smelled nice, it was prepared especially for this girl. The king put this food for her and said that she needed to eat well and live happily so that the soul of her older brother could calm down and move on to another world. She didn't understand how I reacted to this fox because he was the killer of her brother, but at the same time he was not indifferent to her fate. He thought that if this woman was going to suffer everywhere she went, why didn't she just stay here next to the king and live with him for the rest of her life? Fortunately, this girl was very smart. She understood the fox's intention and the circumstances in which her life is now, so she accepted them and agreed. Without hesitation, she agreed to stay in the Yukai world and accepted the fox king's offer and now tried to create a new life for herself here. Day by day she got used to the new world and tried to quickly adapt among the strict laws and rules of Yukai, but no matter how difficult it was here, she began to smile and live a full life. 
The king felt helpless next to her because he fell in love with her beautiful face and could not help himself, she was the best creature he had ever met on his way. Even while looking at her from afar, he felt a peace that he had never experienced in his entire long life as a yukai. But suddenly everything changed and the king lost all his peace and harmony and everything he loved suddenly disappeared. This girl was hung from a pole and killed. She died a very terrible death and was tortured before she died. Sharp spears and thorns were sticking out of her body, her blood flowed down the pillar, and when the king saw this, he was furious and was ready to destroy everyone who did this. The black fox fell to his knees in front of the king and began to cry. He said that he had committed a very terrible sin. The black fox told the king that he allowed scoundrels into their territory who came to pay tribute to the king and he brought happiness to the young lady. The king stood near the dead body of the girl and looked at her, he still could not believe that she was dead. Her body was mutilated and her beautiful natural beauty was ruined by the thugs who killed her. Anger filled the body and mind of the fox king and he wanted to take revenge on the people who did this to the girl he loved. The king found a rat that killed his beloved and the rat replied that he did it only because he was given an order and he carried out the order of his master. The fox could no longer stop tormenting the rat and mutilating his body. He wanted to make this creature suffer. The king was looking for everyone involved in the murder of his beloved and he found a scumbag who knew about it but did nothing, it was the timber wolf who helped the killers find the girl. The king caught up with this wolf otherwise he would break his bones and make him suffer, but then he still killed him. He went to a big pig who was also involved in the murder of his beloved girl, but the pig said that the fox should not protect a human girl and this is against the rules of yokai. The white fox did not want to hear anything from this scumbag and dealt him his strongest blow with which he destroyed a large pig and deprived him of his head. The white fox killed a huge number of creatures, he killed everyone who was even slightly involved in the death of his beloved girl. In the end, his revenge grew to a large scale and the magical forest was filled with corpses. Even those who were close to the king were still killed, no one could escape his wrath, he took revenge on everyone he considered guilty of this. Their blood did not spread throughout the Yukai kingdom and it did not have time to dry even for a moment because the king could not remove his thirst for revenge and the emptiness that was in him forced him to commit new murders. He already thought that he would start to feel better when he killed all these creatures, but his pain did not disappear anywhere and the emptiness became even larger. His heart was still full of indignation and it continued to beat furiously and wanted to return the harmony that was before. But he understood that it was impossible to return anything back, and this thought made him feel sick, he was tired of such a life. A white bright light appeared in the bloody puddle and flew into the air. The white fox turned his attention to this bright light and tried to take a closer look at it to understand what it was. It was an amazing phenomenon, among the darkness and hundreds of corpses, a white, pure, immaculate light appeared from the bloody pool. He looked at it closer and saw that it was a flower bud that suddenly appeared out of nowhere, it sprouted from a pool of blood of fallen yukai. This bud opened into a real flower that grew from a pool of blood and the bloody rain could not stain its petals. The white fox was surprised to see a lotus here in a pool of blood, he did not understand where this flower came from. But over time, he realized that this was a childish trick that only heavenly creatures are capable of. They say that you are the same immortal Neza. White fox I told my flower that if he came here to prevent the king from carrying out his bloody retribution, then the flower is already too late and the king does not want to see any more bloodshed. He asked this flower to disappear and not show itself to him again, or if it does not disappear, the king will pick it and destroy it. The lotus at that moment began to glow with a bright light and explore incredible energy. This energy blinded the white fox and he had never seen anything like it, it was something new and amazing for him. He began to lose control of his body and realized that the white light was taking him to another space and he could not resist it. When the light disappeared, the white fox saw something very unusual and was surprised. His eyes were so wide open that you could see his sea blue pupils. At that moment when he fell into despair and lost the will to live, taking pity on him, something unexpectedly came to his aid. This creature helps all living things in this world not to go astray and guides them on the true path so that they can live again and do the right things. It was the Tathagata. God asked the white fox if he would like to renounce his identity forever and stop being a yukai. But in exchange for this he could become an ordinary person. The white fox asked God in surprise what this meant and thought about this proposal, 
because being a human being is much worse than being a fox. His first thought was that this was complete stupidity and turning into a human would be the stupidest decision he could ever make. However, upon reflection, he realized that he could avoid the boring life of a yukai and did not find a single reason for refusal. He was ready to commit suicide so turning into a human might be a good decision. The white fox made his decision and turned to God with a request to turn him into a man. Of course, this was not for nothing. And for this, within one thousand years he will have to atone for his sins and do good deeds. He was very surprised when God asked him to do good deeds and all sorts of nonsense for a thousand years that never brought him pleasure. But the white fox even here agreed and accepted God's conditions. He said that he would do good deeds to atone for his sins. For an immortal yukai, a person's life and a thousand years of good deeds seemed like a very short period of time. But after one year of good deeds, everything seemed not as simple as he initially thought. One thousand years of good deeds turned into an incredibly long time for him and he counted every year you looked forward to when it would all be over. The thought of giving up occurred to him many times. Is it normal to exchange the thousand-year life of a great yukai creature for a human life that does not even reach hundreds of years? He constantly thought about his agreement with the great deity, what a source of pride. And fortunately, he was able to endure all the difficulties and thoughts that came to his mind. The Tathagata again called the white fox to him and praised him for the time of repentance that he had been in the human world and said that the fox had done many good deeds. He replied that he was grateful to the deity for preventing the yukai from attacking people and this was the most valuable merit because it benefited the entire human world. Tathagata extended his hand to the guy and said that now he had to live the life of a man and asked him to give him everything that the fox would no longer need. He agreed to give the deity what he asked for, despite the fact that it was difficult for him to part with it. He began to collect his blue energy from his stomach and draw it out. Then he began to draw out the energy from his chest and also give it to the deity. He tried to lift up this energy sphere and pull it out of his body. He opened his mouth to me and through it he was able to draw out the great energy of his body. This energy sphere is called the fox bead, this is his source of power that he has been perfecting for thousands of years. He was sad that he had to give this bead away because he had worked for many years to improve it. God asked the white fox if he would regret his decision in the future and if he would want to change anything. He proudly put his hands on his belt and asked God, does he look like someone who will regret his actions? God said that the white fox chooses the great chariot through which he will strive to achieve awakening for the benefit of all sentient beings. The white fox felt that his body was evaporating and he felt reborn. Yokai's life was constantly pressing on him from different sides, but now, having thrown it away, he felt lightness and happiness in the human world. His soul was in a pink petal that sought to the human city in order to find his new body. Petal tried to find a worthy body for the new owner and therefore was in no hurry. He flew across the city and at the very edge of the city he found a large building that looked like a palace. Through an open window in this building, a petal entered the room and flew to a boy who was lying on the bed and sleeping. He was already very close to this boy and would soon have to come into contact with him. The petal chose the most suitable body for the new soul that will settle in this body. He touched the edge of his paper to this boy's blue and magic happened in the room. Thanks to the great God, he has now become a man and will live as a man in this world. His story begins only now and the white fox opens his eyes for the first time while in a human body and now begins a new life. From the house came the voice of a nanny who was heading to the young master's room. She said that the young master had barely reached puberty and was still alive. She climbed the stairs and headed to his room on the second floor, she thought that she had already tried many medications and expensive procedures and none of this brought results. The nanny suggested that the heavens had turned their backs on them and the young master would never be able to live a normal life again. But when she walked into his room, what she saw shocked her and she didn't understand how she needed to react to it. The young master was sitting on his bed in complete darkness, he looked very worried and dangerous. His behavior was unusual for a boy and the nanny was so scared that she dropped the bowl of water on the floor. He sat on his bed with a dissatisfied expression on his face and looked very bad. The nanny immediately ran to his parents to tell him what happened. The father was very shocked by the news that his son Yunho woke up and feels healthy. Pozzelny told the gentleman that the nanny was so surprised that she turned pale and could not speak normally, but she ordered the syllabus to urgently inform the gentleman about this. The father burst into tears of joy and dropped all his business. 
he said that he needed to return home quickly and see it with his own eyes. The window in the young master's room illuminated the space of the room. He was tired from his bed and realized that it was very difficult for him to move and his legs. It was as if they had forgotten how to walk correctly. The guy didn't understand what was happening, he just thought he heard a woman scream from the next room. He saw a mirror in his room and decided to come closer to it in order to see his reflection. When he looked in the mirror, what he saw there surprised him and he didn't understand how to react to it. He was scared when he saw his new appearance in the reflection, he looked like a teenager and didn't understand what had happened to him. It was unusual for him to be in such a body and he began to scream out of fear. His wax scream was heard by the whole house, he screamed so loudly that people's ears were blocked and he asked why he looked like that. He thought that when he was transferred to a new body he would be a child or an infant, but for some reason he looked like a teenager and did not understand how this happened. His head began to hurt very badly and he felt that memories from a past life were loading in his head. He remembered everything that happened to him in this body before he moved into it and all these memories made his head hurt very much. He couldn't understand what kind of pictures were flashing before his eyes, new memories constantly appeared in his head and he didn't know what to do with them. When the last memories loaded into his head, he realized that this was the memories of the owner of this body and he felt a little better. He was in the body of the eldest son of the lord of a huge trading alliance called the Supreme Coalition and his name is Yunho. His name was exactly the same as in his previous life. He was very weak physically and mentally so a year ago when his mother died he was so shocked that he stopped eating and drinking and after the incident he developed a chronic illness and eventually died. Yunho couldn't believe that this all happened to him, it looked like a bad dream that he still needed to get used to. He was disappointed because in his previous life he was the king of the Yukai world, and now he was placed in the body of a cowardly weakling who lived a worthless life. He began to blame God for setting him up and moving him into this terrible body, but he was counting on a different result. Yunho fell to the floor and his head began to feel very dizzy, he couldn't keep his balance and he felt very ill. He sat on the floor and thought that if he wanted to die, it would be better for him to die than to be tested in a new body. But he realized that in this situation he could only blame himself. He needed to foresee this and put forward conditions to God that would exclude such situations. The Tathagata asked the guy before moving him to a new body whether he would regret his decision in the future and the guy himself answered this question. He began to get even angrier at himself because he took responsibility for his decision and there was no point in blaming God for it. He needed to calm down and come to terms with the fact that he was now the master of this new body and he needed to cope with it and get used to it. He began to look for a solution to the problem and realized that he could strengthen this body using natural energy, the most remarkable thing about natural energy is that it can turn a weakling into a war, make him even stronger. He got to his feet and looked at himself in the mirror again, his reflection still looked completely different from how he imagined himself. Yunho felt that his stomach hurt very badly and he urgently needed to eat something before he started improving his body. He opened a drawer in his desk and tried to look for at least some food there. At that moment, his father ran into his room and called Yunho in a joyful voice. He couldn't believe his eyes because his son was now calmly walking around the room. He could not hold back his tears and shouted that this brat was still able to get out of bed if you were standing on your own two feet and joy filled his father. He took the boy by the hands and asked what happened to him and whether something hurt the guy or whether he was feeling well. The father wanted to know everything that was happening to him now. Yunho was scared by this behavior of his father. He had not yet gotten used to the fact that this man was an important person for him. A memory appeared in his head where he and his father are walking next to him and his father tells him that he always needs to go forward even if it seems that it's too late. Yunho looked at this man in surprise and called him his father, he would be delighted that his memories are mixed with the memories of this boy and he perceives them as his own. The father was very glad that the boy recognized him and he said that he is the lord of this place, his name is Hajinyu. His tears flowed down his cheeks and he tried to look at his son. He tried to touch his hair and feel his living face because everyone thought that the boy was already dying. The father felt that his son was now very hungry and ordered the nanny to quickly bring some food to feed the boy. The nanny replied that she would do it as quickly as possible. Life began in the house. Everyone was busy with their own affairs and tried to help the young lord get comfortable as quickly as possible. The nanny, as promised, prepared the food very quickly and tried to make it very tasty so that the boy would enjoy eating it. 
The father told his son that he could start eating but asked him not to rush and eat slowly so as not to get burned by the hot soup. The guy was surprised when he saw human food in front of him, he forgot that in this body he would have to eat exactly this food and everything that people cook. When he was a yukai, he tried human food several times out of curiosity, but the taste was disgustingly bitter and caused a wild rejection of their food. He scooped rice into his spoon and thought that he didn't want to eat it, but since he had already become a man, he had to get used to such food and understand its taste. He put the spoon in his mouth and tasted the food and he tried to feel it and understand how good it was. When the taste of this rice soup that his nanny prepared for him began to be felt on his taste buds, he experienced incredible sensations. The father saw the dissatisfied face of his son and asked what happened, he thought that the boy felt bad again. Yunho was silent for a few seconds and chewed this food, then he swallowed it and asked everyone present what it was. The nanny was scared when she saw the reaction of the young master. She said that it was rice cooked over low heat with finely chopped vegetables and meat. The nanny said that she prepared this dish because she knows that the young master likes this dish and did not even add seasonings to it. But the boy surprised everyone when he heard the name of this dish, he smiled and said that it was all incredibly tasty. He very quickly finished all the soup that was in his plate and immediately asked for another portion. He liked it so much that he couldn't stop. Yunho couldn't even imagine that human food could be so tasty, he understood that this is a huge plus in the human world and he likes the food here. He stopped being upset because he was transferred to a human body and this world began to seem to him not such a bad place. His father raised his glass and said that today is the happiest day of his life because his son woke up. He gathered a lot of people at his place in honor of this holiday and said that he wanted to share this toast with everyone who lives on this earth with him. The whole city came to congratulate the Lord on the fact that his son woke up and a big drinking party and a great holiday for everyone began in the city. But one person in this city still did not go to the holiday and decided not to congratulate the Lord on such an event. This man was sitting in the dark in his gazebo and reading a book. The stranger was dissatisfied with the fact that the city was noisy, so she asked her maid what happened. The maid smiled and told her mistress that the young master had woken up. The girl was so shocked and surprised by this news that she threw her book on the floor and jumped out of her seat. He asked the maid if her brother really woke up after such a long sleep. Yunho started jogging in the morning to renew his body and improve it. These morning runs were hard for him and he had to force himself to do it because it was impossible to live in such a body. He couldn't run very much because he got tired very quickly and it made him angry. After all, he didn't have these problems in the previous case. He stopped near the entrance to the castle and decided to catch his breath a little, he was very tired during this time while running. It was unusual for him to be in a human body at night, he didn't understand what the problem was and why his strength was running out so quickly. He was constantly watched by the workers of this palace who signed books and wrote chronicles in them. They were very surprised that this guy was running around the courtyard again, they didn't understand where he had so much energy and desire to become better. The clerk was very surprised because the boy had been running for ten days in a row and the young master became strange after waking up, as if something had entered him. The second man answered that in the palace the servants say that this boy always does this before sitting on the bench and deep in thought, he always runs in the yard. The third man who was in the room said that the boy, apparently, was sitting on a bench and was thinking about something very important, but this caused laughter in the rest of the men. The second man said that other children could memorize 1,000 classical characters in just a month. So it took the guy more than a year. They assumed that this guy apparently has some very important goal that he is striving for, although outwardly he seems very silent and his intentions are unclear. An adult man came into the room and listened to the entire dialogue of these guys. He said that these people blame the young gentleman for coming and they were very scared after this phrase. An old man came into his room, he looked like a lord and was busy with the internal affairs of the palace. He said that you can't discuss the young gentleman behind his back, at least he asked these men to watch their language when they discuss those people who pay them. They began to feel guilty and did not know how to now apologize to the vice lord and buy up their guilt, vitamins said a lot of unnecessary things. The gentleman left the room and decided to see what was happening on the street now and follow the boy. He watched this guy constantly running around the courtyard around the palace. He was pleased by the thought that this boy did not give up and was constantly overcoming obstacles and striving to become better. 
Yunho finished his run and decided to start the next exercises. He raised his hand up. Yunho series to high ground aka meditate in lotus position he tried to control his breathing. She thought there that even after two weeks of absorbing natural energy, he could not collect almost a single drop in this damn body. He assumed that this was all because the flow of energy was contaminated with human impurities and now prevents him from improving this body. He was upset because he realized that he was doing useless bullshit that didn't bring any results. Yunho approached the gates of the palace and was met there by guards. They said that the lord ordered not to let the young master out of the courtyard until he recovered, but the guy replied that he was fine. They told him that they still wouldn't be able to release him, and he thought that if he were now in the body of a fox, he would immediately kill them. Yunho could not improve his body and internal energy, but nevertheless he felt a weak flow inside him. He said that he had no choice but to concentrate more on this flow and try to strengthen it. Yunho closed his eyes and tried to focus all his attention on meditation and improving the internal flow of energy. But suddenly he felt a strange energy next to him and realized that he was not alone here and therefore decided to open his eyes. A girl stood in front of him, it was his younger sister, and she asked her older brother what he was doing now. Yunho was not ready for the fact that this girl would interfere with him and distract his attention. He remembered that his father did not tell his sister about what happened because he was afraid that she would bother him. And the sister was very sensitive to the illness of her older brother and was happy when she found out that everything was fine with him. He remembered that his younger sister's name is Somi. Ha Somi younger sister who loves him when he woke up she burst into his arms and cried a lot since then the girl always comes to visit her brother when she has time. It is also one of the reasons that prevent a guy from absorbing natural energy and developing. Somi took out a package containing fruit and invited her brother to eat together. Yunho had not yet tasted people's food, he was interested to know what it was, the girl replied that it was sweets that the servant brought from the market. Yunho thought that this girl would not be able to gain his trust just because she brings various tasty things like these sweets. But when he tried this delicious candy, he couldn't stop and asked for more, he said that it was incredibly tasty and his sister was very glad that he liked it. She said that her brother actually changed a lot after he woke up and he's acting very strange now. Somi said that her brother didn't like sweets before and he always said that it was too sugary and impossible to eat. Yunho told the girl that from now on she will learn a lot of new things about him. Yunho understood that he only looks like her on the outside, but in fact he is a completely different creature and is not her brother. Somi smiled and said that she absolutely doesn't care that her brother has changed and she loves him regardless of his habits. The sister asked the guy not to get sick anymore and look good because she doesn't want to worry and worry about him again. Yunho replied that he would try not to get sick anymore and do everything possible to always be with her. Evening came and there were a lot of clouds in the sky and they floated across the sky like ships on a giant ocean. Birds fly to the palace in which the guy lived, gathering in a small flock. This was the guy's favorite part of the day because the servants brought a lot of different delicious food and he loved to try all this food. Every evening he admired what was brought to him. A magnificent dinner uniting land, sea, and air. Here there were products that could be collected everywhere. He says that if the brutal Yukai saw such a table, they would burst into tears of bloody tears of envy, but he didn't care much because he was a man and could afford to eat all this food. He said that he would eat all this food until the last dish and he would do this in memory of all these victims. Somi smiled and felt happy every time she saw her older brother smiling and acting like a healthy normal person. The father went up to his children and sat down at the table with them and said that they both came too early, but the sister replied that they were in no hurry for dinner. Father said that if they were so hungry that they came early for the evening dinner, then they could start eating right away. Yunho was so hungry that he tried to stuff a whole fish into his mouth, he didn't understand how to eat it correctly and tried to stuff it all into himself. Yunho thought that eating like an ordinary person is a special pleasure. Because when he was a yukai, he could not eat for 1000 years. Somi watched her brother and tried to stop him, she didn't understand how best to explain to him that he shouldn't behave like that at the table. But the father stopped his daughter and said that everything is fine and let the guy eat as he wants because he needs to restore his strength. Night fell and stars appeared in the sky and shone very brightly. The father was sitting with his son on the evening veranda and drinking tea. He noticed that his son had become much stronger in recent days. Yunho replied that there is still a long road to recovery, but for now this result is more than enough. 
The father looked at his child and felt incredible joy that everything was fine with him now and his illness was over. He told his son that he can behave very arrogantly, but still he wants to ask him what the guy is going to do with his studies because he missed school for a whole year. He asked the boy if he wanted to return to the academy and continue his studies. Yunho didn't understand what his father was talking about now and what academy he was trying to tell him about because for him it all sounded very strange and incomprehensible. At that moment, the father said that, on the other hand, he wants the boy to live as he wishes and does not force him to go there now, but when it becomes easier for the guy, it would be nice if he went there. Yunho asked where the academy is and whether it extends beyond the courtyard of this palace. Father Yu is very surprised by this question and answered his son that this academy is located in a completely different place and it is outside the palace. Yunho smiled when he heard that this academy was located in a different place. It was a good chance to get out of here and go explore the rest of the world. Yunho replied that she was going to the academy of tomorrow and wanted to get there as soon as possible. The father would be surprised by his son's decision. Yunho said that he wants to go to this academy as quickly as possible and will be happy to leave the palace grounds. He was very happy with such decisions of his son and said that the boy had grown up just like his father in his heart, which understood his father's will, remained the same. Yunho calmed down and felt his victory because he had been thinking for a whole week about how to go outside of this palace and now everything turned out even better than he could have imagined. He was still very inexperienced in the human world and mistakenly thought that the tea could be drunk straight to the bottom. But it was his mistake and he immediately spat out the hot tea and the father tried to stop the boy and explain to him that he shouldn't do that. Divine prophecy says that the contribution of Confucius and Meng Tzu is enormous, but throughout your life you discover these postulates for yourself. Yunho stood near the palace gates with his father and his father sent him to the academy, he told the boy to be careful and the guy replied that everything would be fine. Yunho thought that you can still learn what they teach at the academy because rich families pay poor teachers to teach their children. This is all the guy knew about the academy from Yunho's memories. He saw the central gates of the palace opening in front of him and thought that the academy was just an excuse to go out into the outside world. He walked through the forest and breathed in the fresh air of these places, he really liked the nature that surrounded him. With every breath he felt that natural energy was accumulating in his body at an incredible speed. This feeling allowed him to feel that his formerly heavy body was becoming lighter and gaining strength to go further. He felt that now he had a huge amount of energy, he decided to test his strength in practice and understand what he was capable of. Yunho began to run forward as quickly as possible in order to understand what his speed was now. He played up as high as possible in order to deliver a leaf from a tree with his hand and the height of his jump was incredibly high. He reached with his hand to a leaf that was hanging on a tree branch and tore it off. Yunho was very happy that he had so much energy and his strength increased several times. He walked forward in search of the academy and danced with happiness because the natural energy inside his body was incredibly huge. It was a clear day and white clouds floated across the sky, changing their shapes. In his father's office there was a vice lord and the main lord was talking about how the young master himself went to the academy. He said that he could not believe that his son went to study at his own request at the academy, although he recently went after an illness. The lord said that it was very difficult for him to believe it, it all looks like some kind of made-up story. The vice lord smiled and said that people often return to their old lives in the face of death and become better people. The vice lord folded his hands and said that given the young master's abilities, he was confident that the boy would become a great man and succeed as a true lord. The father thought about whether the boy would be able to continue his work in the future and take his position. The lord told the vice lord that this guy was his favorite son, but now his intuition tells him that he is not suitable for the role of heir. The vice lord replied that it is too early to make decisions and we need to wait a little longer before answering this question. The lord was sure that the guy was not ready yet and wanted to argue his point. But suddenly a servant came into their room and addressed the lord, this servant interrupted their dialogue. A servant dressed in green clothes stood at the door and informed the lord that the young master had returned home. The father ran out into the street and saw his son there. He asked what happened and why the boy decided to come back. Yunho stood right in front of my father and looked very shabby, his hair was disheveled in different directions and his clothes were wrinkled. The father asked why the boy came back and what he was doing here in the middle of the day in this form. Yunho, with a dissatisfied expression on his face, informed his father and vice lord that he had been expelled from the academy. 
The men did not understand how they should react to this news, they were shocked by the fact that the guy was expelled from the academy so quickly. The Lord personally decided to go to the academy and find out from the teacher why he kicked the guys out of the academy. The teacher informed the Lord that the guy started a fight at the academy and for this he was kicked out because such behavior is against the rules of the academy. The teacher said that the act he committed could hardly be called a fight because the young master single-handedly beat several students at once. The father was shocked by this behavior of his son, he could not believe it. After all, the boy had only recently acquired the strength to walk and run. When the teacher heard this, he made a surprised expression on his face, because judging by the fact that the guy here started such a fight, he clearly knows how to walk and run well. The teacher asked his father if his son had ever studied martial arts because during a fight he was very fast and dexterous and mastered various techniques and techniques. Yunho made a dissatisfied expression on his face because this teacher understood absolutely nothing about martial arts and what he calls fast and speed of movement is called qi energy. The father turned his head to his son and asked if this teacher was telling the truth. Yunho replied that this teacher speaks the absolute truth and there are no lies in his words. Yunho crossed his arms over his chest and replied that those guys surrounded him and began to mock him as soon as he entered the academy. They thought that after his illness the boy would not be able to fight back. Yunho said that he endured all the insults and did nothing until they insulted his father and late mother. The boy said that this is not the first time this has happened and they have been mocking him for a long time. Yunho said that the teacher is aware of all these events and knows what really happened and why the guy had to start this fight. He asked why the teacher knew that these guys were bullying Yunho, but nevertheless he ignored everyone's actions and reacted only when the guy beat up all these guys. The teacher was confused, he realized that this boy had brought him to light and now he was in a difficult situation. The Lord was very disappointed in the behavior of the teacher when he heard this whole story from his son and he wanted to hear an explanation from this teacher. But the man could not answer anything. His excuse only lowered his head and was upset because he had acted so stupidly and unfairly towards the boy. The Lord began to laugh very loudly and could not stop laughing. He was surprised that the teacher thought that expelling all the hooligans from the academy could reduce the income of the institution, he made a decision that would do the least harm. The Lord said that he did not understand the logic of this teacher and yet the boy was still expelled from the academy, it was the only academy in the area. Yunho replied that he no longer needed this academy and that he would be able to cope and develop without it because it would not bring him any benefit anyway. Yunho suddenly stopped in front of his father, bowed to him and apologized for all the problems he caused him. After this gesture, the guy turned around and left because he could no longer be here and discuss this worthless topic. The Lord asked the vice lord what his deputy thought about all this and how he should approach it. He said that the boy had a reason for fighting and he defeated seven opponents alone, and this is a very good result. The boy went into the distance and they watched him, they could not believe that this guy had such incredible abilities and after waking up he became much stronger. The father didn't know how to react to all the events that were happening to his son now, but he was still happy for him. The guard who guards the entrance doors to the palace saw that the boy was approaching him again. Yunho again wanted to leave the palace but in front of him stood a guard who did not let him through. The head of the guard said that now the boy can come and go whenever he wants, anyway, in the morning he already did so. Yunho went into the forest closer to the water. He wanted to feel nature next to him and fill his body with new energy. He sat on a big rock near the water, meditating, trying to gather all his concentration on the internal flow that flowed through his entire body. Yunho radiated an incredible aura from his body that could be seen from afar. He ran through the fields and tried to develop his speed to the limit. In the evening light it looked like a shadow rushing through fields and forests. The boy's speed increased every day, he became stronger and faster, his body strengthened and he gradually came to the result that he wanted to achieve. Yunho was able to run on rocks that were at 90 degrees and still it didn't stop him, it was just another obstacle. He pushed off with his foot from the ledges that were on these rocks and his speed was enough for him to climb to the top of this rock without hands. He accelerated so much when he tried to climb this rock that at the edge of the rock he took a leap and jumped over it. Yunho decided to stop at the top of one of the searches and take a break. He breathed fresh air into his lungs while standing on the top of the mountain. Thus, he felt alive and worthy of this life. He felt that his legs were no longer trembling and his breathing was not faltering. Little by little, natural energy flowed into his body and filled it with qi energy. 
he understood that he had taken his first step towards his dream and was able to return this guy's body to a normal state in which he could move forward. When he stood on the top of this rock, the whole city was visible in front of him and how the sun was hiding behind the horizon, he admired these views every time he climbed here. His father approached the boy and wanted to talk about something and the boy was ready to listen to his father. The Lord asked the guy what he thinks is most important for a person. Yunho replied that the most important thing for a person is money because every day he understands the importance of money and what he is not capable of. The father laughed and said that his son was growing up just like his father, but this was not the most important thing in life and asked what was the second most important thing in life for him. Yunho replied that the second thing that is important to him in life is the strength to save his money. The Lord was very surprised by his son's answers, he couldn't believe that this guy actually thinks like that at that age. The father thought about his words and said that he had the strength to save money. This is a very good answer. He decided to correct his son's thought and said that a more reasonable option would be strength to protect himself. He may lose all purchases of some things once and for all, but he can always start over again if he is strong and everything is in order with him. Yunho understood that his father was telling him the most banal truths that he himself knows and therefore the guy did not react in any way to his father's words. Suddenly his father approached him while the guy was practicing in the yard and suggested that the boy study martial arts. The Lord was surprised when he saw his son's surprised reaction, he did not understand why his child reacted this way to learning martial arts. Yunho remembered that martial arts were invented by monks a thousand years ago. It would be fun to study the same martial arts that he once mastered. But then the guy smiled and thought that learning these martial arts could be a lot of fun. He answered the father that he would start studying without any problems and wanted to start it immediately because he was already impatient to do it. The father was happy when his son responded positively to studying martial arts and said that first they need to study Dantian. Yunho asked his father what this word means and how this Dantian could be useful to him. The Lord went with the vice lord and his son to the training ground and said that martial arts use qi energy and the place where it is stored is called Dantian. He grabbed his belt with his hands and said that in martial arts it is very important to create your own personal Dantian. Yunho remembered herself in those days when he was a white fox and this thing that his father tells him about reminds him of the fox bead that he gave to God. Yunho asked his father, can you take the Dantian out of your body whenever you want or is it impossible to take it out of your body? The vice lord heard the boy's funny question and replied that he would never be able to remove the Dantian from his body after creating it. He thought about the fact that this Dantian was different from the fox beads and nevertheless theoretically understood how the Dantian worked. The lord and vice lord began to roll up their sleeves and prepare to begin their training. They asked the young master to sit on the ground and cross his legs. The father asked the boy to close his eyes and do everything exactly as he told him, the boy nodded his head and said that he would do everything as his father said. The lord told the boy not to answer him with words anymore. Yunho told father out loud that he understood him. The lord hit the guy on the nose with his finger and reminded him that he should not answer him. The lord looked at the boy and said that first he needs to open the blocked channels that flow inside his body. To do this, the guy needed to take a deep breath and then exhale and control his breathing. He had to focus all his attention on this breathing. An old man was riding through the city with a long grey beard on his head, a hat that covered his face, and he was riding on a donkey. This old man was very unhappy and did not show his face to others, he just continued to drive. His donkey moved very slowly and the old man was in no hurry. Drops of blood began to drip onto the marble tiles and the father began to scream that something had happened to Yunho. He held the boy in his arms and blood was flowing from his mouth. He hit him on the cheeks and asked him not to lose consciousness. The Lord lost self-control and began to shout at the Vice Lord to call the doctor, but the Vice Lord had already called the doctor and said that he would be there any minute. The doctor approached the boy and took his hand. He tried the pulse with his fingers and tried to understand what was happening to the child. The father told the doctor that the boy's body was suddenly seized with heat and he lost consciousness after he vomited blood and they could not understand what went wrong because everything was right. The doctor scratched his black beard thoughtfully and looked at the boy carefully. He said that everything was fine with the child and that he had no significant problems. The doctor replied that the situation is very strange because the boy is in excellent condition and this situation looks very strange. 
The father asked the doctor to repeat once again what he had just said because he could not believe that it was true. The doctor looked at the boy and replied that he had seen similar cases before and it was just a negative reaction. When too much energy accumulates in the body and there is nowhere for it to splash out, so it causes a person to lose consciousness and spit out blood. The Lord said that this is some kind of madness. It cannot be that the boy has such a large excess of energy because he has never studied any energy gathering techniques and he would not have been able to study them without Dantian. The doctor replied that everything is not as complicated as it seems because natural energy can be obtained without Danchans, but the problem is that then the energy accumulates in the meridians and not in the Danchans. The doctor noticed that this boy had a lot of energy and something needed to be done with it, he saw that the blocked meridians had successfully opened. Yunho even managed to open the meridians that are located next to his heart. And this is a very difficult process that is not accessible to everyone. Lord Singer Lord were shocked and the doctor told them that the boy was able to open the meridians near his heart because there are a lot of them there. The doctor smiled and suggested that the Lord and Vice Lord of Miami check the boy's open meridians because this could be done in a fairly simple way. The Lord decided to touch the meridians with his hand in order to see it with his own eyes and check. He thought that the opening of the heart meridians meant that he had reached a peak and the energy inside the body was too great. He touched the boy's chest with his fingers and felt a very strange sensation because what the doctor said was actually true. He didn't understand how his boy managed to independently open the meridians near his heart and pump his body so much. He was able to independently open all closed meridians without Dan Tien and fill his body with a huge amount of natural energy. The Lord said in a surprised voice that all the qi energy that he had collected throughout his life was equal to only one year. But he didn't understand how this was possible if he had been bedridden for a year and had never studied energy collection techniques or heard anything about martial arts, how did he manage to accumulate energy so efficiently to open all the meridians? A man came to the training area, it was an old man, and in his low old voice he said that he came here to see the young master escape from the clutches of death. This old man was standing near the gate that led into the training area. His face couldn't be seen because of his big hat, but you could see his long gray beard and smile. He said that this guy had grown up a lot over the years. Yunho continued to lie with his eyes closed and he was sleeping very soundly and resting after that when I lost consciousness. Suddenly he heard very strange sounds coming from different directions and he could not ignore these sounds. The guy felt that these strange sounds were preventing him from sleeping and they began to irritate him. He realized that the time had come to gradually open his eyes and wake up. He needed to understand where he was now and what was happening around him. When he opened his eyes there was green grass around him in which he was lying, white clouds were floating above him and he was not at home. He tried to understand where he was now, but all he saw in front of him was a lot of green trees and green fields. The last memory that remained in his head was how he, his father and the vice lord created the Dantian. The boy heard a strange voice of some old man who was sitting behind him, this old man asked him if the guy really wanted to study martial arts. Yunho was scared when he realized that he was not alone here, he immediately turned his head to look at the old man who asked him this. He saw his grandfather sitting on a stone in the lotus position and meditating. The guy immediately wondered who this old man was and what he was doing here. He asked the boy if he would continue to sit in one place and do nothing. The old man told the boy that according to etiquette, you need to greet your clone master and after that just continue to communicate. Yunho was surprised that this old man called himself his master and did not understand what was happening here. After he woke up, everything turned out to be very strange for him. He was interested in the question why the frail and weak old man declares that he will teach the boy martial arts. He was very unhappy to be here and asked the old man who was he to call himself a martial artist and asked his grandfather where they were now. The old man said he was asked to demonstrate to this boy all the martial arts techniques and this place. Yunho looked at this old man and thought that he was completely crazy because he was talking some nonsense. Yunho pointed at the old man with his hand and said that he has no idea what his father said to this old man, but he wants to choose his own master. Yunho said that if the old man doesn't want to leave here injured then he better stop talking nonsense and explain what's really going on here. But suddenly the old man took off from his place and very quickly moved towards the boy so quickly that he didn't even have time to notice anything. The old man struck the boy directly in the chest with his palm and he experienced incredible pain. He felt that he was thrown back with a very slight movement, 
but the force of this movement was incredibly powerful for an old man who does not look very strong. Yunho fell to the ground and began to roll backward somersaults, he could not stop the movement. He spread his arms in different directions and felt that his body hurt very much after this blow. Yunho realized that this old man is not as simple as it might seem at first glance, because if he can deliver such blows, then he really is a real martial artist. Grass was flying in the air. At that moment the clouds were slowly floating across the big blue sky. Yunho was lying on the ground and trying to open his eyes, he felt very bad after the blow. He needed time to come to his senses. Suddenly he opened his eyes wide and realized that something very strange had just happened to him. He got up from the ground and started screaming very loudly. At that moment, an old man was sitting in front of him. With his eyes closed, he was meditating, he was waiting for the boy to finally come to his senses and the old man could talk to him. The master saw that the boy had woken up and told him that his body was weaker than he thought. Yunho got angry at this old man for hitting him and said that he didn't want to communicate with him because there was no point in it. The old man smiled when he saw the guy and said that he was still too young and inexperienced, his beard had not even begun to grow. Yunho got angry with this old man and decided to attack him, he said that he did not want to talk to him and it would be better to end this conversation with a fight. The master was able to repel the boy's attack with one hand, he did not even open his eyes because he did not see any threat in this child. He blocked the boy's blow and made his own counterattack, after which the boy flew back and twisted around his body. He flew a few meters back and fell to the ground. The clouds at that moment continued to fly slowly across the sky. Yunho was lying on the ground, his hands were raised up, there was a bruise near his face near his left eye and he thought about what he had done several times that day video sky. The guy tried to get up from the ground again and held his head with his hand. He tried to feel his bruise with his fingers. The master said that he wanted to get this over with and move on to more important matters. After that, he got up from the ground and stood opposite the boy. He raised his hand up and said that he could fulfill the boy's wish and leave him behind once and for all, but there was one condition, the boy must grab the master by the hem of his clothes. He set the guy these conditions and said that if he fails to do this, then the boy will have to accept him as his new master and obediently become his student. Yunho was very unhappy that this old man was putting conditions on him and he asked his grandfather why he should agree to this bet. The old man took the edges of his clothes with two fingers and lifted his clothes, defiantly showing them to the guy. He held part of his clothes in his hand and said that if a guy is not sure that he can grab the hem of an old man's clothes with his hand, then what kind of warrior can he make? Yunho started to get even more angry at this old man because he hurt his feelings and he believed that no one could talk to him like that and call him a weakling. In a past life, Yunho was the king of the Yukai world and was capable of destroying an entire world single-handedly and could not allow anyone to mock him. The old man saw that this boy had a burning desire to complete this task and closed his eyes in order to prepare for defense. When Yunho extended his hand forward to grab the old man's clothes, the old man jumped very high and disappeared. The old man flew very high up and he was surprised that the guy had such great strength and energy because he lifted up a huge part of the earth. At that moment when he was flying in the air, he thought that this guy was moving like a hulking palm tree in a gust of wind. The old man landed on the ground and stopped on the big rock, the guy saw him and thought that this grandfather was jumping like a rabbit. Yunho decided not to waste time, he made a high jump and tried to attack the old man again, this time he wanted to attack him and grab him by the skin not by the fabric. But when the boy landed, he struck with his hands and did not break the stone into many different pieces, and the old man was again able to dodge by jumping to the side. He was already far from the boy and laughed at the fact that this guy doesn't control his emotions and gets angry every time something doesn't work out for him. The master laughed and said that his skin was already dry and rough because he was old, but it still didn't look like stone. Yunho took a large stone in his hand and wanted to throw it at the old man in order to take revenge on him, he was very angry that the old man was constantly joking and laughing at him. He threw a stone at this old man and thought that he would be 100% able to hit him. The master saw that a stone flew in front of his face and barely had time to dodge, he was not ready for such an act on the part of the guy. Yunho took advantage of the fact that the old man had diverted his attention to the flying stone and decided to run closer to him. The master was surprised by the ingenuity of this guy, he didn't think that this boy was thinking before such an act. 
But even though the old man was distracted by the stone, he was still able to evade the guy's hand by making circular movements to the side. Yunho didn't understand how this old man managed to move so fast. The master looked at this boy in surprise and noticed that he was already running straight towards him. He noticed that this guy moves very fast and maybe he is now inexperienced and clumsy but his movements are very fast and his energy is enough to catch up with the old man. Yunho took advantage of the old man's carelessness and ran up to him as close as possible and touched his chest with his hand. Yunho placed his palm on this old man's chest and a bright light appeared around his palm. Oh smiled and said that the old man was finally caught and now he won't be able to escape. The master clenched his teeth and felt that the guy was still able to touch his body. The old man began to laugh very loudly and this reaction was incomprehensible to the boy. He was surprised why is this old man laughing at him now because he caught him. The master said that this guy has very good makings for a brat who doesn't know how to do anything. Yunho was very surprised by this reaction, he felt uncomfortable because it was the old man who despised him and called him straight even though he fulfilled the terms of their agreement. The master hit the guy with his hand and the boy flew back and received quite a lot of damage. When Yunho was flying, he thought that this damn old man really pisses him off and he wants to get rid of him as quickly as possible. Evening came, but the clouds continued to float slowly across the sky as in the morning. The master visited the boy's father and the father said that he heard that the master was testing the boy today for martial arts talents. The father said that it would be very sad if the master accidentally injured the boy during the inspection. The master said that the boy would not grow up if he did not see the sky. The father at that moment looked at the old man in great surprise and asked what he meant. The master smiled and looked at the father of this boy. He said that the guy was very impatient and rude, but the most important thing was that he was absolutely untrained. The father looked at the old man in great surprise and the master replied that his son had an innate talent for martial arts. He said that even his younger brother, who was called a martial arts genius, was not as talented at that age as Yunho. The father was speechless at that moment, but then he pulled himself together and said that the master's younger brother is the current head of the Namgun family and the leader of the Miram Alliance. He said that his name is rightfully included in the list of the 24 strongest warriors and he is called the strongest in Murim, the king of the sword Namgong Jin. He said that the master was probably joking when he said that because his son cannot be such a strong warrior and the old man replied that he could not say it out loud and we understand everything. The father was very surprised when he learned that his son was such a good candidate for martial arts students. The master said that he might be considered just a greedy old man who wants to make money from this family but that's not the case at all. He said that it was the first time he had seen such a strong student and that he really wanted to turn the boy into a strong martial artist and introduce him to the world. The father replied that he had no reason to refuse if the master personally wanted to train him. The old man began to laugh and said that however, there was one problem that he could not solve. He started laughing and said that the boy managed to grab the master by the hem of his clothes and he won the bet. Yunho was sitting in his room on the bed and thinking about something, he was very tired and angry. There was a big bruise on his face after being hit by this old man and he was angry at the old man for what happened to him today. He didn't understand why the old man hit him at the moment when the boy managed to grab his clothes. The father escorted the master out of the palace and said that it was already midnight, so he asked the master to think about this situation again, but for now it was time for him to go and rest, the old man replied that the man's word imposed this and he could not do anything about it. He said that he and the master had known each other for a long time and therefore asked him to think again and do him a favor. They suddenly stopped in place and the old man saw that Yunho was standing in front of them, about whom they had not just been talking. The father looked at the boy in surprise and did not understand why he was here now. Yunho stood right in front of them and silently looked into the eyes of the old man. His face was swollen and bruised. The father asked his son what he would do here at this time and why is he not in his room now. Yunho said that he needed to talk to the old man about important things and he wanted to discuss it now. He asked the master why the boy's attacks did not work on the old man no matter how hard he tried. Yunho said that he wanted to learn this skill and asked the old man to teach him everything he knew. Suddenly, for everyone, the guy fell to his knees and obediently sat down opposite the old man. He had to step over his pride and forget about his principles and his past life in order to learn new knowledge in martial arts, he lowered his head and called the old man his new master. 
At that moment the old man looked at the boy and closed his eyes to think for a few seconds. Yunho put his head down and waited for consent from the master. He wanted to be taken on as a student. But the master replied that now he does not want to teach this boy and Yunho was very surprised and angry at the old man's answer. Yunho recalled a dialogue with his uncle in which his uncle told him about a great martial artist from the Namgung family, his name was Yong Nama. Yunho asked his uncle who this man was because he had never heard anything about him. Uncle said that this is a great martial artist who has no equal in this world. He said that this man does not have such a loud reputation because he left his family for the sake of sightseeing, which is his hobby, but his insight is better than others and he is still an unsurpassed martial artist who took a place in the list of the 24 strongest warriors along with his younger brother Namugan Jin, leader of the alliance. The uncle tried to explain to the boy that this is the best martial arts teacher and he has no equal, and the boy thought about it. He said that it was a great honor for the bull boy to be a student. Yunho remembered that he is the person who appeared before the Tathagata without any courtesy. So this is the part for the old man that the boy is his disciple. Yunho thought that he didn't like bowing to this old man because it was too much of an honor for him. He understood that all the creatures from the Yukai world would start laughing at him if they found out about this. But he understood that he was now in the wrong situation to worry about it. The boy nevertheless came to terms with the given reality in which he was located and bowed to the master, all only because he wanted to become stronger and was ready to step over his pride for this. That two years have already passed since their training and it was winter outside then. The entire forest was covered with snow and it was very cold outside. White snow lay on the branches and tree. But suddenly the tree felt a strong vibration and snow fell from the branch. Loud sounds of swords being struck were heard in the forest. These sounds were created by a boy and his master. They fought in training areas in the forest to hone their skills and they moved very quickly through the forest. The master fought off the guy and allowed him to improve his attacks in battle. Yunho struck very quickly with his sword at the old man's sword, but could not break through his defense. Suddenly they began to copy each other's movements and changed the plane of their battle. The master began to accumulate magical light energy in his left palm. Yunho understood that the best way to protect himself from the old man's attack was to repeat his movements and he also began to accumulate light energy in his palm. They simultaneously struck each other with their hands to the body and their movements were absolutely mirror. There was a loud explosion in the fox between the two of them there was a burst of energy and snow began to fly into the air. The old man felt that it was very difficult for him to continue the battle with this guy because he was already old. And the boy acted very quickly and clearly. Yunho looked at this old man in surprise and saw that the master was not feeling well. The master began to shout at the boy for trying to kill the old man and asked him to be restrained and more careful in using such strong blows. Yunho raised his sword up and leaned his head against it. He said that the master was the first to take this stance and all he had to do was repeat this blow. The master said that he had no other choice. He had to take this stance in order to defend himself. And now he has red hands that hurt a lot. They took a break to rest a little and the master said that even now it's hard for him to fight with the boy and the guy replied that it's all because the master is too old. The master said that the boy has a very stupid habit that irritates him the guy constantly talks some kind of nonsense. They sat in silence for several minutes and then the old man said that now was the time and the guy looked at the old man in surprise. The cinema master gave the guy a red package containing a long object. He told the boy to take it for himself and shut up. Yunho, I decided to open this package. He took off the red rag and saw that inside there was a large long black sword. The old man said that this sword is special he has already given time, it falls at the feet of the old man without recognizing the owner and this means that he needs a new owner. Yunho said that the master was mocking him again and gave him the sword in order to simply support him and then take it back again, but the master replied that the boy should draw the blade. Yunho listened to the master and decided to take the sword out of its sheath in order to look at it in full force. He raised the sword in the air and held it in front of his face, this sword was very beautiful and light. He began to move this sword and try to understand what this blade was capable of. Yunho was surprised by the lightness of this ball. He thought about at least trying to perform several combat combinations with this sword. He began to perform combat combinations, moving from place to place and attacking an invisible enemy. The blade moved very quickly, its blade cut through the air. 
The master looked in surprise at his student who now controls his blade so well. The blade continued to cut the air and leave behind a bright reflection. The master thought that when you reach the peak, you can surpass ordinary ball skill by covering the ball with chi. The boy struck with this sword very skillfully and skillfully and one could see the aura of the sword, not everyone could do this. The master had to spend a lot of years to see the aura of the sword and he did this only when his hair was already grey. However, only two years have passed since the boy took the sword in his hands and has already achieved such a result. Yunho decided to test this sword for strength and found a stone not far from him and decided to strike this stone in order to cut it. When he struck this stone with his sword, the stone broke into two halves and in the middle of the stone there was a mark from the sword blade. Yunho said that this is a very good sword and he likes it, thanks to this he was able to very successfully split a stone into two halves, as if cutting bread. Master asked Yunho to come closer to him because he wanted to talk about something. The old man said that he had an idea of this boy's maximum strength. And the guy asked how strong he is. The master said that the boy practiced the world's best sword technique of the Nam Gong family and completely mastered them even the strongest technique in his family which is called imperial sword skill. He said that the boy should now have enough strength to defeat the elders of the great Murim factions. Yunho turned his head to the side and pretended as if this information was absolutely not interesting to him and began to move on. The master looked at the boy in surprise and said that he did not look happy after learning this, but then he said that for the first time he saw such a strong warrior and genius in martial arts as Yunho. Yunho answered the old man that he did not want to become stronger. It was in this way that the master looked at the guy in surprise. Yunho looked at the old man and said that he did not want the influence of technology to hold him back and tie his hands, but the master did not understand what the boy was talking about and asked him to explain his thought to him. The guy said that the sword skill of the Namugan family is the best in the world and this is undoubtedly why he became so strong. He raised his hand up and looked at her and then said that however, he believed that these techniques would actually be better than they are and now he feels that they are holding back his true skill and strength. The master asked the guy how is it even possible that this great technique, which is the strongest in the world, could restrain his skill. He asked the boy how this is even possible and is there even more power in him than it might seem. Yunho understood that it would be very stupid to explain his feelings to the master and decided to show it in practice, he turned his head to the side and tried to find a suitable object with his eyes. He saw a large strong tree that had been growing on this hill for several thousand years and thought that this object suited him well. He took his sword out of its sheath and unsheathed it to execute his blow. His eyes lit up with bright blue lights and he saw the goal in front of him and realized that he did not want to stop. He pulled out the sword in front of him and straightened his hand, a blue beam of energy appeared from the sword. This beam of energy was able to pierce the tree trunk and make a hole in it. For the first time in her entire life, the master saw such a strong attack, he could not believe his eyes. Yunho wanted to show the master his abilities, his true strength. He wanted to show him all the energy that was inside him and began to rotate his sword. A huge hole began to appear in the tree and it rotated in a circle and broke the tree trunk. Energy waves appeared from this hole that destroyed the tree trunk, they spread over a long distance and caused very strong damage. The master got up from the log on which he was sitting and began to step back, he did not understand what was happening because he had never seen anything like this before. Yunho began to feel that he was finally throwing out the energy that was filling his body and wanted to throw out even more energy. He struck with his sword and there was a very large explosion in front of him and nothing was visible because everything in front of him was white. The force of the explosion that the boy made was incredible, it was impossible to curb, it could destroy anything. This explosion broke everything that was within its radius and its radius occupied a very large space. Snow began to fall from the sky, this is the same snow that just rose from the ground and began to fall to the ground again. Yunho sheathed his sword and finally finished his attack. He got into a fighting stance which signifies the end of the attack and the end of the glitch and watched the damage he just did. Yunho looked at the huge hole in the ground that he only managed to make with just one outburst of his energy, and the old man would be horrified by what just happened here. He thought that his sword aura was excellent. This guy is capable of a real miracle and what the old man just saw cannot be expressed in words. The master looked at the boy and realized that what he had just seen was this word on synergy, the concept of limitlessness and the very essence of martial arts. 
The master asked the boy how long ago he learned such strong attacks and the guy answered the old man that he tried it for the first time and just learned it. The master got tired of the guy and hid his hands behind his back. He said that he was sure that the boy had surpassed his teacher. But he couldn't even imagine that the difference between them was so great. Yunho said that finally the master knows this and he doesn't need to prove anything anymore and the old man called the guy an arrogant child. The master said that if the boy started doing this technique only now, it means he has not completed it yet and the guy did not answer that everything is exactly as the master says. The teacher said that he wanted to see this guy's technique in full force and see how far he could go. The master said that he would help the boy achieve incredible results because his extensive knowledge accumulated while he traveled the world and saw different martial arts would be useful to Yunho. He looked at the old man. He needed to think about whether it was worth accepting his help or whether it was better to continue learning on his own. Yunho said that he would feel very embarrassed if there was no meaningful training from the old man and the master said that someday he would kill this child. The master understood that he could only give this boy the knowledge that he had and told him that the beginning of martial arts was laid by a follower of the Dharma. Also involved in the development of martial arts were the Buddhist master Sambong and the first heavenly demon. Yunho listened carefully to everything that this master was telling him and the names that he had just named were very familiar to him, but he could not understand how he knew these names. Then the guy remembered that a man named Sambong was the same person who came to him in a past life. Now he finally managed to remember this man, he came to him along with his idiotic monk and accepted the yin and yang technique. But suddenly he remembered the very girl he once loved, remembered her silhouette and that wonderful moment when she was with him. He opened his eyes very wide and froze in that moment, he could not think about anything else. Her image froze before his eyes, he remembered her beautiful face and her beautiful eyes, he remembered her smell and felt a strange feeling of melancholy. He felt very sad that he remembered her. After all, he had only recently managed to forget her. He thought that he was wondering, am I okay with my brother in the underworld? The old man said that if the boy had been born at that time and in that era, he would have been able to fight with this great martial artist and become the strongest warrior. Yunho began to laugh when he heard the old man's words because he remembered that once upon a time he had already defeated this man and it was very easy. The master turned his head at the guy and stopped, he wondered why the boy was laughing. Master asked the guy why his words made him laugh so much and the guy scratched his head, he felt awkward and he replied that he just remembered a funny situation. The master answered the boy that there is nothing funny here and becoming the strongest martial arts warrior in history is not a joke but a very serious position. Yunho looked at the sword that the master gave him and thought that it was time to use it. He took it out of its sheath and unsheathed its blade. Yunho said that he first picked up the sword in order to become stronger, but now his goal is to become like the sword himself. He closed his eyes and decided to concentrate his attention a little on the energy that is now in his body. He opened his eyes and looked forward, his eyes began to glow with blue lights again. He made a slight movement with his sword and an air wave appeared around him which scattered the leaves and stones that were around him. The master took out his sword and said that the guy would die or be injured if he couldn't block his blow, if this happened, the old man would be branded as a teacher who killed his student. He asked his student if he was ready to fight and try his hand at fighting against a real opponent. Yunho looked at his teacher and nodded his head in agreement and showed that he was ready to fight. The master used his chi energy and his eyes began to glow white, he looked at his student as an opponent. He began to run towards him, quickly moving his legs. The old man moved very quickly. Even though he was already very old, his movements were still fast. He was heading to meet the guy and understood that now he would have to use the experience of his entire life that he had accumulated for so long in order to fight the boy. He made a high jump and wanted to strike with his sword, into which he was going to put all the strength that he had and all the experience that he had gained throughout his life. Yunho stood and obediently waited for the smaller one to get close enough to block this blow. He was very calm and did not worry about the fact that he might die, he knew that he would feel the right moment to repel this blow. At the right moment, he raised his sword up and blocked even the master, and the master's sword began to break into small fragments. The old man had never seen anything like this in his life, this guy was able to block the blow so well that the sword that had served him for many years broke against this guy's defense. Yunho used a huge amount of energy to block his master's blow and a large bright flash appeared between them. This flash was so strong that it could be seen several kilometers away, 
and the master jumped over his student and flew behind him. The flash disappeared and the master fell to the ground. And the guy remained standing motionless. Yun Ho sheathed his sword and calmly finished his defensive combination. After he splashed out such a large amount of energy around them, the air became very cold and when the guy exhaled, steam appeared from his mouth. The old man began to laugh, but it was not a joyful laugh, it was a laugh of surprise. He held in his right hand a broken sword of which practically nothing remained and realized that his unity of the sword and his chi energy were destroyed. He looked at this sword and realized that I the greatest enlightenment that he had comprehended all his life turned out to be useless. He asked the boy how many strikes he had already made with his sword and the guy replied that he had just made a thousand strikes. The master, in a sad voice, informed the boy that he had just completed his technique and had now mastered it completely. Yunho agreed with his master and said that this technique still has no name and said that it needs to be called something. The old man stood on the edge of the cliff and said that the arrogance of this sword is limitless and soars to the skies. He said that this technique can be called trampling the sky. Because even the sky begins to tremble with fear when it sees this technique. He said that the sword that is in the guy's hands should be called the sword that crushes the skies. Yunho was very surprised when he heard that his sword had this name. He raised his head up and looked at the sky. He thought that he had an artifact, this was his sword that could crush the great sky itself. The old man decided to ask the boy if they had chosen a too pretentious name for his sword. After all, he only shares his thoughts with him. But Yunho was pleased with this name and from his face one could understand that it was impossible to even come up with a better name for his sword. Yunho thought about the fact that after five years of training with the master, he created and completed the strongest sword technique of all time called the sky crushing sword, the master stood in front of him and called the guy crazy. The sun was shining brightly in the sky and it was very warm because summer had come. The city was located in a valley and hid between high mountains. Yunho walked along the courtyard that was located in their palace and tried to warm up in order to wake up. The boy went into his father's office and said that he had finally arrived, but the father scolded him and said that he overslept. The guy scratched his head and said that he overslept because he was looking through the master's teachings until late at night and studying. The father smiled and said that there was nothing wrong with this and the guy came on time and asked to enter the academy and take his sister Somi with him. Yunho asked why he had to do this because it was the duty of the vice lord and his father replied that he asked for a few days off to visit his sick mother. Yunho said that in this case, his father can send his servant and several guards because after the guy has eaten, he wants to do training, but his father told him that Yunho is the strongest and most reliable person in the Supreme Coalition. The father said that he could not entrust this matter to anyone except his son and he was the one to do it. Yunho made a dissatisfied expression on his face, showing with all his appearance that he did not want to do this, but still agreed and said that he would fulfill his father's request. The guy was walking across the bridge to pick up his sister and thought that because of training, he really hadn't seen his sister Somi for a long time. Suddenly he stopped and saw something very strange in front of him. He saw a tree in front of him which gave him the idea that for some reason he began to unquestioningly obey his father and take care of his sister. He thought about how he was becoming more and more like the real Yunho every day. The guy started getting angry with himself and said that he was Yunho and not that brat Yunho. And all the way to his sister he tried to talk to himself. The academy stood on the outskirts of the city and its roof could be seen from afar because it was higher than the trees. At the exit to this building there was a sign on which it was written that this golden academy is the best institution in the city. Yunho felt like throwing up. Every time he saw this sign above the entrance to the academy, it absolutely did not correspond to this name. He saw a carriage in front of him and thought that people say that only rich people can afford to educate children in this institution but they even send carriages for them to show their importance. He thought about the fact that Vid Slor also comes here every time in a carriage to pick up his sister, because the guy was irritated by the mere thought of coming here in a carriage, he felt awkward because of this. A man in a red shirt who was working with horses looked at Yunho. This man was unhappy that the guy was standing not far from his carriage and asked why this brat was looking at him like that. Yunho smiled and thought that this man was starting to irritate him and if he continued in the same spirit, a fight would start here. This man began to get angry because the teenager who was standing not far from his carriage was smiling and acting so impudently. He began to walk towards the guy and raised his hand to him, 
he said that this guy was running into him and now he would beat him like the owner of this carriage. Yunho immediately put his hand on his sword to defend himself against this abnormal man. This gentleman also grabbed his sword with his hand and said that he would now fight with this guy in order to teach him a lesson. Yunho decided to act wiser and showed him a gold badge because he knew that it would be easy for him to defeat this weakling too. The man saw the gold badge and immediately turned pale with fear, he felt awkward, drops of sweat were running down his face. This golden tablet that the guy showed had a cloud pattern and the TN symbol. The man immediately realized that this guy was a member of one of the great alliances of the Supreme Coalition. Yunho looked arrogantly at this worthless idiot and asked whose carriage is this really now? Somi left the academy and immediately began to run like a carriage because she thought that today I would be greeted by the vice lord as always. But I saw that today her brother was picking her up from the academy and she was very happy, so she started running even faster. She jumped on him and hugged him because she was very happy that he came here today to pick her up. Yunho said that she is already 16 years old and she has already become a big girl but she still jumps on his neck every time she sees him. Somi said that she doesn't care about the opinions of others and she just loves her brother that's why she jumps into his arms every time but the guy said that he meant it to me. She smiled and looked at him because she understood that her brother always grumbles when he doesn't like something, but he still loves her. Yunho looked at this girl and thought that she probably looked a lot like her deceased one and he noticed that she had become very prettier in recent years. She didn't hug his hand and said that when they go home and can't go to the market and have a little snack, but the guy said that she continues to hang on him and asked how long this will continue. The man looked at these two guys and followed them with his gaze, he became interested in who this guy was and where he came from here. His son Seo Guk Ju approached his son and the man asked the boy if he knew this guy. The boy replied that this young gentleman is a member of the Supreme Coalition and asked the man whether he could not understand this from his appearance. In the city it was very quiet and calm, evening came and all the lights came on in the building. Many people were on the streets. The father was sitting at his desk and was very worried about something. On his table lay a black envelope with a seal and on this envelope it was written who it was from and the man still had not opened it. He was very excited about this envelope and was upset when he received it. The father heard his son and his daughter walking down the corridor and they were talking about how the girl had eaten a lot of food but was still hungry and she told him that she had a special stomach. Yunho opened the doors to his father's office and said that he had already arrived home and brought his sister here. And the girl greeted her father and said that he had returned from the academy. Somi saw her father's worried face and asked what happened because he looked very upset. The father looked down and said that he had to tell them the very bad news that he learned this morning. He told the children that the old master died two days ago at dawn. This news was very unexpected for the guy and he didn't understand how to react to it because he didn't think that something could happen to the master. Several carriages were traveling in the fox, accompanied by guards and they were heading to another city. Father sat in the carriage and kept thinking that the master had died. He tried to come to terms with this thought. Somi was also very upset about this news because she knew that this master was a very close person to their family. Yunho pretended that he was absolutely not interested in this information and in fact everything was completely different. The boy tried to remember the important moments that he had to go through with this person and he replayed the memories in his memory. He remembered the moment that was associated with his master. On that day, the master was riding on his oil, the boy was walking behind him and talking about how he just wanted to live the way he wanted. The master told his student that this is a very difficult but good path for the strongest for those people who want to reach the peak of martial arts and become the best. The master said that you want to see with your own eyes how the guy will go his way and he was wondering how much time he has left in this world to stay alive. Yunho, as always, tried to be sarcastic and joke and said that the old man had very little left, considering his appearance, the historian called him a parasite. He asked the boy not to shed too much blood and if bloodshed could not be avoided, then reduce it as much as possible because the boy's strength was very great and he had to learn to control it. Yunho said that the old man gives him too many rules and he wants to live according to his desires. The old man lowered his head down and said that in this world everything is very complicated and he doesn't know how long everything will go on, as the guy wants. He hoped that such words as demon and blood could never attach to the name of this boy and would not desecrate his glory. The master said that the five years spent with this guy were very long and eventful and he does not regret teaching such a unique student. 
Yunho remembered these moments and constantly replayed them in his head, he didn't like what the teacher told him, but he understood that these words were really correct. He thought that after death people go to the underworld and this is more like the beginning than finally life. He said that he wanted to see him again and talk to him one last time. A motorcade of two carriages, accompanied by guards, traveled along a long ramp to another city in order to get to the funeral of an old man. In Lesnea more often one could see many high gray roofs against the backdrop of one very large mountain. At the entrance to the palace there was a sign that said that the Namgung family lived here. On this day, a lot of people from different cities came to say goodbye to the old man, they went to the palace, and some met and communicated with each other for the first time in a long time. For near the entrance there was a group of people of three men, one of these men had a notebook in his hand in which the guests were written down, the rest of the people were simply surprised at the sight of two carriages approaching them. All the people who were already near the palace watched these carriages and tried to understand who came here and who was in these carriages. Suddenly, a man from the crowd noticed a man who was riding in front of this carriage on horses and said that this was the great guardian of the Supreme Coalition. This man smiled and said that all the guards are elite martial artists, the second man answered him that they are stronger than the so-called first-class masters. The Supreme Guardian dismounted from his horse and greeted the man who met him, he said that he was the Supreme Guardian Kol Wu Yi and reported that Master Ha Jin had arrived here along with his children. The man smiled and said that he was very glad to see the busiest man in the Central Valley here because he had come a very long way to come here. He said that he was very honored that Ha Jin Yu himself arrived here and his father greeted the head of Nam Gong. Yun Ho thought that the trade union is treated the same as the merchant family and that's why they visit such a great family, but the head personally came out to meet his father, which means he's an important person. He realized that the head of this family behaves like the same teacher at the academy, gets into trouble and it seems to him that this idiot is afraid of the financial power of his father. Ha Jin said that he came here to honor the memory of the great teacher. The two guys who stood behind the head of the family were very surprised that their grandfather was a teacher for one of these strangers. The head said that his uncle would like their family to come here anyway. He introduced the head of this palace to his children. He introduced him to his son and his daughter. Somi bowed to this gentleman and said that it was part of her to meet the head of such a great family. He extended his hand forward and said that his uncle often mentioned this sweet lady in his conversations and advised him to accept her as a granddaughter or niece because she is a very smart, smart, beautiful girl. The head turned his head in the other direction and saw a guy standing there and decided to guess who he was. He said that this boy's name is most likely Yunho. He smiled and decided to ask the boy. Did his uncle really teach the boy martial arts? Yunho said that he studied several techniques of the Nam Gong family. The guys were very shocked and they heard this information. After all, they did not understand how it was possible that the family martial arts techniques were transferred to a stranger. The head raised his hand up and showed these guys gestures that it was better for them to shut up now and not say anything else. He told these guys to shut up and stop making a scene in front of such dear guests for them. He looked at the boy with a contemptuous look and realized that this guy could be very dangerous for them. Yunho looked at this man and he didn't like the feeling he had for the boy. The gentleman put his hands together and smiled. He apologized for the impudence of these guys and asked them to understand that they don't know etiquette well, they say I don't understand the situation. Ha Jin folded his hands and said that there was no need to apologize, but he only asked the master to teach his son martial arts so that he could defend himself and said that he hoped that the Nam Gung family would forgive him for this selfish request. They began to walk forward and the head of the family said that be that as it may, these people have come a long way and he personally must show them everything that is here. Clouds floated across the sky and changed their shapes. The boy was walking through the forest and was constantly trying to sniff out something with his nose. He constantly changed the trajectory of his movements and tried to smell. He couldn't figure out where this strange smell was coming from. Then the guy was still able to pick up the scent and said that it was the smell of a real monster. He understood that the smell led to the city which was located near the mountain. There was a painting hanging on the wall that depicted an old master. In front of the painting there was a golden vase and in the center of the vase there was a red candle. It was a large room in which anyone could come to say goodbye to the master. Yunho went to the doors that led to this room and saw that the dead master was here. He saw the image of the master and he felt uncomfortable being here. He wanted to talk to the master and could not get used to the fact that he was already dead. 
Yunho went out into the yard with his sister and the girl said that there are a lot of people here. Sister said that in addition to people from the nine great clans and five famous families, there are even people from some sects here. Yunho asked his sister how she knew all this and the girl said that she saw her father meeting many of them, but he didn't know that the girl was spying on him at that moment. Her action impressed the guy and he thought that this girl was much better than she might seem at first glance. The father saw his children and said that he would accompany the head. So they can rest here for now and have something to eat. Yunho said that he wanted to walk and walk a little in these territories and told his sister that here she can take as much food as she wants and maybe she will finally satisfy her hunger. The man drank alcohol from a cup and put this cup on the table, thereby making a very loud sound. He was very dissatisfied with something and said that he had had enough, he didn't want to continue like this anymore. He was very indignant that this funeral was very sad and he didn't like it. The guy in brown clothes said that it would be much more fun if a beautiful woman sat next to them and they all agreed that a beautiful woman could cheer them up. The man in red clothes turned his head to the right to look for some girl and suddenly he saw her. Somi was at that moment at the next table and was wiping the table in order to sit down at it. She was very cheerful and happy and minded her own business, this man immediately liked her. He turned all his attention to her and said that now they will have a girl at the table. A girl's scream was heard in the yard, she didn't understand what was happening. The man took her hand and started holding her, she asked to let her go and said that she was in a lot of pain. He behaved very arrogantly and did not let go of the girl after that. She asked what was happening to him and why did he grab her. He thought that she was flirting with him like that and asked why she was so rude to him because he just wanted this girl to sit next to them and share the grief for the dead old man. He said that she better not make them bad guys, they are actually very good. Somi felt that her hand hurt very much because this guy was squeezing her tightly, but she was afraid to scream and ask for help. Yunho was standing behind this guy at that moment. He said that these dissolute animals dared to come to the funeral and touch his sister with their dirty hands. He turned his head back and saw this guy in front of him, the girl said that it was her brother. The man asked the guy who was standing behind him. Is this the same young gentleman who is a member of the Supreme Coalition? Yunho did not answer this guy, or he exhaled and showed his dislike for this man with his face. Yunho said that he was very curious that this guy was being rude to the girl, I know that she is the daughter of the leader of the Supreme Coalition. He smiled and turned his head back and looked at the two men who were sitting there then said that this guy was probably joking when he said that. He said that his name is Peng Zhao and he is the eldest young master of the Peng family from Hebei. He said that he and his friends just wanted to chat a little with his sister and called the guy a puppy. He looked at the guy with contempt and said that he wanted to put aside the fact that Yunho misunderstood the situation due to his sister's reaction but he was offended when the guy called him a slutty animal. I, Peng Zhao tilted his head closer to the guy and smiled. He said that he deserved a small apology for this insult but Yunho continued to stand still and remain silent. The guys who were sitting at this big guy's table started laughing and said that now the funniest part of the holiday would begin. Yunho smiled when he realized that this idiot now actually wants to run into conflict. He said that you idiot should apologize to his sister for your rude behavior and leave here in peace or in a bad case he will make him feel awkward in front of all the guests present. Han felt humiliated and insulted. After all, no one had ever communicated with him in such a tone before. He stood opposite the guys, straightened his shoulders, after that he said that everyone knows that the merchants have nothing but money and understood that the guy could not do anything to him and resist such a great force. Yunho smiled when he saw the self-confidence of this idiot and again called him a stupid animal who will always be a stupid animal. Han raised his hand up to strike and said that this guy would hardly be able to survive such insults. Somi turned to the side in fear and started screaming, she tried to close her eyes so as not to see the fights that are now happening here. Yunho calmly dodged the blow of this thug and didn't even move from his place, he just tilted his body back. Han was surprised that this guy dodged his blow and asked where he could learn such tricks. Yunho decided not to answer this idiot's question and instead he kicked him in the leg to knock him down. Han fell to the ground and hit his back, and at that moment the guy continued to stand on the ground without moving. Yunho took this thug by the leg and said that he will now show what else he knows from these tricks. He took the thug's leg and turned it to the side and people heard a very loud crunch as if his bone had broken. Han started screaming very loudly and writhing in pain. People were shocked by this guy's abilities. 
They said he was crazy because he broke this big guy's ankle. Somi was very surprised that her brother could fight so well. This thug's friends couldn't stay away when they saw that they had just offended their friend and they started running to the guy to fight him. But Yunho was able to dodge all their attacks with just one jump and all their attacks were meaningless. During the flight, he hit one of the guys with his heel right in the face. Then he kicked another guy with his other leg and broke his nose. The guy in brown clothes flew to the next table and broke it, the food of these people scattered in different directions and his nose was bleeding. The second guy also flew to the side and fell to the ground, his nose was broken and he was bleeding. Han tried to get up from the ground, he was shaking all over with anger and said that he would kill this idiot now. But Yunho stopped this thug by stepping on his face with his foot and hitting his forehead on the ground. Yunho said that this man called him a puppy and this means that his father and leader of the Supreme Coalition is a dog. He said that he could happily kill this brat now, here and now, but the master asked him about very important requests. And if it weren't for his master's request, this idiot would no longer be alive here. Yunho stepped on this guy's head with his foot and he started screaming in pain. Suddenly a man in blue clothes appeared and said that the two opponents should stop here immediately and end the fight. He looked around and saw a man in brown clothes lying on the ground. It was Mayan Su from Seven Moyen and he looked very bad. His face was beaten and he was spitting blood. On the other side, Suk Ho Rol from the Huang family was lying his nose was broken and blood was running down his face. And in the center of this fight, Peng Zhao was lying on the ground and this guy put his foot on his head. Somi stood aside and held her hand, she was very scared by the behavior of these thugs. Tears began to appear in her eyes and she felt insulted. The man began to understand what happened here and he realized that these idiots dared to offend the daughter of the leader of the Supreme Coalition. Yunho said that he sees in this man's face that he doesn't need to explain the situation that happened here. He was in a very difficult situation and he urgently needed to take some measures to resolve this situation. He said that his name is Nam Gung Hyun and he is the deputy head and responsible for enforcing the rules in the family and asked to stop this guy's activities because they will then deal with this incident according to the rules of the family. Yun Ho said that judging by the way these guys openly pestered the daughter of the leader of the Supreme Coalition and insulted his son and himself at the master's funeral, this is all very strange. He asked this guy if he thought the Nam Gung family's rules were too lenient. Yunho said that he really hopes that the representatives of the law will not be soft on these thugs just because they are representatives of the five famous families. Yunho made this guy feel awkward and in a terrible situation. People at that moment were discussing this situation that happened in the courtyard of the palace and they were trying to understand whether this young gentleman really is a member of the Supreme Coalition and at that moment a man was sitting in the background and drinking tea. This man said that three masters known for their strength were defeated by one heir to the trade union, he thought it was very strange. He put a cup on the table. The old man said that this was a very interesting situation and he would be interested in understanding it. Somi gave her hand to her brother so that he could look at the bruises, the girl said that this man grabbed her hand and tried to take her away, although she politely refused him. Yunho carefully examined her hand and said that her hand will hurt for a while but if she uses medicine and ointments then these bruises will go away in a few days. Go Suddenly a man approached them and started coughing in order to attract attention, the guy turned his head and looked at this man. The old man smiled and asked these guys if he could sit down with them and join their company. Yunho looked at this old man incredulously and thought that he clearly needed something from them. The old man looked at the guy with a sly look and tried to convince him with his gaze that he could be trusted. Yunho noticed the rope that was hanging on this old man's belt, it was red and blue in color. The guy noticed that this old man had a rope on his belt with eight knots tied and his clothes were very worn out. The guy said that among all the looks he saw in the crowd, only one glance irritated him. Yunho immediately understood who this man was because he stood out very much from all the other guests. He said that this old man was the elder of the beggar sect. The old man started laughing and was delighted that this guy guessed who he was so quickly. They sat at the table and continued to talk, the old man said that his joke had gone too far. He introduced himself to these young people and said that his name was Chu Guang Gu and he said that he earns his living by begging. Chu Guang began to ask the guy about how the deceased teacher taught this boy, but Yun Ho was distrustful of this man and asked what he wanted from them. Guan Gu sometimes began to behave very strangely as if he were a crazy person and the old man shouted that the guy could not hide the truth from him. He began to talk about how he lives alone, 
he has a good eye for talent, and he just saw Sumi in this boy as a great talent. He asked this guy if he would like to join the Murim Alliance. He said that with his help, Yunho will be able to spread his wings behind his shoulders and do what he wants. Yunho thought about this proposal. After all, this old man now absolutely seriously wants to invite the guy to the best faction in Murim. The man at the next table saw the old man and he immediately recognized him. After all, he was an elder from the beggar sect. These guys who were sitting at the next table told Yunho that the guy had a good day today because those who interested the elder become great warriors in the Murim alliance. Yunho smiled and looked at the old man again, he understood that he was now in control of this situation and could make any decision. He crossed his arms over his chest, took a closed pose and said that he refuses this offer. Guan Gu was shocked by such an answer. After all, before this guy, no one had ever refused him, and after all, this offer was unique and many people dream about it. Guan said that he was embarrassed to hear such a quick refusal, but the guy replied that he did not see embarrassment in this old man. Guan was very dissatisfied with this answer and he really wanted to know the reason why the guy refused this opportunity. Yunho replied that he doesn't need a reason to refuse any offers. But the guy understood that he needed to at least a little quench this old man's curiosity and said that the reason could be that he was simply not interested. Guan said that if the boys were not interested in such a proposal then he would not raise this topic anymore but ask the boy to behave carefully in the future. Guan told the guy that he had an assumption that the boy would soon be in great danger and Yunho took this as a threat. Guan smiled and looked at the guy. He understood that he had great power and connections, and the guy's answer really upset him. Barbarian King Peng Ji Yeo from the Peng family who lives in Hebei is one of the 24 strongest martial artists and everyone knows that when he is angry he pushes his opponents to the extreme. And most of all in life he values his son, whose ankle Yunho recently broke. Guan told the guy all this and asked him to remember these words because they couldn't help him in the future. The old man said that the head of the Peng family would not tolerate this and would take revenge in the supreme coalition for this act because his honor was insulted. Yunho finally understood who the father of this scumbag was and now it became clear to him why he behaves so disgustingly in society. Guan asked the guy what he now thinks about this whole situation and whether he has changed his decision about joining the alliance. Guan said that he knows the feeling that the guy is experiencing now and he knows that the boy does not want to get involved with such a crazy person, but he is able to ask the head of the peaceful alliance to resolve this situation for the sake of Yunho. Guan said that he would only do this if the guy showed interest in joining the Muram alliance. Somi began to worry at this moment and feel awkward, she was scared for her brother and wanted to ask him to make the right decision. Yunho answered this old man that because of his threats and conversations, his sister is now sitting scared and he doesn't like it. Yunho told this old man that if he has nothing more to tell then he asks him to leave their table and let them eat in peace with their sister. Guan was shocked by this answer and became very angry with the guy, he did not understand why the boy behaved so arrogantly and allowed himself to communicate with him like that. He left their company and began to walk, but in the end he said that they would meet again. Somi asked her brother if this is normal for you to send this person away. But Yunho asked his sister not to worry about it. He said that nothing bad would happen and that his intimidation should not be trusted. Guan felt humiliated and insulted after his proposal was rejected by this brat. He thought that this child was behaving very arrogantly and impolitely towards the elder and such behavior was unacceptable. He was surprised that the boy didn't even flinch when he heard that he was in danger. He clenched his teeth in anger and began to think that the new generation was behaving disgustingly. This guy had complete self-confidence and not a drop of bragging. It infuriated him that this man behaved perfectly and the old man felt weak when he communicated with him. A large grey room near a high staircase stands two guards with spears, torches hang on the walls and in the center of the hall there are stone cubes with torches inside. A man in expensive yellow-orange clothes entered the dungeon and a guard followed him. He approached the cell in which his nephew was sitting and said that he was very angry with the guy and he warned him to think before he does something and not to open his mouth in private company. The guy himself was not visible because it was dark in the cell, but his voice could be heard. He asked his uncle to get him out of here. The gentleman asked the head of security whether it was really necessary to lock his nephew in a cell for a fight between young men and the head of security replied that he was punished in accordance with the rules of the family. 
the gentleman said that the head of the Ping family will not wait quietly when he finds out about this situation. The guy replied that in an Amgung family house no one can stand above the rules of the family. This answer angered the gentleman, he didn't expect that they would really take an ordinary fight so seriously. The gentleman came to his palace to report to this guy's father that he was now sitting in a prisoner's cell. His father was furious at the news he heard, he couldn't believe that this idiot was put behind bars because of a fight that happened in the palace. The gentleman said that the representative of the law was very stubborn when he tried to ask him to release the guy. Father was very angry about this and grabbed the silver goblet in his hand and broke it. He said that these idiots dared to target the young master of the Ping family. He called Ping Dae Ju and this man immediately came to the throne room and asked what the head of the family required of him. He ordered this man to go to the trade union and come back only when he broke both of this guy's legs for beating his son. They were shocked by such an order from the head of the family who had just crippled the child of the leader of the Supreme Coalition. The gentleman tried to rectify the situation and explained in the family's mind that the Supreme Coalition has been cooperating with their family for many generations, if the situation worsens even more, then their cooperation will come to an end. He threw the silver glass on the floor and kicked it. He stood up from his throne and said that he would not calmly look at the situation in which his son was humiliated and locked behind bars. He said that if these weaklings are afraid to go and fight with this guy and defend the honor of this family, then the gentleman himself will go and break this guy's legs and arms and tear off his head. The man at that moment realized that his honor would be desecrated if he did not complete this task, so he sat on his knee and asked the gentleman to allow him to complete this task and he was ready to go there. Mr. Peng looked at this guy with his angry eyes and thought about whether it is worth sending this guy there or is it better to do everything himself. They walked along the corridors of the large palace and had a dialogue with each other. They went to the window and the gentleman told this man that he did not know why the head cared so much about this child. He said that he would take responsibility for any consequences, so he asked the man to be careful. The man said that he would do it this evening, he would try to be very quiet and do everything so that no one would notice it and would not know that it was their doing. Night fell and in the sky and only half of the moon was visible, clouds floated across the sky and covered the stars. At night, the lights in the city begin to burn and the city itself becomes like a den of fireflies. A girl approached Yunho and asked if he was the young master from the Supreme Coalition. This girl reported that the leader asked to give him a message. He said that the young master could go to the annex first because they would talk until late at night. Somi closed her eyes and said that everything happens for a very long time and it's probably because they rarely get together. Yunho acted completely indifferent to this situation and said that he and his sister could already leave because he was full and tired of all these looks because of that elder of the beggar sect. The girl kindly offered her help and said that she could take them to the guest house and ask them to follow her. A man appeared on the roof of the house. He moved very quietly on the roof and moved unnoticed. The man dressed in black clothes so that he could not be seen at night. This made it easier for him to keep an eye on the guy. He watched them from the roof of the house and thought that he had to resolve the conflict that occurred between two children. He put a red mask on his face and said that nowadays it is very difficult to earn money for a living. Yunho looked at his sister and said that she should go into the house first and rest. Somi asked her brother where he decided to go at such a late time. And the guy answered her that he needed to take a little walk because he ate a lot. She laughed and said that she understood him because he had been eating non-stop all day and it would be useful for him to have an evening walk. Somi asked her brother not to walk for a long time and not to linger because she was worried about him and didn't want something to happen to him. Yunho lowered his head down and began to walk along the street. He opened his eyes and they began to glow blue. He thought that there was an uninvited guest in the guest house and he wondered what kind of brave man decided to do this. He alone began to walk through the labyrinths of the courtyard which was located near the guest house. Yunho felt the presence of a stranger here, but so far he could not see him. He looked around and realized that the enemy was nowhere to be seen, which means that he was hiding very well. He wondered where this stranger was now and the game of hide and seek in him aroused special interest. Yunho decided to ask this guy in a loud voice how long he would wait for the right moment and the assassin was very surprised that he was discovered. Yunho said that if this assassin followed him to such a remote and isolated place then he should politely show himself to save the guy from problems. The assassin tried to hide and disappear so that the guy wouldn't discover him. 
He thought that he was moving very stealthily and using the great law of invisibility technique, but this guy still noticed him. Yunho said that even standing on the ground he can feel his panicked breathing that someone assassin is trying to hide. The assassin thought that this guy was mocking him and trying to deceive him, he uses his tricks to make the assassin appear, he cannot determine his location but he feels his presence. Yunho asked why are you still in doubt? Does he really want to say that he had no other intentions? Yunho said that if this assassin still doesn't show up, it means he doesn't have courage. The assassin at that moment began to feel awkward, he understood that this guy was provoking his emotions. This boy managed to make assassin angry and hurt his feelings. He thought that this mission was not intended to be a fair fight, but since he is an elder of a well-known faction, he cannot tolerate such an attitude towards himself. The assassin jumped off the roof and thought that he needed to fight this guy one-on-one -on -one and stop without going too far. He wanted to strike from above and immediately knock out this guy, tried to use his strongest and fastest blow so that the guy would not be able to move for a long time. Yunho stood in his place and did not move from the side, it would seem that the guy does not feel threatened at all. But suddenly he turned his head towards assassin and smiled and he told him that this assassin wasted his martial arts. Yunho immediately decided to kick his opponent and not let him attack first. This blow was very powerful and caused the assassin a huge amount of damage, and the assassin managed to defend himself from this blow at the last moment. After this assassin received a blow, he flew to the side and crashed into a wall. Yunho asked this pathetic assassin and what was he thinking about, showing his intention to kill the guy while attacking him from behind. Yunho made the assumption that it was assassin who treated the boy like dog crap and this offended him. The assassin was green because he had just been hit, he looked at this guy and said that this is a very arrogant child. He decided to attack this boy and show him all the power he has. The assassin managed to move very quickly to the guy and he touched his chest with his palms. The assassin made a strong burst of energy from his palms and an explosion occurred that threw Yunho back. Yunho started to fly backwards but was able to keep his feet on the ground and didn't fall. He moved very quickly and suddenly appeared in front of this assassin's face. Yunho started laughing very loudly and asked this assassin is this blow all he can do. The killer jumped back and felt that his opponent had protective chi energy. He couldn't believe that such a young guy could have such strong protective energy. Yunho said that this is all thanks to his good teacher who taught him the best martial art techniques. The guy asked this assassin to tell his head that next time they would send someone stronger to him if they didn't want to stop there. He tried to explain his demands to this assassin more clearly and said that next time he wanted to fight the father of that scumbag whom he had already humiliated in the morning. The assassin was furious at this guy's behavior. He said that the son usually has no right to a ransom. To say such words. But Yunho was not going to listen to the pitiful moans of this weakling and immediately struck him in the chest. The assassin flew to the side and crashed into the wall in the same place where he crashed before, there was a bright blue color on his chest and he felt great pain. Yunho struck him with his palm and this time he used much more force when he struck. He stood and looked at the defeated enemy, he was wondering, will this weakling be able to get up and continue the battle or will he just lie on the ground and writhe in pain? Yunho heard that another person had appeared in this area. He started coughing to attract his attention and the boy turned his head towards this person. The old man ran towards the guy and was delighted with what he had just seen, he said that he happened to pass here by chance and ended up at an amazing show. He asked the boy if he was injured during the battle with this assassin. Yunho realized that this old man was watching them and he felt disgusted that this was coming again and would disturb him. Yunho said that he didn't notice this old man right away and thought that it was just a rat running towards the beginning of yelling at the guy for talking nonsense. Guan turned his head to the side and saw the face of a man who was lying near the wall. He came closer to him and asked who this man was. He noticed that this guy looked a little old, but when he managed to look at the man's face, he was shocked. You know, he recognized him. It was Ping Deju and Guan did not accept what this man was doing here and why he was hunting the guy. Yunho asked the old man how he knew this man and the old man said that this was the leader of the strongest detachment of the Ping family. This gentleman was the leader of the Ping court detachment. Yunho said that everything was clear to him and there was nothing interesting here, but the old man was shocked by such an answer, he didn't understand why this guy was behaving like this. Guan said that the incident should not be taken so lightly because it is a very serious situation. The old man said that the leader of the family, 
Ping Ji Yeo, sent the strongest warrior he has for the boy's head, and this means that the leader of the family will not want to lag behind the boy and will continue to pursue him. Yun Ho said that in the morning this old man told him the same thing and there is nothing interesting here. The old man was surprised, as always, by this guy's answer and said that in the morning he had his own interests and he embellished and exaggerated this whole situation. Guan said that the person would want to come in person after he found out that Peng Dae Ju could not cope with this task. Yun Ho averted his eyes to the side because he was absolutely not interested in everything that this crazy old man was saying. The guy started to leave. I said that if the old man is going to talk about joining the alliance again, then he leaves immediately. The old man said that this time everything is really serious. He shouted to the guy that the head of the Peng family would personally decide to take care of this matter and then the Supreme Coalition would not be able to protect him. Yun Ho is tired listen to this unbearable nonsense that this crazy old man is talking about and just covered his ears with his fingers he said that this old man is very noisy and if he continues like this, he will have to kill him. Guan began to get angry at this boy even more because he was absolutely not worried about the danger that could happen to him. But suddenly the old man realized that this child had exceeded all his expectations and he turned out to be much more interesting than he could have imagined. And suddenly he realized that it was not this guy who would have problems and troubles, but quite the opposite, they crossed his path and now troubles await the Peng family. Guan went up to the wounded man and tried to help him. He asked if he was okay and how he was feeling. Half of the moon continued to hang in the center of the sky and illuminates the earth. Peng Dei Ju went to the palace after losing a fight to this child. The soldier informed the gentleman that he had found this guy unconscious near the entrance to their residence and they carried him with the rest of the soldiers into the palace. The soldier told the gentleman that this man had no serious injuries, but he was now unconscious. The gentleman was green and he understood the current situation that everything was out of control and this guy needed to be dealt with once and for all. The morning came, it was a beautiful sunny day, clouds were floating across the sky and the air was very fresh. Loud strange noises were heard in the palace. The man's hand began to reach forward with a very quick movement and tried to grab something. The leader of the Peng family grabbed the throat of a man who could not cope with the task with his hand. He was very angry and wanted to find out in detail what happened last night and why this person was coming and being dragged here unconscious. He held this man by the neck in the air with one hand and asked him to explain how he dared to come back disgraced when he had to break that brat's legs. Dae Ju said that this boy was able to notice him through the law of invisibility and he can even use the Qi energy barrier. The leader threw this man aside and his back crashed into the wall. The leader did not want to hear anything and ordered this idiot to shut up. He said that this idiot was just using useless tricks to get close to the guy. And after he didn't succeed and he was beaten, he decided to return to the palace with excuses. The leader said that he personally wanted to look at this puppy and asked his assistant where this child was now, but his assistant replied that this was impossible. He said that he just received a message that the leader of the Muram Alliance will arrive here. The gentleman was very angry about this whole situation and understood that he should not meet with this boy now, but he was ready to tear him apart with his bare hands and do it as quickly as possible. The funeral of the deceased master was still taking place in the palace and a red candle was constantly burning near his portrait. Asterix came in with a portrait with very long grey hair that was tied into a bun with a gold hairpin. This man pulled his hands forward and brought them together, after which he lowered his head and carefully bowed to the dead master. He stood with his eyes closed for a long time and did not move. Apparently, he communicated with the dead master in his head. Elite warriors with white headbands stood in a line and waited for their master. They stood opposite each other and created a corridor from their bodies for the owner. The same old man with long gray hair came out of the large hall in which the dead master was located. It was clear from his face that he was worried about something and this thought did not allow him to relax. He walked accompanied by the owner of this palace and the owner asked if this gentleman was already returning back because everyone thought that he would stay here at least until the end of the funeral. The old man said that he could not do this because he is the leader of the alliance and he has many responsibilities that he must fulfill. He said that soon it will be time for him to cry for his brother as a member of the Namgong family. When people saw the leader of the alliance walking through the center of the square, they immediately began to bow to him to greet the leader. The old man looked at all these people and smiled. He tried to seem friendly to them. 
Yun Ho was in a crowd of people and he saw the leader of the alliance walking through the center of the square and white energy emanating from him. He smiled and thought that his master was right about this man. Yun Ho thought that he has an insanely high level of qi energy and this level of energy stuns everyone. Even with an ordinary smile, the king of the sword, Nam Gong Jin, would like to fight with him for the place of the strongest, like in the old days when he was still the king of Yukai. The guy said out loud what you want, one day, fight this old man and measure your strength with him. Somi asked her brother what did he just say. But the guy replied that he didn't say anything special. Suddenly he turned his head to the side and saw one very interesting man. Among all the people who were in this square, there was one person who interested the guy. He was a tall man in red clothes. This man was very angry and I understand this could be immediately noticed, but Yunho understood the reason for this man's anger. He immediately realized that this same Peng Ji Yeol was from the Peng family. Yunho watched this man for a bit and the only thing he thought about when he looked at him was that this man looked like a big stupid bear. He smiled and thought that he needed to do with this scumbag in the same way as he did with his son and publicly humiliate him. Through the wooden bars that were on the windows one could see the rays of the sun making their way into the room. The leader of the Namgong family asked Mr. Why did he come such a way to demand the release of a prisoner? The man said that yesterday he spoke very clearly about this and made it clear what happens on the family's territory will be controlled by its laws without exception. Mr. Pan asked the head of the Namgong family. Does he really want to make him angry? Mr. Namgong said that according to the law of the family, the crime should be made public and the punishment carried out publicly, but he just put them behind bars after identifying them. He said that Mr. Pang makes him very upset when they try to break the law and his family. But this man was beside himself with rage and couldn't stand this kind of behavior towards himself and didn't understand why they were talking to him like some ordinary person. He looked at his diplomats who had been standing aside all this time and shouted at them. He asked why they did not interfere in this dialogue and did not help him solve this problem. The man said that he is a representative of the Moyan family and his friend is a representative of the Huang family and they do not mind if this guy is punished according to the rules of this family. Mr. Peng was furious at the decision of these useless idiots who did not support him. The owner asked Mr. Peng to behave appropriately and said that there are things that should not be said out loud or done. He reproached Mr. Peng for being too proud to apologize for his words. A man suddenly appeared and reproached Mr. Peng for being too proud to apologize for his words. It was Somi and Yunho's father. He said that the heir of the Pan family molested his daughter and there are still bruises on her arm. He admitted that he did not want to fan the flames of the scandal, but Mr. Peng had just added fuel to the fire that he himself had lit with his son. The big man was shocked by this behavior of this merchant and I don't understand what right he has to talk to him like that. He asked not to treat him as a merchant and stop underestimating him, otherwise he will be forced to show what the wealth of the Supreme Coalition is capable of. Peng was in a difficult situation, he didn't understand how to come out of this situation as a winner, he didn't want to apologize, and from a moral point of view, he was already a loser. But Somi's father was very offended by the actions of these people and was ready to go to the end in the confrontation between their families. Yunho stood in the square and looked at the leader of Murim and his teacher's brother, he said that this man definitely knows how to fight. Somi said that they still want them better than all these warriors. A thug suddenly ran out of the building and broke the door. It was an angry Mr. Peng. When the big guy found himself on the street, the first thing he saw before his eyes was the same guy who beat his son and began to destroy his reputation. He looked down on him and didn't give a damn what he should do in this situation, apparently there was no limit to rage, emotions consumed his mind. Yunho hid his sister behind his back so that she would be protected and carefully watched this gentleman and waited for his actions. Mr. Pan at that moment was on a hill and it seemed that he became even larger and more terrible than before. He was a very stupid man but he needed a lot of time to make the right decision. He came down the stairs and started walking towards this guy. But he decided to pass by and told the boy that he should be grateful to Mr. Pen for not twisting his head. After the big guy said this, he passed by and moved on, trying to calm himself down. Yunho smiled and realized that he would not tolerate such an attitude towards him and this thug himself made his choice when he threatened him. Yunho therefore shouted to the big guy that he looked like a big cowardly bear. Mr. Peng heard this insult that the guy just shouted at him and stopped. 
he turned his head towards the boy and asked him to repeat once again the words he had just said. Yunho asked his little sister to be sent as far away from here as possible because it will be hot here now and she might get hurt. Yunho said that he doesn't like to repeat things twice and Mr. Peng apparently has hearing problems if he couldn't hear it the first time. Yunho said that especially for him he would repeat these words again and called Mr. Pan a big cowardly bear. Mr. Pang at that moment was as angry as possible with this boy and his nose flew out and he resembled a boiling kettle. The owner of the palace walked with the guest and the leader of the Supreme Coalition around the palace territory and discussed the conflict that had occurred. The head of the Namgung family apologized to the leader of the Supreme Coalition for the situation and said that he should have taken this matter more seriously. The leader of the Supreme Coalition said that his friend acted very wisely in this situation and took his side, this is a big part for him. Mr. Namgong smiled and said that this incident had deeply hurt the feelings of everyone present here. And he said that in any case, the situation is on the side of this gentleman. Suddenly he saw his daughter standing alone near the palace and looking into the distance. Somi saw her father and thought that she needed to tell him everything. Father ask your daughter why she is here alone and where is her brother. Somi came closer to tell her father everything. His name was Guan, he was a monster who could not resist fighting because of the excess energy that was seething in him. The white fox stayed with him for several days and then beat him because he continued to threaten him and pester him with his fights, after that that rude idiot immediately became polite and did not do that again. Yunho thought that he is now in a human body, but the situations that happened to him are very similar to those situations that happened in a past life. When he looked at this guy, he remembered that bear, he became interested in how many hits this big guy would become obedient. He thought that it made sense to use the sword right away and not waste time, but that would probably be too easy. Mr. Pang looked at this guy and said that he was acting very confident since he decided to challenge the master and his arrogance reached the skies, even the name of the Supreme Coalition is nothing compared to him. Yunho started laughing very loudly and couldn't stop laughing. He is very surprised that such a stupid person as Ping Ji Yeol knows what the height of heaven is. The guy said that the heavens hate arrogant fools who talk all sorts of nonsense about them and said that the Lord on Ping the heavens will definitely strike with lightning. This big guy gets angry at night when I hear the sarcastic answer of his opponents, to tolerate such attitude towards himself from some boy. Pan made a splash of his energy and an energy wave appeared around him that lifted the grass into the air. Yunho thought that it is believed that the 24 strongest warriors are at the heaven level but it seems that everything is a little different from the rumors. He smiled and thought that he would be very boring if he continued to behave the same way as now. Pan said that he wanted to first break this guy's legs in order to satisfy his rage, but now he understands that this will not be enough. Yunho told his opponent if he has already bared his fangs then it is time for him to jump and bite and asked why waste time on unnecessary chatter. He could not restrain himself and once again called his opponent a big stupid cowardly bear. Pan exploded with anger, he couldn't believe that this idiot was still talking to him without respect. Peng began to run towards his opponent, moving his legs quickly and taking long steps. He raised his hand up and wanted to strike him with his strong fist. Yunho saw the tattoo that his opponent wanted to give him and laughed. He thought that this was a very obvious attack and a martial artist like him could come up with something more interesting. The guy was easily able to dodge the blow and lunged to the side. He walked behind his opponent and stopped in place, the big guy continued to attack the invisible enemy. He turned his head back and saw that his brock was already behind him. He told this guy that he moved very well for an inexperienced brat. He decided to strike his enemy again and tried to intimidate him with his large size. Pan felt his fist touch this boy's body and he thought that he was able to damage him. But after a few seconds it became clear that the guy blocked this blow with his palm and would not allow himself to be damaged. They froze in this position and did not continue the fight because they needed to understand what would happen next. Yunho decided to mock his opponent and said that he was talented from birth and had a good teacher, unlike Mr. Peng. But the big man began to get angry with the boy when he heard him teasing him and wanted to make another attack. Pan waved his hand and decided to strike this guy one more time. But Yunho, as always, was able to dodge this blow in time and he made a high jump and froze in the air. Pan, I'll shout that this guy won't be able to escape from him and he'll leave here today with broken bones. He began to run towards the guy in order to deal him another crushing blow. Yunho said that Mr. Pan moves very slowly and by the time he waits for his attack, he can already sleep. 
The big guy took a leap and wanted to strike from above and crush this impudent little brat. He hit the ground with his hands and the ground began to crack into a pile of cracks. He raised his hands up and began to examine the surface of the earth to see where the guy was. Yunho at that moment I was behind him and wiping my clothes from dirt and dust, he said that he was getting very bored. He said that he couldn't believe that this man's name was on the list of the 24 strongest martial artists and he heard that everyone on this list is superior to other masters and has reached the peak of martial arts. Yunho stated that Mr. Peng clearly does not deserve to be on this list. These words hurt the big man's pride and feelings and he didn't understand how he could defeat this guy. He began to have memories of how the supreme elders were thinking about adding three new kings to this list or not because they had not yet reached their peak. One of the elders said, said that the rest of the members of this list have already reached the peak in martial arts, but there are three kings who are not worthy to be on this list. They came up with the idea to rename the list of the 24 strongest martial artists to the list of 21 people. Pan overheard the dialogue of these elders and he was furious that they did not want to put him on the list. He told Yunho that this is all a waste of youth and precious life on unnecessary things. The guy looked at this big guy in surprise and decided to try to listen to the boring story that he now wanted to tell. But Pan told the guy that throughout this fight he was holding back his powers and didn't want to show them at full power, but now this guy has angered him and he'll have to do it. Pan began to accumulate orange energy in his body and released it in order to enter the battle. He said that he would gladly help this guy die if it was his will. Yunho began to smile and said that he finally waited for a normal opponent to fight with him because before that he was very bored. Pan tried to accumulate a huge amount of energy in his palms in order to throw it out later. He used a fighting technique called palming to start shooting energy from his palms. He released energy spheres from his hands that flew very quickly towards his opponent and did not explode when they collided with an object. He continued to throw these spheres out of his hands and everything around him turned into a battlefield where everything exploded. Pits began to appear in the earth and the earth itself flew into the air along with the grass. He tried to throw out all his anger and energy through these energy spheres, got excited and wanted to destroy everything connected with this guy. There was a very strong explosion in the forest that could be seen from afar. Pan stopped and decided to see what was happening to his enemy now, he waited until the smoke cleared and he could see it. He thought that the martial arts in the Seven Pen originated on the battlefield, they carry wartime Murima from birth, and it contains the will of death to kill enemies on the battlefield. And when the smoke cleared, there was a big pit in front of him and there was nothing else there, the guy disappeared somewhere. Pan thought about the fact that he killed this guy and he felt calmer. He said that he wouldn't have done this if this little brat weren't so arrogant. But a light appeared in the smoke, it was a blue light that constantly moved into space. Pan didn't understand where this blue light would come from and when the smoke began to clear he saw the silhouette of a guy. Yunho held the sword in his hand at arm's length and stood calmly without moving. He was shocked that this guy was still alive and he was still able to fight. He didn't understand how this was even possible, because it was impossible for such a child to survive after the palm of heaven and earth. But Yunho pulled his sword forward and it began to glow with a bright blue light, emitting a huge amount of energy. Pan didn't understand how this guy managed to reveal the aura of the sword at such an age and achieve unity with his weapon. Yunho stood opposite his opponent right in the center of the forest glade and held his sword in his hands. Pan did not understand why this boy was not hit by a single attack and made his assumption that the guy repelled all these attacks using his world. He remembered how the man who was supposed to kill this boy spoke about his incredible strength and how he uses the chi energy barrier. He began to get even angrier because he didn't listen to this guy back then and now he saw with his own eyes Yunho's strength. He only now realized that the words spoken by the assassin who came from the mission were true and these were not excuses. Pan realized that this was a guy who was trying to beat him like that and using Oromic because it was impossible to defend himself with these attacks in any other way. He didn't understand how the old man managed to train this guy to such incredible results at such a young age. He told this guy that he was a very cunning kid because he was able to hide his martial arts skills under arrogance. Yunho smiled and started laughing because he understood that this idiot had driven himself into a trap. Yunho said that it was so and she was unexpectedly good and he even had to pull out his sword to fight her off. He said that it would be very stupid to hide this sword back into the knife we after he took it out. The guy got into a fighting stance and began to prepare for battle. He said that now it's his turn to attack and he wants to show it what's coming in return. 
Han thought that this kid is actually very strong but nevertheless he is still a child and this is his weak side. He activated his energy and his hands and eyes began to glow orange. Yunho knew that the sky shattering sword was based on three different techniques and he became interested in trying them out in action. He understood that in the outside world for the first time he would be able to demonstrate his magnificent martial arts technique. He remembered the moment when he sat with his old teacher on the edge of a cliff and talked about his first sword. They dipped their feet into the water and the old man said that this sword was created by him and it is very laconic and silent. It would be nice if I didn't give him a name but it should suit him. Yunho didn't want to do it then and the old man said if he didn't do it then he would finish his martial arts training. He knew that this sword was the most expensive item for his dead master. Yunho said that this is a sword that can crush the skies and now he will show it in full force. Ping said that he had never heard of such a martial art in his life and he was not afraid of it. He started shooting orange energy spheres from his hands in order to break through the guy's defense. Yunho stood motionless in his place, preparing to repel these spheres. He activated the aura of this sword and used a technique called wind strike. Yunho very quickly began to move in space and maneuver between spheres. Han was shocked that this guy was capable of such a thing. Yunho moved very quickly in space and approached his opponent. He was able to bypass all these spheres and remain undamaged. Energy spheres began to explode and fireworks occurred in the forest again. Yunho touched his opponent's neck with his blade, cut his hair into pigtails and delivered his blow. Han didn't understand how he managed not to notice this guy because at the last moment his body was seized by cold horror. Han understood that none of the 24 strongest warriors had such a fast and powerful blow from this guy. He asked has a sword like this ever existed before? Peng looked at this guy's eyes and thought that this child's martial arts had reached its peak. Grass flew into the air and slowly began to fall down. Yunho sheathed his sword because he no longer needed it. He stood next to the fallen enemy and said that he did most of the work for him because this big guy is the second person on earth who saw this amazing technique. Han asked this brat why he stopped and decided not to kill him. Yunho spread his hands to the side and said that the master asked him not to take a life without a good reason and therefore he cannot kill this gentleman no matter how much he wants to. He added to his words that this person is not as bad as he might seem and the most important thing is that he is not going. Han began to get angry and asked the guy to kill him because he would live in shame after pardoning such an arrogant child, this is terrible and said that he wants to die. Yunho looked at this man carefully and decided to ask him again how well he thought about it. Yunho told this gentleman that he had no idea how painful it was to die and did not understand why he was so persistent in covering up his worthless son after he molested his sister. Yunho said that if he had apologized to his son in time that everything would not have gone so far, it's all his fault because he's a stubborn bear. The guy could not let this idiot leave the battlefield in such a state, he punched him in the cheek. Big Bear was defeated by a small arrogant fox and flew away after taking damage. Han sat on the ground and coughed up blood, he felt that his life had just been broken and his face was very swollen. Yunho said that he did this for his sister Somi. At that moment, white smoke began to appear around them, turning into fog. Yunho said that this gentleman treated his father as a man of the lower class, refused to accept his good intentions and even tarnished the name of the Supreme Coalition. He ordered this big guy to leave here and told him to think about why the guy left him alive even after such actions. The father was very angry when he saw his son. He scolded the guy for letting his sister walk alone around the palace grounds and said that the boy had broken his rules and asked where he had been all this time. Yunho was very surprised when his father came to him about where he was and his sister said that his brother left because his stomach hurt. The father asked his son if everything was okay with him now and the guy replied that his stomach had stopped hurting and everything was fine. He felt that his child was lying to him, but he didn't know how to bring him to clean water. So he just looked at him with disbelief. Yunho opened his eyes as wide as possible and looked at his father show calmness and confidence in his words. The head of the security approached the lord and informed him that the carriage was already ready to leave, it was time for them to move out. Somi asked her brother if everything was okay with him and how did his duel with this big guy go. He smiled and showed with all his appearance that everything had come even better than he thought and told his sister that everything was fine. The candle near the portrait of the dead master gradually begins to burn out. The head of the security of this palace informed the leader of the family that Head Peng left immediately after leaving the message. 
Mr. Pan said in his message that he accepts all his son's misdeeds and agrees that he should be punished according to the law and rules of this family. The leader did not understand why he made such a decision because it is very surprising for a person with such a temperament. He assumed that this gentleman came to the corner, he had no other choice. The second man suggested that something else could have influenced this gentleman and made him change his mind. He said that according to the guard at the gate, he saw Chief Peng and the young master of the Supreme Coalition heading into the forest. After this, the guard reported that half an hour later the young master was the first to return, and Chief Peng returned when the Supreme Coalition left the gates of this palace. He said that the young master looked fine after returning, while the head of the Peng family returned after the cruel battle and he was covered in cuts and bruises. The man said that this is unreliable information because no one saw them except the guard at the gate, but nevertheless this is one of the versions. He said that if you can believe the words of this guard, then the young master of the Supreme Coalition was able to pacify the head of the Peng family and therefore he decided to give in. The gentleman raised his eyebrows and didn't understand how to react to this information because it all sounded like some kind of fiction, he said that a real monster had appeared in the Supreme Coalition. An old man appeared in his memories who constantly gave him instructions and tips, and this old man turned to the head of the family. He asked to never provoke the monster from the Supreme Coalition because this guy is stronger than anyone he has ever seen. He only now began to understand about what kind of monster the old man constantly told him and why he asked him not to provoke the guy. His uncle often told him about world events with his metaphors and exaggerations. But then he thought that his uncle was telling him about the monster and meant the enormous financial power of the Supreme Coalition. But only now he began to understand what was really happening and what kind of monster the old man was telling him about. When they first met, he immediately felt something very strange. The eyes of this child were not like the eyes of a young guy, they were completely different. He thought that if the guard's words turned out to be true, this child really defeated the head of the PN family, then the monster that his uncle mentioned was much more terrible than it might seem at first glance. He realized that this monster is the same child who was taught by his uncle all this time and therefore he knows about the abilities of this boy. On this day the weather was magnificent again. There were a lot of apples in the sky. The guy threw the dice into the air and each dice had a different color. The dice fell on the red board and showed certain symbols. This guy was surprised when he saw the result on the dice, he couldn't believe his eyes. What he saw seemed like real horror to him because these bones all showed the same result. The boy said that there is a high probability that he could fall on his back and break his nose or cut his hand with a silk thread and get a scar. He approached a tree branch and a green leaf fell from this branch. He put this sheet to his chin and started talking to Amitba. He asked him to carry this leaf through the air and for this leaf to take away all the troubles of today. He gave out this foliage air and he began to fly. But suddenly this leaf froze in the air and began to float in place. The guy saw that this leaf was flying very slowly and returned to him. A green leaf landed on the guy's black hair. He was upset because this leaf did not want to take all his troubles with him and the guy said that today was not his day. There were a lot of people in the city and they were all busy with their own affairs. The city today resembled a big anthill. The guy held a golden earring in his hand and looked at it against the sky. Yunho tried to look at this trophy as best as possible and understand why people in this world put them in their ears. He said that he should have cut off this idiot's ear, but for some reason he doubted it and didn't do it. He thought that if he were a yukai at that moment, he would not even think about it and would definitely cut off his ear. But if he was actually a yukai then the ear wouldn't be enough, he would tear it in half. He couldn't believe that he really spared him. After all, it wasn't like him and he realized that he had really become a man. The vice lord heard this guy's monologue and asked what he was talking about now, but the guy said that he didn't say anything important. Yunho threw the vice lord a gold earring that he took from Mr. Pan and said that the vice lord could sell it and pay for his mother's treatment. The vice lord tried to catch this earring and not miss such a generous opportunity from the young master to earn some easy money. He told the vice lord that this was a golden earring that was in the ear of the head of the Peng family and now he does not need it. The vice lord screamed in fear that this couldn't happen, asked the guy how it happened, and he thought that the boy was joking. There were a lot of people at the bazaar that day, all the people decided to try the bazaar in order to buy new goods for themselves or to have a tasty meal. Yunho went to the market specifically to buy something tasty and he took several large deep-fried king prawns. Since then he has moved into a human body. 
he still cannot get used to the fact that food in this world can be very tasty. Suddenly he noticed something very strange not far from him, it was a crowd of people but he did not understand what was happening. He saw a crowd of people standing near the wall and watching very carefully for some reason and the boy wondered why these people were watching. The guy put several game dice in his hands, otherwise he shook his hands so that these dice mixed with each other. He threw these dice and they fell on the game board and showed certain symbols. The guy sat on the asphalt and said that he sees that all the money this man has, as well as the money he earns, will be stolen. The man was not ready to hear such information. He said that he has a brother and he wants to invest his money in this brother in order to later earn even more. It seems to him that this is a good idea, despite the fact that it is risky. The boy asked why this man came to him and was trying to find out about his dacha if he was so confident in his idea. The man said that he would invest a large amount of money in this idea and that's why he was a little nervous and wanted to know about his luck from this guy. The man asked this boy how much money he should pay for his services and the boy replied that his service costs a hundred niangs. The man asked why this guy told him such a large amount because he tells other people the amount is 10 coins and he asked him for 100 and the boy replied that everything is the seller's will. Suddenly froze in place opened his eyes wide and felt something very strange. He used his nose to smell the unusual smell and his knife told him that it was very dangerous to be here now. He felt the same smell that he had smelled before in the forest and was scared. The boy began to look around to try to find the person from whom this smell came. The man said that now everything became clear to him and this guy is a charlatan who sells fake amulets. The boy began to scream in fear and jumped up from his seat, he behaved very strangely and people did not understand what was happening to him. He started running down the street and didn't even take money from this man. The whole time he was running, he was shouting that there was a yukai. A real yukai appeared in this village. The man said that if this boy ran away, it means that he is actually a fraudster and the girl was not afraid because she did not believe that this decent boy could be a fraudster. People began to disperse from this square and discuss this boy, they did not understand why he behaved so strangely. When all the people left, only Yunho was left standing in this place. He was the only person who could understand this boy and did not judge him for his strange behavior. But Yunho was still shocked that this guy was able to somehow magically determine that there was a Yukai in the crowd of people. He wondered how this child managed to guess such a big secret. After all, few people can do this. The guy ran through the forest and tried to get as far away from this city as possible, he talked all the way about how he knew that this could happen. He thought that this was the smell that he had smelled earlier, this smell definitely belonged to Yu Kai and did not understand how he managed to encounter him in person. He ran faster and faster, despite the fact that he was already very tired, he shouted that he needed to hide in the mountains as soon as possible and not show himself. But a branch was already flying at him, which was supposed to stop this guy. This branch hit him right at his feet and he stumbled and began to fall. The boy fell to the ground and slammed his face into the sand. Yunho walked slowly with long steps towards him, he couldn't just let this guy go. Yunho asked the boy if he was able to run far enough during this time. He said that he had to look for this guy for a long time and still managed to find this fortune teller. The boy started screaming and jumping on the spot. He waved his arms widely and was furious because he was caught. He put his stick forward in order to defend himself and said that Yokai has no right to walk around the human world so fearlessly. He said that the heavens should punish him. The boy took out a red seal from his sleeve and decided to use it. He threw a red seal at his opponent and it had to somehow stop the Yukai. Yunho was surprised. I looked at this red piece of paper that stuck to his clothes and tried to understand what it was. He remembered that this is a human talisman that helps people ward off Yukai. Yunho looked at this guy and was surprised that the boy actually thought that Yunho was a Yukai. He started shouting at his opponent and said that with this seal the beast would no longer be able to move. Yunho raised his hand up to show that he was calmly moving his hands and nothing happened to him. He showed this boy his movements and said that he could easily move his body and the seal did nothing to him. But this little short guy didn't want to give up and started throwing even more stamps at him. There was a stamp on his face and he began to get angry because of the behavior of this idiot. Yunho said that this is all useless and these seals cannot stop his movement. He took the short guy by the collar of his shirt with his hand and lifted him into the air. The boy continued to call this guy Yukai and said that he would not give up and would fight to the end. 
but I decided to do something much wiser to Yunho. He invited this guy to calm down, sit down and calmly talk about it all. Yunho remembered the moment when he met the Tathagata and this deity allowed him to live the life of a person who was different from the life of Yukai. From now on he is a man and who among the people does not know about his past life in the form of a white fox. But something very strange happened and this event made Yunho worry about whether he is really a person or not. He met one stupid boy who calls himself a fortune teller and this boy sees in Yunho his soul which is a Yukai. Yunho wanted to understand this situation and understand why the boy sees him as Yukai, because the Tathagata could not be wrong. They stood opposite each other on the top of a cliff and Yunho asked this boy why he sees him as a Yukai. But the soothsayer replied that it was obvious. He said that this creature managed to deceive the rest of the people, the fortune teller he would never be able to deceive. The video predictor in this guy is a real white fox and he said that his eyes cannot be deceived and he trusts his eyes. The boy again threw a red seal at Yunho, which was supposed to restrain his movement. Every time Yunho caught this red seal with his face, he thought that this fortune teller was the stupidest person he had ever met. Yunho walked up to this fortune teller and hit him on the head with his palm, he also told this boy that he was not a yukai. The fortune teller finally began to doubt his unification and asked if this man was actually a yukai. Yunho said that he has been trying for several hours to explain to this stupid predictor that he is not a yukai and tried to find out why the boy sees this creature in him. The boy explained that his heightened senses were recognized even by his teacher and his senses tell him that this guy is a yukai. Yunho laughed and then exhaled the air from his lungs. He said that he felt very stupid to be equal to. He stood on the edge of the cliff and said that I feel it may be half true, or maybe I'm wrong. Yunho was disappointed because he thought that the boy had some good reason if he was so sure that Yunho was yokai. The fortune teller said that his feelings never lie. But Yunho asked him why the red seal that is supposed to restrain Yukai does not work for him. The fortune teller at that moment was confused, he did not know how to answer this question because he was taken by surprise and he did not know the answer. He was upset because for the first time his feelings were not true and he could not prove that this person was a yokai. The fortune teller once again asked the guy if he was a yakai. And Yunho said that he was already tired of repeating that he is not a yokai. The guy felt that now was the best time to leave here and collected all his things and began to gradually approach the edge of the cliff. He jumped and in flight shouted that he was wrong and asked for forgiveness for his ignorance and after that he said goodbye. But Yunho at the very last moment grabbed this guy by the collar of his shirt and didn't let him leave. Yunho was very indignant that this boy dared to call an ordinary person yukai and after that it was so easy to leave. But the guy replied that now is the best time to forget about this stupid conflict. Yunho smiled and said that this fortune teller most likely knows how to read the heavenly Tao and he probably knows a lot of information about it. The boy turned his head at him and said that he had no idea how to read these heavenly Tao. Yunho didn't believe him and therefore threw him back so that he couldn't escape. The boy fell on a stone surface and hit his back, after which he asked why Yunho decided that the fortune teller could read the heavenly Tao. Yunho smiled and said that he just feels it the same way the fortune teller feels that Yunho is a yukai. He finally introduced himself and called him his own. He said that his name was Yunho and after that he asked what the name of this little fortune teller was. The fortune teller turned his head towards this guy and looked at him with a dissatisfied look, he understood that he couldn't just get rid of this stranger. He started scratching his head because there was now a bump there and said that his name was Lee Ryan. Yunho began to climb down the cliff and told Lee Ryan to follow him because he still needed to work. Lee was very unhappy that this gentleman was constantly telling him what to do and asked why he needed to follow him. Yunho laughed and asked this boy. Has he really spent all his strength on escaping and is no longer able to go further? After that, he asked if the guy wanted to eat some delicious food. Lee at that moment thought that he had hit the jackpot because he was very hungry and understood that this gentleman would feed him delicious food. They stood in front of the entrance to a large building on which there was a sign that said Supreme Coalition. Lee Ryan raised his head up and read the inscription on this sign, he could not believe that they were now near the Supreme Coalition. Lee ran after this gentleman and asked him why did they come here. He said that if they want to eat, they should go to some good restaurant or hotel, but definitely not here. Lee saw that this young warrior was treated as a young master in the Supreme Coalition and he realized that he was a very respected person in this place. 
Yunho turned his head towards this boy and asked why he didn't follow him and the stake was in place. The gentleman who met them near the gate asked Yunho who this boy was. Yunho replied that this is a traveling fortune teller and today it might be useful to the young master. Li Ryan entered this building for the first time and was in such beautiful apartments. He had never been to a palace before and was surprised that this Yunho was the young master of the Supreme Coalition. They had a lot of delicious food on the table, it was food for rich people, and poor people like Li could only dream of such a dinner. When he saw so much delicious meat and various delicacies, he was delighted and wanted to eat all this food. Yunho smiled and asked the young fortune teller if he would mind accepting such delicious food from Yukai. Ili didn't understand if this was a joke or if the young master was actually a yokai. The father returned to the palace and headed towards his home. He asked the nanny who was near the entrance to the house where Yunho was now. And the nanny answered him that the young gentleman is now inside the house with a guest. The father was shocked when he found out that his son was now in the house with some guest about whom the father knew nothing. Yunho drank tea and listened to the boring stories of this predictor about how after a series of failures, luck comes gradually. He talked about how the heavenly Tao led him to a famous rich merchant and he called his name Li Ryan. The boy said that he travels all over the country to study because the journey itself also has meaning. The father listened carefully to the greeting of this sweet boy and also greeted him. He said that his name was Jin Yu. Father asked Yunho to go out for a few minutes to talk about something very important. Yunho looked carefully at his father and understood that now he would need to talk to him about the situation that happened at the teacher's funeral. Jin Yu asked the boy what happened to the head of the Peng family at the funeral of the old teacher. But Yunho replied that nothing special happened. He was surprised that his father only heard the rumors now. Yunho said that Pan was very angry with the guy and decided to ask him a few questions, but the guy answered him a little differently than he expected. Yunho asked what exactly was told to his father. Because he wanted to understand exactly what rumors had reached him. But at that moment the fortune teller overheard their entire dialogue. Li watched them carefully and came to the conclusion that if this man is the father, then he is the leader of the Supreme Coalition. Jin Yu listened carefully to my son's version and realized that nothing bad happened and therefore there is no need to worry about this situation. Yunho asked his father did he really come here just to ask about this situation. The father suddenly remembered that he has another good news for his son, this news is that Yunho will accompany his father on the next trip. Yunho was not at all happy about this news and was rather upset and shocked that he would have to do this. Yunho asked your father what kind of trip he is talking about because the next trip was supposed to be to the shaman clan and he didn't really want to go there. But Li Ryan became very interested in this idea of going to the shaman clan. Yunho asked why the father decided to go there so suddenly and take his son, because there are many people besides him who can accompany the father. But Jin Yu had already made a decision and said that the boy should perceive this as a social experience. Yunho said that he doesn't want to go there and he would go anywhere but to the shamans. The father looked at the boy with a reproachful look and made him understand that the guy still had no choice. He had to come to terms with this and he was very upset by this decision, but he understood that he didn't really have elections. A young fortune teller jumped out from around the corner and immediately began to smile, he was fired up with the idea of going with him to this place. Li asked Yunho. Is he really going to go to the shaman clan and does he need an escort? Yunho at that moment was very angry and upset and did not understand why is this stupid child so happy about this news and why is he so inspired. Li got scared and asked the young master not to look at him with that look because he was still afraid of him. Li Ryan smiled and said that he was ready to go with the young master to the shaman clan and would do everything to accompany him on this difficult journey. Yunho at that moment completely stopped understanding what was happening because he didn't expect at all that this guy would want to go with him and didn't understand why he was so happy about this news. Yunho took Li Ryan along on a trip and they rode on the roof and accompanied the carriages. Yunho was very unhappy because he still had to go with his father to this clan of shamans. Li talked all the way about how the shaman clan contains real masters of Taoism. He said that every Taoist dreams of visiting this place and it is simply impossible to get there, he is very glad that he has such an opportunity. Yunho didn't understand why this guy was so happy about this and the trip and wanted to get there so much, and so he asked what was so interesting about this clan of shamans. 
Li said that the clan of shamans is called Heaven on Earth and people say that this clan consists of many future immortals. Yunho said that he doesn't like all this, he's not interested. He began to get angry because remember that terrible time in his past lives, bad memories came flooding back to him. He was a great fox who ruled the whole world of Yukai but then he went to heaven and took on the dirty work which looked scary. The shaman sat on the flying islands and constantly reproached the white fox for not doing his job well. They asked him if he could sweep the floor with his tail instead of a broom. Yunho began to get angry because of this and thought that he could not do anything with these filthy immortals. And the whole problem was that even if he killed them and tore them apart, they still wouldn't die. But Li was still very glad that he would get into the clan of shamans. And this was the dream of his whole life, he could not believe that his dream would come true. Yunho told the young fortune teller that if he didn't shut up then the guy would have to tie him to the river with ropes but the young fortune teller was so happy that he didn't care. The crew was driving along a long ramp along the forest and Li was tired of constantly riding on the roof and therefore decided to lie down and get some sleep. This guy was like a pet that behaves the way he wants. Yunho couldn't believe that this guy was actually able to fall asleep on the roof in such an awkward position. Yunho looked at this boy and thought that this guy is very funny and he even forgot how the young fortune teller threw talismans against Yukai at him. At that moment, robbers appeared in the forest and tried to move quietly between the trees. Yunho felt the presence of strangers here, he immediately got the feeling that they could be robbers. Yunho thought it was time to inform Jang Paido that there were other people in the forest besides them. He said that behind those trees in the forest there are people who are watching the crew and have been following them for a long time. He said that at first there were three or four people there and that's why Malaya worried him and he decided to report it to the security guards, but now there are twenty-five of them there. Jean Paido listened carefully to the young gentleman and realized that most likely problems could begin now. Jean climbed onto the carriage and told the young master that these people could be the Aso group of ten forest bandits. He said that they have already paid the fee. So these bandits should leave after observing them and the young master need not worry about it. Yunho thought that this was all very strange and did not understand why it was necessary to pay bandits if you could just fight them. But he decided that his father and the head of security themselves knew what they needed to do and therefore thought that they did everything right and there was no need to interfere with this. But suddenly a man with an axe in his hands appeared on the road in front of them, he was standing in the center of the road. Jean ordered the carriage to stop when he saw a man standing on the road and stopped the horses. Jean got off the carriage and asked the young gentleman to stay put. He said that he would deal with this man himself. He looked carefully at the stranger who blocked their path and tried to understand what he wanted. Jean said that this crew belongs to the Supreme Coalition and they have an agreement with the Aso group. Jean said that the Supreme Coalition had already paid the fee and he did not understand why this man blocked his path and it was easier for him to clear the way. The robber smiled and then began to laugh loudly, he realized that the situation had changed a little. The robber lowered his axe and hit the ground with it. He said that he knew that the Supreme Coalition paid a toll for travel on this road. But then he tried to explain to them that the price of the duty had increased and now that amount was not enough for this crew to travel here. Jean was shocked when he heard the answer of this robber, he could not believe that the duty had increased and understood that there would now be a conflict. The robbers were in the forest and closely watched the negotiations between the head of the robbers and this big guy. The robbers laughed and made loud, scary noises to scare the soldiers who were accompanying the crew. Suddenly the situation changed dramatically and the robbers began to emerge from the trees and they were all armed. The soldiers who accompanied the crew immediately took a fighting stance. Jean understood that these robbers were deceiving them and now they want to rob the carriages. Jean said that he had not heard anything about this and the robbers were violating the rules of the contract. But the leader of the robber laughed when he heard these words, he said that you need to be flexible to new offers and new contracts. He raised his hand up and turned to the leader of the Supreme Coalition who was now in the carriage, this robber said that he knew that there was a lot of money in the carriages for this trip. The leader of the robbers offered to pay them the missing amount and then they would not allow these carriages to pass along this road without a fight. Yunho smiled and realized that now the most fun part of this performance was about to begin, because he couldn't wait for something fun to happen during this whole trip. Lee Ryan woke up at that moment and was shocked that their carriage was surrounded by robbers. He asked the young master what was happening. 
Yunho smiled and said that he was very surprised that petty crooks were extorting money from the Supreme Coalition and also blocking the road to get more money. From the carriage, the voice of the leaders of the Supreme Coalition was heard who shouted that he would pay the required amount and Jean was dissatisfied with this decision. Yunho lowered his head down and looked at the head of security who had just approached him. Jean tried to explain to the young master that these robbers were extorting money for booze and alcohol. He said that I couldn't give them some coins and after that the robbers allowed them to drive along this road without conflict. Yunho said that this is the stupidest idea he has ever heard and he is not going to give the money to these dirty crooks. The young master said that he is already fed up with their disgusting actions and wants to take away from them the duties that they paid before. Jean said that the young master is acting recklessly and putting himself in danger and his safety is a priority for the entire crew and they will be able to deal with these bandits after returning. Yunho doesn't want to discuss this topic anymore and he has already made his final decisions. Therefore, he decided to jump off the carriage and quickly get down to business. Yunho extended his hand to the head of security and asked to give him as much money as these robbers need so that they can get away from them. Jean gave Yunho a blue bag of money, this bag contained 150 gold coins excluding travel expenses. He asked the crew to drive further forward, and at that moment the young gentleman himself would personally deal with these robbers and then catch up with the crew. Yunho turned his head towards Jean and reminded him that the young master's safety comes first and these bandits can't do anything to him, so the crew can safely move on without him. Yunho approached the leader of the robbers and said that he had 150 gold coins in his bag. The leader of the robbers was very happy when he heard such a large amount and thought that the Supreme Coalition was different from other crews that come here. The robber began to scratch his beard and said that this amount could cover the terms of the new contract. Yunho said that if this amount is enough then the bandits should clear the road and let the crew through. He pulled the axe out of the ground. After this, the collection stepped aside and said that the crew could move on and they would not interfere with them. Yunho ordered the head of security along with the entire crew to drive forward and said that he would stay here himself and then catch up with them. The crew began their movement and they began to drive forward along the road. Yunho waited for this crew to drive a little further so that they would lose sight of him. Lee didn't understand what was happening here and why the young master decided to stay with these bandits himself. The leader of the robbers carefully watched the crew as it drove off into the distance. The leader said that he allowed the crew to move on and therefore the young master now must pay him money for this service. He extended his hand forward and waited for him to finally be given the bag of coins. He asked the young gentleman not to hesitate in his decision to give money as quickly as possible before anything dangerous to his life happened. The robbers began to rejoice and laugh because they were able to get such a huge amount of money in such an easy way and they began to discuss the amount of booze they could buy with this money. Yunho threw the blue bag of money into the air and smiled, he was in no hurry to give it to the robbers. He caught this bag with his hand and tried how much weight this bag has. Yunho said that he changed his mind and now doesn't want to give the money to these dirty scumbags. The robber smiled and realized that this young gentleman was not going to give him the money just like that, but it seemed very strange to him because there were a lot of robbers here, this guy was alone. He asked the young gentleman if he had thought well and how sure he was that he did not want to give the money to the robbers. But Yunho stood calmly and didn't answer anything. The robber said that they might have problems with this guy, but he made his own choice and decided not to give the money. The leader of the robbers said that if the young gentleman does not want to give money, then the Supreme Coalition will no longer be able to travel along this path and such an outcome will not only cause problems in the future but will also destroy their existing relationship. He raised his hand up and said that in this case the gentleman would lose the amount that he was holding in his hands, but in a larger volume. He once again extended his hand to the young master to make sure for the last time that he was not going to give him the money. The leader of the robbers once again tried to convince the guy that not giving the money was a bad idea and said that for this money it is better not to cling to his place. Yunho smiled but still didn't answer this robber, he understood that they didn't know who they were dealing with. Yunho praised the robbers' leaders for being very good at manipulating people and said that he almost bought into his provocation and was ready to give the money. But he still decided to refrain from this idea and said that he would not give them money because the reason was very simple. Yunho said that if he gives the money to these robbers, they will deny the fact that he paid them and both of them will have problems, he doesn't want to let this happen. Yunho asked to be taken to the base where the Aso group is located. 
he picked up the blue bag of money in his hand and said that he wanted to personally give this money to the real leader of the Aso group. Yunho decided to do something much more cunning than anyone would have expected from him. The young master wanted to return all the money that these bandits extracted from the Supreme Coalition under the pretext of a duty. The bandit didn't understand why this guy was behaving so strangely and he knew that this young gentleman had some kind of plan, but he didn't understand what kind of plan he came up with. The robber put his axe on the ground and leaned on it. The bandit informed the young master that the supreme leader of this bandit group had left the city on his own business and it would take several days. He asked how interesting it would be for the young master to spend his time on this and wait for him on the spot. He asked the young master not to worry about this situation and said that even if it took a few days, he would definitely give the money to the supreme leader and carefully store it until his arrival. Yunho laughed and said that a few days is certainly a long time and he is not ready to stay here for that long. Yunho said that such conditions do not suit him, he is not ready to waste so much time, to which the bandit replied that the young master is complicating the situation. Yunho said that he simply has no other choice because the situation is very difficult. The young master told them that even if he gave them the money now, he is not sure that any of these bandits will be able to take at least five gold coins from this amount. He took one coin out of the bag and showed it to all the robbers. After this, Yunho decided to throw this coin at the robber and use it as a shuriken. The bandit didn't understand what this young gentleman was doing, his behavior raised only questions and it was all very strange. The coin that Yunho threw hit the big axe and knocked it to the side because of this, the bandit began to fall. He got scared and screamed because his axe had just flown to the side and he didn't understand how it happened. He turned his head back and decided to look at what had just happened to his axe. He saw that the coin that this guy threw at him was stuck in the iron tip of his axe and it was emitting blue energy. And the bandit at first thought that it was all just his imagination, but when he took a closer look, he saw that it was actually the coin itself and it was stuck in his axe. He exclaimed in fear that this couldn't be happening, it was all some strange tricks. Yunho apologized to these bandits for the fact that he missed a little and the coin should have ended up not in the axe but in the body of the bandit. He took out another coin from this bag. I said that this time he would not miss. He again threw the coin at the enemy, but this time he wanted to hit him. This gold coin in the hands of a true professional turned into a weapon and cut off half of this bandit's ear. Yunho asked this robber why he doesn't take his money because the guy is trying to fulfill the terms of the agreement and give him the coins he asked for but for some reason he doesn't collect them. The rest of the robbers, who had been standing and watching the negotiations all this time, saw that their boss had just been wounded and realized that they needed to act. They surrounded the guy and immediately began to offend him to meet him in order to attack. Yunho took out a few more coins from the bag and thought this was the perfect opportunity to feed all these guys money. When the robbers saw so many dangerous coins in this guy's hands they didn't stop. They became afraid to approach him because they understood that this guy could kill them if he fired his coin. Yunho asked these dangerous robbers why did they stop because he was offering them to take money that they didn't want to get. He said that all the robbers can get these coins and they only need to come and take them. The bandit who was missing half of his ear looked at his hand, which was now covered in blood, and realized that he had big problems. He began to cry because now he would have to walk without an ear and he understood that he had run into a serious opponent. The bandit looked at this young gentleman and thought that his coin was like a flying dagger charged with energy, it could even cut through the metal of an axe and he did not understand what kind of monster was standing in front of him now. The bandit began to run away into the forest and ordered the rest of his robbers to leave too. He said that now they were retreating, but next time they would definitely take revenge on him for this. These robbers began to run away like frightened rats, and the guy stood in the center of the road and did not understand why they were such cowards. Yunho was upset because everyone ran away because he was just starting to have fun and these idiots ruined all his fun. There was a gold coin in the sand that was stained with blood and got stuck there. The guy approached this coin and decided to pick it up from the ground with his hand. Lee didn't understand where the blood came from on this coin. Yunho doesn't understand where this guy came from here and why he didn't leave with everyone else. Li Ryan ran towards the young master and wanted to tell him something very important. Li Ryan approached him and asked why this coin was covered in blood and whether everything was okay with the gentleman. But Yunho replied that if this guy trusts his eyes, then he can see that everything is fine here. Li began to peer around him and saw that there were no longer these bandits who did not allow them to pass along this road, and he asked where they had gone. 
Li Ryan said that your bandits were real hooligans and rude people, but their lives still have value. Yun Ho said that it was strange to hear such words from a guy who threw deadly talismans at a living person. Yun Ho well, go towards the forest and said that there are many people in this world who would be better off going to the world of the dead. Li asked the young master where he was going now. Yun Ho told him that he wanted to meet with the leader of the Aso group. The bandit whose ear was cut off began to scream very loudly in pain. He was screaming because another bandit was trying to cure his ear. But it was a very painful procedure. A man with a red bandage on his arm sat on a stone and reproached the bandit with an injured ear for not coping with his task, it was better not to send him there. The bandit tried to explain the situation and said that their conspiracy began when their path was not blocked and today's events would reach the supreme leader and he would learn about this failure. Yunho listened carefully to the dialogue of these bandits in order to collect as much information as possible. When Yunho and Li were watching these bandits sitting in the bushes, Li constantly tried to convince the young master of his decision. Li said that any death is full of sorrow and pain and killing someone is a grave sin. Li asked the young master to avoid unnecessary deaths and achieve his goal with a minimum number of casualties. Yunho told his friend a story about how snakes die in fire not because their body catches fire but because they are stupid. Yunho hoped that this conflict could be resolved verbally by talking to their leader, he hoped that their leader would not be as stupid as them. Evening came and the street gradually began to darken. A group of bandits went to the secret camp of the Aso group. The guards who were standing near the central gate saw a group of bandits approaching and said that they left early in the morning to have fun and came empty-handed. One of the guards saw that this guy had blood on his face and something happened to his ear. He wanted to know what happened but he was not given an answer. Yunho followed these bandits, they led him to exactly the place he needed. He said that these dirty robbers live here far from civilization in order not to attract too much attention to themselves. The guards saw a stranger approaching their camp and they were very surprised because strangers rarely appear in these places. The guard said that he had not seen strangers here for a long time. After all, this camp is deep in the mountains and this guy who is approaching them does not look like a person who is lost. The guards approached this stranger and asked who he was and why he came here. Yunho replied to this guard that he came here with the sole purpose of taking something that was once taken from him. He asked these two stupid guards where is their leader now. The guards immediately used their swords to stop this stranger. They tried to put their swords on his neck so that he could not go further. The guard in red clothes said that the stranger has no right to speak so disrespectfully about the leader and at that moment the second guard suggested cutting out the tongue of this stranger for such words. Yunho laughed when he heard the pitiful conversations of these two bandits and realized that he couldn't just talk to them. Yunho decided to kill these bandits just like their friends in the forest. He only needed two seconds for these two guards to receive critical damage and fall to the ground. There was a fire burning in the main building located in the bandits' camp. The supreme leader of these bandits was in his house near the fire and heard some strange sounds on the street. He said that it was very noisy on the street and asked what is the reason for these loud sounds. He suggested that the bandits got drunk again. But at that moment one servant came into his house and asked for forgiveness for interrupting the rest of the supreme leader. The servant said that a very strange guy burst into their territory and asked to meet with the leader of the bandits. He said this guy is from the supreme coalition. The leader turned his head towards the servant and asked what is a guy from the Supreme Coalition doing here. Yunho stood in the very center of this camp, there was a huge crowd of bandits around him and they were all armed with different types of weapons, but the guy still felt calm. The bandits wanted to tear this stranger to pieces and make him suffer for killing two guards at the entrance to the central gate, but they could not do this because they were waiting for the leader. The leader came out of his house and stopped in front of this stranger. He wanted to look at him carefully and understand who this guy is. When he examined it carefully, he decided that it was time to chat with this immortal guy. The leader found out the reason for the invasion of this stranger and reported that the bandits blocked the path for the crew and demanded money, saying that the duties had increased. Yunho replied that everything was exactly as the leader said. But the big man said that he could not believe the words of this stranger without certain evidence and there are many charlatans who engage in theft under the guise of justice. Yunho said that the leader of these bandits looked like a toad and he was armed with an axe. Imho, I assumed his name was one. One at that moment was hiding behind a wooden building that was not far from the leader's house. 
he tried to keep a low profile and not be involved in this conflict. Yunho informed the supreme leader that he cut the bandit's ear and stuck the coin into his axe. He said that if you, the supreme leader, checks this, he will understand that the stranger is not lying. The supreme leader ordered that idiot named Woon to be brought here immediately. The robbers found this guy and immediately brought him to the supreme leader. One showed his leader the axe he always carries with him. The supreme leader said that there is no coin in this axe. However, there are holes exactly the same size as the coin and this one's ear is wounded, so he assumed that one simply pulled his coin out of the axe. Supreme leader asked Woon what is his justification for this. One replied that it was just a joke and they wanted to make a little joke on the passing carriage. The leader hit the man in the face with an axe and broke his jaw. Yunho carefully watched the actions of the supreme leader, he understood that he was communicating with an intelligent person and now he needed to properly build diplomatic relations with him. One was thrown to the side and fell to the ground after the supreme leader struck with an axe. The leader looked carefully at how this idiot was falling and at that moment did not feel a drop of regret for him. He threw the axe and it's coming to the ground. The supreme leader decided to communicate directly with this stranger and asked his name. The stranger repeated his words to me and told me that his name is Yunho. The man said that he is the leader of the Aso group and his name is Li Jaguan. He said that what he values most in people is trust and respect. Li Jaguan said that he would immediately find everyone who participated in this lawlessness and cut off their hands and asked whether this would be enough for an apology. Yunho smiled because he understood that he had completely different goals for which he came here. He said that several cut off hands would not bring him any benefit and therefore he was not interested. Li Jaguan asked this stranger what he really wanted. Because he was already starting to irritate him. Yunho said that this conflict started over money and therefore he wants to resolve this conflict with money too. Yunho said that from now on the Aso group will no longer demand a fee from the Supreme Coalition. But this demand alerted the Supreme Leader. Yunho said that this is not all that is needed to end this conflict. Yunho said that the second requirement that Aso must fulfill is that they return all the money they received from the Supreme Coalition during the entire period of cooperation. The bandits started laughing because they thought that this guy was crazy, after all, only a suicide could come to their camp and ask for such things. Li Jaguan said that this guy is not aware that thanks to the bandit organization stopping other bandits and thieves, they can travel safely and this absurd proposal insults them. He started laughing because he had never heard a more stupid sentence in his life. He said that this guy went too far without understanding the situation and pain, this is an old tradition in the world of martial arts and also the law of the wild. Li Jaguan said that he can reduce the amount of duty for three months and this should be enough to apologize to the Supreme Coalition. He told the guy that this was the last offer he could make as an apology and asked the guy to leave here and cross these mountains before it got dark. Yunho did not give up and said that these bandits do not understand who they are dealing with and they underestimate the Supreme Coalition. He didn't want to let this leader leave and leave the conflict unresolved so he said that everyone who is here is just ordinary stinking thieves. Yunho said that if the Murim Alliance had made the same demand to these bandits, they would have behaved completely differently. He said that it is unlikely that these bandits would have rejected their offer and would have referred to traditions. Li Jaguan was trying to understand what this guy was talking about because he just said about the Supreme Coalition and the Murim Alliance. He asked this boy how he is connected to the alliance and why he has the right to talk about them like that. Yunho lowered his head down and closed his eyes. He said that the bandits of this organization have a very high opinion of themselves and this opinion is actually not supported by anything. He asked the leader, is it necessary to be part of the lens in order to destroy a small group of bandits in the mountains? Li Jaguan at that moment became very angry because this is a boy who just challenged his entire gangster group. All this time Lee Ryan was sitting in the forest near the bandit camp and holding a stick in his hands. He prayed and asked the gods that no more unforeseen and cruel troubles would happen. He wanted no one else to get hurt. Lee turned to God Amitba so that he could protect the young master and so that everything would be fine with him. He would be safe. At that moment, a very strong explosion occurred in the bandit's camp and the wooden walls of the camp broke. Lee saw that real chaos was beginning to happen in the camp and did not understand what happened there. He couldn't believe that despite his prayers, something terrible still happened in the camp. 
He started running towards the camp to help this damn monster who is constantly trying to kill everyone. Li Jiaguan was in a lot of pain after a guy stabbed him. Yunho punched this big guy right in the stomach. The leader of the bandits could not believe that this guy had such great power. Yunho smiled and told this thug that just because a bunch of stinking bandits are afraid of him, it doesn't mean that he is the strongest here. Li Jiaguan didn't understand where this guy got such great strength because he doesn't belong to the M.O. Rim Alliance but has such strong martial arts. The big man fell and hit his face on the ground, he could not withstand such a strong blow. Yunho looked at the fallen leader of the bandits and thought that it is unlikely that there is at least one other young martial artist as strong as him. Now Yunho could relax and calmly take the money that rightfully belonged to the Supreme Alliance. He was about to go into the vault with money but suddenly he heard a loud scream that stopped him. When Li entered the bandit camp, he saw a very terrible sight and was afraid. In front of him lay a huge number of dead bandits, they were all crippled and scattered throughout the territory of this camp. Suddenly Li Ryan saw his friend standing calmly in the center of this camp and not having a single scratch on him. Yunho said that the scoundrel gets what he deserves and explained to his little good friend that he didn't kill these people, but just beat them up and they are now unconscious. So you don't have to worry about them. But then he said that he beat some of them a little more than the rest, so they will be in a lot of pain when I don't wake up. Lee Ryan thanked the gods at that moment for hearing his prayers and said that he never doubted the mercy of his elder brother Yunho. Yunho said that he doesn't remember any of these bandits cursing him during the battle, so it's unlikely that the gods interfered in this fight. The young master said that he no longer had time for empty talk and he needed to take his money as quickly as possible. Night came and it got dark outside, but they still continued to look for money in this camp. Yunho asked his little friend if he found any money in this camp. Li Ryan was very surprised that during all this time no money was found here and asked, do these bandits really not know how to save money? After all, even poor beggars have more money than them. Yunho squatted down and said that these bandits immediately spent all their money on food and alcohol and they have no furniture or cutlery, they don't even have normal clothes. Li headed towards the exit and said that looking for money in this place was a waste of time and it was better for him to leave from here, but the young master said that he felt that there was something here. Suddenly Yunho noticed something very strange and he decided to trust his feelings and observations in order to find money here. Li asked his older brother what he saw. After all, Yunho began to behave very strangely, as if he had actually found blood. He did not answer his assistant because all his attention was directed to one part of this room that aroused his suspicion. In the corner of this room near the wall a yellow fog appeared, this fog was very strange, as if there was something in this place. The Yunho said that there is something in the floor under the stone and it needs to be checked because there may be treasures there. Li at that moment thought that his older brother had gone crazy because they couldn't break the floor. But Yunho decided not to waste time and broke the stone slab with a blow of his fist. When the stone slab broke into several large fragments, he immediately began throwing these fragments in different directions. Yunho was right, below the stone slab that he broke there was a hiding place in which there was a chest. Li asked his older brother how he knew that there was a chest here. Yunho replied that he didn't know about this chest, he just felt the energy in this place and decided to test his guesses. Li was very surprised when he found out that his older brother also knows how to sense energy and thought that this guy senses different energies very well. Li Ryan said that this cannot be because there is a seal on the chest that blocks energy and his energy could not be felt. Yunho picked up this chest and said that if it was sealed with a blocking seal, it means that there is something very valuable inside the chest. Yunho didn't understand why this chest was so light. Li at that moment was thinking that with his heightened senses, he could not sense the presence of this energy because of the talisman, but his elder brother was able to feel it. Li didn't understand how he managed to feel it. And is it really that his older brother's feelings work much better than his? They opened this chest and decided to see what was inside. As soon as they lifted the lid of the chest, a golden light began to appear from it. They carefully observed the thing that was inside this chest and began to laugh because they realized that it was a very valuable thing. Inside the chest was a golden pearl, and Lee said that this item had a very unusual and powerful aura. Lee Ryan began to laugh and rejoice like a child, he enjoyed the energy of this object and said that it seemed to him that this energy could relieve fatigue even from climbing mountains. Lee began to reach out with his hand to this golden pearl and said that he wanted to take a closer look at it. 
But Yunho removed the box from his hand so that this guy would not touch such a valuable artifact. They left the bandit camp and began to return to the crew. Lee said that he did not want to absorb this artifact and said that it was a rare treasure so he wanted to appreciate it fully. Yunho stood up and left. Yunho said that this is his reward for the duties paid by the Supreme Coalition. He smiled and explained that in other words, it is the property of the Supreme Coalition and of course it needs to be protected from the wrong hands. Yunho said that he saved this guy because if he touched this treasure with his hand, he would have to cut off this guy's hand. Lee realized that it was better not to continue this topic and asked his older brother how they would catch up with the rest of the guys who had left. He said that even if they don't speed up, they won't be able to catch up with them even when evening comes, and even if they walk all night. It will still be difficult for them to catch up with them in the morning. Yunho said that half an hour would be enough for them to return to the crew and the young fortune teller did not understand how Yunho was going to get to them so quickly. Yunho looked at his new friend and said that if it weren't for him, he would have gotten to the carriage much faster. He picked up this boy and began to carry him like a sack of potatoes. Lee was screaming at that moment and didn't understand what was happening. Yunho asked his little friend why is he screaming so much. Yunho said that if Lee doesn't want to roll on the ground like a log then he better not move. He used the internal energy that had accumulated in his body lately and decided that thanks to a surge of this energy he would be able to move faster. Yunho made a jump and began to fly up very quickly and hold the little fortune teller Lee Ryan with one hand. The guy did not expect that his older brother could move so quickly in space and for the first time in his entire life he flew at such a high altitude. Lee shouted to his older brother that there was a cliff ahead and tried to warn him so that they would not fall off this cliff. Yunho said that the cliff does not scare him because he is going to jump over it and get to the opposite side. Lee said that he did not want to participate in this and suggested choosing an easier path in order not to jump over this cliff. But it was already too late and they pushed off from the edge of the cliff and jumped. Yunho was flying in the air and holding this screaming baby in his arms. Yunho said that in the clearing of the clouds the stars look very beautiful and he had never seen them so close, but the young fortune teller continued to shout loudly. I said that he is not interested in these stars now because he is thinking about how not to die. The morning came and there were a lot of clouds in the sky, the weather was very strange that day. Yunho and Lee had already reached the carriage and were again sitting on the roof of the first carriage. Jean turned his head to the left and saw something very beautiful and decided to show it to everyone else. He stood on the carriage and called the young master, but Yunho replied that he had already seen it. Yunho kicked his friend in the forehead and said that it's time to wake up. Lee just opened his eyes and asked his older brother why did he wake him up. Yunho told the boy to open his eyes and look at this beautiful view. Lee opened his eyes and was shocked by what he saw, he had never seen anything more beautiful in his life. In front of them was a high mountain on which there were a lot of forests of trees, of which it was green. Yunho said that this was Mount Mutin, which meant that they were already approaching the shaman clan. Lee was incredibly happy at that moment because they were able to get here. Yunho was very unhappy because he did not want to return to this place again. After all, he has a lot of bad memories associated with this mountain. Lee could not calm his emotions and he danced on the roof of the carriage and joyfully shouted that he was finally able to get to Mount Mutant. A lot of boxes were taken out of the carriage. This was the cargo that needed to be brought here. The person who greeted the guests here said that the goods looked great and thanked the carriers for such a good job. This person who is responsible for receiving the goods told his foreman that all the goods arrived safe and sound, the carriers did a good job. But at that moment the master was very busy looking at Yunho with a dissatisfied look and seeing him as his competitor. He was very unhappy that this guy was here now, he felt that he didn't like this boy. Yunho was also not happy to meet this person and therefore looked at him with contempt. Yunho asked this master to repeat once again what he just said. The master said that Mount Mutin is a sacred place. The master said that if these people want to enter the sacred mountain, then they must give their weapons to the monk for safekeeping. Yunho asked this master what exactly does he mean when he says the word weapon. Yunho said that he himself will decide where to leave his sword and will not listen to orders from people he doesn't know. The master said that as long as this person has a weapon with him, entry to the sacred mountain is prohibited for him. Yunho said that the sword is safest next to its owner and he cannot give it to just anyone. The master said that if the owner causes any problems, then having one can also cause problems. 
Li had been observing this conflict from the sidelines for several minutes and very politely asked his elder brother to give in to this man and give up his sword. Yunho agreed to this stupid proposal and took his sword from his belt, after which he handed it to one of the monks. Yunho said that if there is even one scratch on this ball, he will burn this entire mountain to the ground and along with all its inhabitants. Yunho said that he fulfilled this gentleman's stupid wish and now he can apparently climb this mountain. The master tried to explain that weapons are prohibited on the mountain not for the safety of the shaman clan, but because it is a ritual of respect to show the guests gratitude to the head of Tai Chi. Yunho started laughing and asked that those who use their legs and arms as weapons should cut them off in order to demonstrate that they can no longer climb the mountain. The master began to get angry at this guy and said that he was an insolent person who did not respect other people's traditions. Yunho was also very angry at this master and said that he had never seen such cunning charlatans as this master before. The master asked his assistant Inseong to take these guests to the sacred mountain and after which the assistant bowed to him and said that he must do this. Li hit himself on the head and said that this situation seemed very absolute. Inseong said that the original sacred mountain was taken care of by recently completed initiations. The third generation students who had just set foot on their path received the title and began training, but unfortunately now it is the responsibility of the second generation student of Master Myung Jin. He said that Master Myung Jin is a very strict person and not only towards them as his students, but towards himself. In Seong turned his head to these guys and said that even despite his attitude towards himself and towards people, this does not mean that he is a bad person, so he asked the guests to understand him and not be biased towards him. And Lee smiled and tried to be nice so that these monks would consider him their friend, he said that in no case would he be prejudiced towards the master. He said that the main problem is those who refuse to understand this, like Yunho's older brother. Lee said that even though the master is not old, he makes a great impression. In Seong smiled and said that the master is a genius because he mastered the Taichun sword technique to the level of seven stars and he is the pride of their mutant clan or as most people call them shamans. Yunho was very unhappy that this guy Tak admires his master. He doesn't know that he's still much better than this master. Teacher Yunho once told him about this Taichun technique and the teacher said that the shaman clan is known as the clan of righteousness along with the Saren clan, which is located on the neighboring mountain. He was surprised that this clan admires and is so proud of their master. Yunho didn't understand why they spoke so positively about him, the man looked uncontrollable and arrogant, as if the whole world should bow to him. Suddenly Yunho realized that this master reminded him of a person whom he had known for many years and he became much more interested. Li Well, why shout joyfully to admire the beautiful views he saw here? Li jumped with happiness and could not calm down, he constantly shouted that the shaman clan was now right in front of them and admired this magnificent view. When they climbed the mountain, their old man smiled very sweetly. He said that his name was Taichuan. And he was one of the disciples in charge of Wuching Palace. Achuan assumed that these people reached without incident along the way. Jin turned to the young master and said that this Myung Suk is also unknown as Taichuan Jinan. This man is one of the leaders of the Muram Alliance and an up-and-coming member of the Orthodox Martial Arts Faction, and meeting him here is a big surprise. The guy was not at a loss in this situation and said that his name was Yunho and said that he was the young master of the Supreme Coalition. The master finally realized who this arrogant guy is. He remembered the moment and they met when the master said his name and said that his name was Muyin Jin. He said that he was a student of the second generation of the Shaman Clan, and after that he asked what the name of his interlocutor was. Yunho looked at this man with a contemptuous look and said that he was a member of the Supreme Coalition but decided not to give his name and not introduce himself to him completely. Muyung now also began to look at this guy with contempt and the thought appeared that this guy imagines himself to be special and behaves so arrogantly because he is the son of the leader of the Supreme Coalition. The master is not in the video of such arrogant people more than anyone else and thought that this is why the boy was lucky to be born into a rich family, but he himself is nothing. The old man approached the guest and took him by the shoulders. He said that he was very glad that the young gentleman was participating in the trips and, as always, they were grateful to the Supreme Coalition for their cooperation. He asked the boy how Hajin Yu, his father, was doing. The old man said that he had not seen this man for a very long time and would be glad to meet him again. Yunho didn't want to answer these questions, he was bored talking to this old man. 
The old man noticed this and said that when the guests finished their mission from heaven, they were never able to come to the Nangong family meeting. The old man scratched his beard and remembered that the young master was recovering that day after studying martial arts and four years had already passed since then. Yunho said that he had come a very long way and was very tired. The old man did not expect that this young man could be so impudent in communication. Yunho said that he was forced to climb this mountain to rest. He asked this old man when he could rest. Because now he spends all his time listening to his stories. Muyin pointed his finger at this guy and said that the master had not finished his story yet and he should not be interrupted at this moment. Yunho said that it is not necessary to interfere in other people's dialogues in order to attract attention and thereby insulted Mu Young. The master asked his student Jin Mu Young to stop and stop shouting at the guests, but the student did not understand. He said that one cannot tolerate such disrespectful attitude towards oneself. The master returned his head to the student and said that the guest was very tired and there was no problem. He reproached his student for being impolite. Nguyen was very angry at that moment because he was teaching on the side of this impudent guest. The master smiled at his guest and said that the road was most likely very difficult and the master got into conversation with the guest and did not even think about the fact that they could be tired. He ordered his student to call all the student's children and prepare accommodation with food for the distinguished guests. After that, he patted the guy on the shoulder and left. Muyang didn't understand what the problem was that you behaved very arrogantly when visiting, but then he thought that most likely he overreacted to this guest. He looked at Yunho and thought that this guy was just trying to provoke him with his arrogant behavior. Yunho looked at this loser and stuck out his tongue at him as a sign that he does not respect him and is ready to mock him further. Muyang understood that this guy was mocking him and was constantly trying to provoke a conflict between them. Li Ryan ate the food that the monks made for them and stuffed his mouth with rice and vegetables, the guy looked at his friend Yunho and said that he was very embarrassed. Li said that if Yunho doesn't like being here and he doesn't like the clan of monks, this doesn't mean that he can behave so brazenly in this place, much less make Li look like a fool in the eyes of these monks. Li reminded Yunho that they were here to maintain the reputation of the Supreme Coalition. Throughout the dinner, the boy scolded his friend for his behavior and explained that martial arts masters value respectful relationships in people. Yunho's behavior outraged everyone. Yunho got tired of listening to this guy's moralizing and at some point threw two wooden sticks that stuck into the table and got stuck there. Li got scared when he saw the wooden chopsticks that were stuck in the table, he realized that he was already beginning to anger his older brother with his moralizing. The boy immediately tried to correct the situation, she smiled and said that he didn't mean it at all and began to justify himself and explain his thought. Yunho was very angry at this moment. But he and they were angry with the boy. He was angry because there was a lot of food on the table, but he didn't like it. He was outraged by the fact that among all these dishes that were on the table there was nothing tasty and the monks didn't even put fish here. He didn't understand how you could cook a dish that contained absolutely no meat. Li explained to his friend that the clan of monks are vegetarians and they do not eat meat and only eat plant foods. On the street, screams were heard coming from the house, Yunho shouting that even goats do not abstain from meat. At night, Mount Mutant looked like a flying island because the clouds were flying around this mountain and it felt like it was in the air. The guys were very tired over the last few days that they spent traveling and decided to finally relax in bed and get a good night's sleep. Yunho always slept on his bed lying on his back and made strange noises while sleeping. Suddenly he woke up but still did not open his eyes. He also continued to lie. He wrinkled his face and was very unhappy that he had to be here. The guy sat down on the bed and began to sit motionless. He thought that he was being annoyed and that because of this vegetarian food he couldn't even sleep properly. He noticed a very funny fact which was that as a human he can't stand food without meat. But in the same way he didn't like food without meat when he was a yokai. Suddenly he heard strange sounds and immediately reacted to them. He wondered what these sounds were and where they came from. Yunho immediately realized that these sounds were coming from the next room and decided to check what happened there. But when he entered the room, his friend was not there and Yunho thought that this little idiot had most likely already left somewhere. But Yunho was outraged that this guy left home and didn't tell him anything. In the silence of the night, the voices of people were heard. They walked along the territory of the mountain and Li's voice said that if he had known that the master was here, he would have come earlier. 
they disappeared into the darkness and only their black silhouettes were visible. The master said that everything was fine and asked why the boy wanted to meet him. Lee replied that this place is sacred and few people can get here, so he decided to take advantage of the moment. The old man smiled and said that people don't come to this place without a special reason. He asked the boy what was happening to his master now and the boy replied that nothing had changed and everything remained as it was before. The old man smiled and said that it is very easy for people who try to adapt to his character to live. Lee asked not to communicate any more about his master because even thoughts about him exhaust the boy. The old man agreed that the thought of his master exhausted his mind. He talked about how he was once depressed and could not even properly talk to the master. Lee replied that his interlocutor held out for a very long time communicating with the master. Yunho climbed onto the roof of the tallest building that was located in this village and began to look for his friend. He stood at the top of a small tower and said that he felt the presence of this guy somewhere nearby but could not find him. He went down and landed on the ground after that he decided to look around him. Yunho still didn't understand what was happening to his friend and where he had gone because he wasn't anywhere right now. He stood still and simply turned his head in different directions, hoping to find at least some clue that would help him find Lee Ryan. Yunho was starting to get a little angry because he couldn't find this guy. Suddenly he felt a strong vibration on the ground and did not understand what was happening. It was very strange and did not look like an earthquake. He turned his head to the side and saw something very big. In front of him was a large statue that stood in the center of a small square and this statue was in the dark, you had to look closely to see it better. The statue had a large sword in its hand and the blade of this sword was pointing downwards. I was leaning on the ground. The face of the statue was very stern and aggressive. The statue showed with its facial expression that it was ready to challenge anyone who wanted to fight it. Yunho stood below and looked at this statue when he saw the look of this statue he laughed. Yunho began to laugh because he knew this face and it was Yeo Dongbin once upon a time, he had already met him and I remember this meeting well. The white fox jumped back and his blue eyes began to glow and radiate internal energy. Yeo Dongbin was on top of a flying stone and from the top of this stone insulted the white fox calling him a lazy evil and cursed animal. Yeo Dongbin was outraged that the white fox did not answer his calls for a very long time and for ten years he avoided him. The white fox said that it was all because this respected Yukai was busy accumulating merit instead of doing important things. Yunho said that day that he didn't have time to play with such a nonentity as Yeo Dongbin. This majestic Yukai became very angry when the white fox began to behave so brazenly towards him and he grabbed his sword to start the battle. He pushed off from the top of this stone and jumped up. Yeo Dongbin swung his sword and wanted to strike from the air but before the strike he shouted that this daring Yukai imagined himself to be a sacred mountain forest, but in fact he was an ordinary animal. He hit him on the head with his sword and at that moment lightning began to appear in the air. Yo Dongbin possessed very great strength and with one blow he could blow up the sky and break the earth. Yunho, at the very last moment, stopped the blade of the sword with a movement of his hand, he simply grabbed the sword by the blade and did not let go. White Fox blocked his opponent's attack and said that he didn't have time to deal with this Yukai before and said that if he wants to talk, he can say it with his mouth. Yunho asked this thug for the last time to explain what he wanted or else he would have to beat him to death. Yo Dongbin laughed when he heard this phrase because he understood that the power in this fight was clearly not on his side. Yo Dongbin still listened to the words of the White Fox and lowered his sword, after which he decided to talk to him calmly. Yeo Dongbin explained that White Street needs to accumulate more merit and technically it is about correcting the mistakes he has made. Yunho was very surprised by such a proposal because he needed to reflect on past atrocities and come to the conclusion that they could no longer be committed because of this he had to receive new good merits. It seemed to him that there was nothing complicated about it. Yeo Dongbin snapped his fingers at that moment and created a thick book. This book fell straight into the hands of the white fox and he was surprised when he saw it. Yeo Dongbin explained that this is an unusual book. And this is a book that could have sunk into oblivion when one girl buried it. I don't know that the book belongs to her older brother. He said that this secret book contains the essence of Taiguk and it will be written by Jan Sambang. Yunho is very surprised when this Yukai decided to give him this book. He didn't understand why he needed it. Yunho asked who is Jang Sambanga. 
Yo Dongbin answered him that this is a guy whose neck was recently broken by a white fox and sent to the world of the dead. This was the same monk whom White Rice killed at the very beginning of history. It was still hard for him to remember this monk because it was all a very long time ago and he did not focus his attention on it. But nevertheless, he decided to look at this book again and yet his attitude towards this book changed. Yeo Dongbin said that the white fox must return this book to where it should rightfully be and if the white fox dropped a no order then he will clear some of his karma. Yunho stood right in front of this statue and looked at it, he said that he met him again and this was an unexpected meeting for him. Yunho looked carefully at the statue and tried to remember the facial features and texture of this yukai because he had not seen him for several thousand years. Yunho heard Li Riang's voice and turned his head towards it. Li was very happy when he saw his older brother here, he assumed that Yunho also couldn't sleep like him because he wanted to visit this place. The old man said that in the Supreme Coalition there are a lot of rumors about this young master and he has heard a lot about Yunho. The old man smiled and said that he knew the story about how Yunho calmed down the guy who was rowdy at the funeral of the elder of the Namgong family. The old man said that he was very sorry that he himself could not see this. Li explained in a whisper to his friend that this old man's name is Jin Yangjin and he is a master specializing in recording manuscripts and he is a close friend of his teacher, so the guy did not want to talk to him tonight. He also introduced himself to this master and said that his name was Yunho and he explained that he did it for fame. Yajin smiled and said that the world is very big and vast, but in comparison with it the human world is very small and cramped. Yajin asked the young master if he can ask him one non-intrusive question. Yunho asked this master what question exactly did he want to ask. Yajin said that from afar, like a young master, he was looking intently at the statue, he became very curious. Why was he looking at it so carefully? Yunho replied that there were special reasons for which he looked at this statue and no, he just noticed that Yeo Dongbin was accurately portrayed thanks to this statue and not a single detail was missed. Yajin was very surprised when he found out that this young gentleman knows who the man depicted in the statue is. Yajin said that now few people remember such a great warrior of heaven who destroyed all evil on earth and heaven like Yeo Dongbin. Yunho said that he didn't know what this great warrior did. But the only thing he knew for sure was that Yi Dongbin had a very hot temper. Li said that such words should not be said in this great deity. Yunho doesn't understand why he can't talk about Yeo Dongbin like that. Li immediately began to explain to the master that the guy did not quite understand what he had just said and he meant that this warrior was very brave. But Yajin was not upset or offended by the young master, he began to laugh and showed his reaction that these words made him laugh. Yajin became very interested in how the young master knows this great warrior so well and how does he know about his character. Yajin said that the young master very correctly noticed the character trait of this warrior and many stories were written in old manuscripts about his strong character. He said that even those people who know the teachings of Taoism well either miss this point or do not know about this trait in his character. But the fact that young master so accurately noticed this means that he is not only good in martial arts, but also has deep knowledge of literature. Yunho thought that he doesn't know how well people were able to record information about this guy, but most likely there is less information about Yeo Dongbin than Yunho knows. Yajin smiled and said that during the day the landscapes of Mount Mutin are impressive, but at night they are no less beautiful, so looking at them is a special kind of pleasure. He said that if the gentleman didn't mind, he would like to continue their conversation while enjoying the night views while walking along the mountain. Two young students later walked around the territory of the settlement and talked about something sweet with each other. They heard the voice of old man Yajin who called them and the guys paid attention to him. Yajin asked these children why do they go out at such a late hour instead of sleeping in their beds. They bowed to the old man and said that they were just returning after paying respects to the temple, the old man told them that even the Holy Spirit sleeps at night and children should rest instead of wandering the streets. They immediately began to run to their house and one of them shouted that he had already warned them not to go this way. Li asked the master why he just mentioned the Holy Spirit when talking to these children. Yajin stood silently for several seconds and did not answer anything, after which he said that he had to explain something to the guys. Yajin asked them what if there was a shrine dedicated to Yukai here, would they believe the old man and want to go there or not? Li said that this cannot be and he cannot believe that in this place there could be a shrine that was dedicated to the real Yukai. Yajin suggested that this is my boy. 
It is very difficult to accept and understand this fact. Yunho asked his friend why is it so hard for him to believe that in this place there could be a temple dedicated to Yukai. Li replied that the whole problem is that he is a Taoist from the Dorim clan. Yunho said the name of this clan several times in his head, it seemed to him as if he had heard this name before. Yajin explained that in the past, when the border between the human world and the Yukai world was unstable, the shamans expelling the Yukai founded their Dorim clan. At the moment, the Doran clan remains vigilant as there is almost no border between their worlds, they argue that no one knows when Yokai will appear again. Yajin explained that for all members of this clan it is very difficult to accept the fact that an entire temple was built in their honor, which is a sanctuary. Lee said that Yukai are the real evil for the human world and they need to be defeated and exterminated every single one, but the boy's words only made the master laugh. Lee said that no one protected people from Yukai more than shamans and he does not understand how such a respected clan could do such an act. Yajin will explain that this is an unusual yokai and he is different from all other representatives of their race. But Lee was convinced that I Yukai will always remain Yukai and they cannot be changed. Yunho became interested in the fact that this Yukai in whose honor the temple was built was different from the others, he thought that sometimes those who prohibited cannibalism appeared and tried to establish friendly relations with people. But he still couldn't believe that some shaman who opposed the Yukai built a shrine and worshipped them, who could it be the mysterious Yukai who was able to convince him? These thoughts worried Yunho. The shrine contained a large portrait of this Yukai and it depicted a white fox descending from the heavens and holding a book in his hands. Yunho couldn't believe his eyes, he thought it was some kind of dream and all this didn't exist. He opened his eyes wide and looked at his portrait from past lives, he was still shocked by what he saw. Yajin said that the respected Jan Sambong left behind something for the descendants of the shaman and there was such a book, a priceless treasure that contains all the things in the universe. He said that one day suddenly this gentleman disappeared and the treasure also disappeared with him and at that time their ancestors were at a loss and they had no choice but to wait out these days of confusion. Yajin said that this great Yukai found a book that had disappeared and returned the manuscript to someone who had a hard time. Yunho at that moment began to get very angry and blame Yeo Dongbin for what he did. Yajin said that this Yukai was a white fox who came to the human world after and gave the book. But after handing over the book, he immediately left Mount Mutin and his ancestors didn't even have time to thank him. Yajin said that it was the fox who returned the blood that allowed the shamans to live on and they could not forget his legendary act and turn a blind eye to this story. In the end, their ancestors began to revere him as a sacred spirit to whom all the treasures of the world are subject, they built this sanctuary to express their gratitude. The master said that the ban on meat and adherence to vegetarianism is a sign of respect for the Holy Spirit and a ritual that monks must do to pay their respect to him. Yunho at that moment I could no longer contain my anger and irritation and it was as if he began to explode from the inside, he could not believe that these stupid monks worshipped him and also forbade him if meat. Li finally understood why this sacred temple was not created and now he no longer reacted so radically negatively to this yukai. He said that he thought that all yukai who do evil to people should be destroyed, but since this white fox was a benevolent spirit who could help the shamans live on. It was very difficult for him to accept the fact that he was good. Li thanked Yajin for telling them this beautiful story about this great good spirit. Li Ryan asked his older brother if he liked this incredibly beautiful story about a white fox. Yunho I didn't answer anything to my friend, but I thought that this is not just a beautiful story, but this is a fictional story that is incorrectly told to the shaman and he even remembers how it really happened. The white fox was flying in the air and moving quickly in space. He wanted to get to his destination as quickly as possible. Yunho landed on the roof of one of the houses and decided to stop here for a while. He was here for the first time and the only thing he thought about was that this place was disgusting and he would never want to come back here again. He looked at this large mountain and thought that most likely this was the holy land of shamans to which he needed to go. Yunho remembered that when he came to the human world using the secret technique of Jang Sambong and climbed Mount Mutin, he clearly expressed the reason for his visit to the clan who were on the mountain. The boy was sweeping the street with a broom but suddenly heard a voice calling him. When he turned his head, he saw a very strange creature with a huge number of tail-sparkling eyes approaching him. The boy was still very young, so he was scared when he saw this creature here. But despite his young age, 
he was still able to understand that a real Yukai was now standing in front of him. The white fox handed the book to this little boy and said that I in this book contains the secret technique of Jan Sambong. Yunho said that if a boy needs this book, he should just come to him and pick it up. The boy was scared when he saw this creature here and he could not move his limbs because he was very scared. But suddenly the boy started screaming very loudly that a real yokai had appeared on the mountain. Yunho that day decided that you would simply be very friendly when communicating with people living on this mountain. But the mutant clan, who lived on this mountain, immediately ran to kill him because they thought that he was an enemy for them. Yunho defended himself with his tail so that people could not kill him and all this time he thought that the child clearly told some lie to these people. The monks immediately pounced on the large white ball of fur to attack it. They struck the fluffy ball with their swords, but it was all to no avail. Yunho at that moment was simply lying in the center of a white fluffy ball and holding a book in his hands. At that moment he decided that it would be best to just wait until they got tired because everything was already clear that words could not resolve this matter. But these guys persisted no matter what and even if he tried to accumulate good karma, for some reason he was still treated with disrespect as the king of the Yukai kingdom. Yunho got tired of waiting for these people to calm down and decided to take control of everything. He then thought that despite all this, he just needed to give them the book and leave from here. People were very scared and did not know what to do or how to resist this giant white monster. Yunho transformed into his second form into a big fox with renewed strength and he then informed all the people that it would be better for them if they were polite to the Yukai king. He said that otherwise he would tear off their limb and chew them into mush and then swallow them all whole if they did not treat him with respect. Yunho hoped that people would obediently listen to him if he scared them a little, but everything turned out to be completely different from what he planned. The people got angry when they heard that the monster was threatening them and the leader of the monks ordered the fighters to attack again and not give up even if it meant they would die. Yunho understood that threatening them was not the best idea because they began to attack even more than before and wanted to kill Yukai. People made him very angry and he understood that he needed to use force to calm them down. Yunho didn't want to do this, but still he had to use his power to calm down these crazy monks who attacked him without even understanding the problem. He remembered this whole situation as it really was, but it is hardly possible to remember it with any tenderness. He understands that in order to achieve enlightenment, people's deaths are not needed, they would not have helped him, thanks to the fact that he tried to restrain himself, no one died. He wondered if then Jiang Mu and considered the former leader of this clan Yunho's actions to be strange or did he believe that their entire clan would be destroyed. Yunho remembered that when about 200 fighters of the shaman clan were lying on earth, it was the leader who finally decided to ask him why Yokai came here. Yunho Wu asked their leader why did the child not explain to them the essence of the visit right away. Only after this the misunderstanding was not cleared up and he was finally able to hand over the book to these shamans and then the leader said that it would be better if the white fox immediately started by handing over the book, but Yunho said that they themselves attacked him as soon as he appeared here. The clan leader bowed to the white fox and thanked him for finding the lost treasures of Mount Mutant. The old man was still very surprised that this white fox did such an act and asked why he needed to do this for people. Yunho always knew that at this moment you need to leave in order to be remembered in the best way. Yunho explained to this old man that he was no ordinary ordinary yukai. He said that he was different from everyone else and that he was a noble fox yokai. Yunho then said all sorts of stupid nonsense to make fun of these people, they actually believed it and built a shrine for him. But what angered him most was that these monks decided to become vegetarians and give up meat in honor of him. Yunho thought that only Yeo Dongbin was to blame for this whole situation, but then he realized that it still happened because of Jang Sambong who lost his book. Yunho thought about this story for a long time and couldn't believe that it all really happened. At some point, he came to the idea that no matter who he wants to blame, because he himself is to blame. Every time he remembers his past life, she appears before his eyes as the same girl he once loved very much. Yunho understood that perhaps he was no less to blame for her death than everyone else involved in it. Yajin said that at least this yokai's spirit is very popular among their students. Lee suddenly remembered something very important and was happy after that, he immediately turned to his older brother. Lee asked if Yunho took the very thing that they often talked about, but the guy didn't understand at all what he wanted from him, this little predictor. Lee said that Yunho knows about this thing and Master Yajin is well aware of the development in history, 
so maybe he can tell them about the true nature of this pill. Yajin asked what kind of pill they were talking about now and how exactly he could help. Yunho was not happy because this guy decided to remember about the artifact that he found in the bandit camp, but it was too late to shut his mouth and so he had to show it. Yunho took out from the inner pocket of his clothes the very pill they were just talking about, it was very beautiful. The pearl was made of gold and radiated enormous energy. Yajin was shocked when he saw such a valuable artifact in this guy's hands and he couldn't believe that he was now seeing her with his own eyes. Yunho saw the reaction of this old man and assumed that he knew exactly what kind of artifacts these were and why he was needed. Yajin said that this pearl is the treasure of the mutant clan and it is called the Azure Life Pill and a few months ago, while traveling to a territory nearby, it was stolen and this caused a huge commotion in the temple. Yunho I didn't accept anything because of what you said. This old man but the bottom is sure that these people will want to take it away from him and Yajin asked the young master where he found this pill. Yunho didn't really want to tell this old man about where he got this pill from, and he certainly didn't want to give it to him. The man was carrying in his hands the small box that was wrapped in yellow cloth. He was very unhappy that he had to carry this box, you could read on his face that he didn't want to do it. He walked along the road and thought that he prayed all the time and sincerely hoped that a great spirit would appear in his dream, but there were those who achieved unprecedented heights after realizing the essence of martial arts in their dreams. He thought that in these times of lack of martial achievements, can people achieve incredible merits using prayers and offerings? He approached the temple and thought that even if he advances just a little, he will not lose anything if he believes in it. He approached the central gate of the temple and stopped in front of it. He held a box of offerings in his hands and decided to talk to the respected spirit. After he greeted the great spirit, he decided to go to the temple and bring his offerings. But when he approached the doors of this temple and heard that there was already someone there and these people were communicating with each other, Yajin smiled and said that he could not believe that the young master himself destroyed the Aso group and took the Azure Life pill instead of money as compensation. He narrowed his eyes and looked at the master incredulously, after which he said that everything was exactly like that. Yajin said in a very surprised voice that this story impressed him. Li asked his older brother what he will do next and the guy still didn't know what to answer him. Li Ryan explained that the Azure Life pill originally belonged to the mutant clan, so the best solution is to return this pill to them. Yunho was very dissatisfied when he heard such a proposal and did not want to give this pill away until the last moment. Li said that this would be the best decision. After all, this pill was stolen, so it would be right to return it. Why should Yunho be even more angry because this petty trader just set him up? Yajin said that if the young master doesn't want to give this pill, then he doesn't have to do it because the monks from the temple have already said goodbye to it a long time ago. But he still tells him about what could happen if the guy decides to return the pill. Yajin said that if the young master returned the pill, then his generous act would be passed on to the next generation of the clan in the form of another wonderful story. He was dissatisfied because he was manipulated. He thought that he had already gone through all this and to preserve the memory of himself, and this is not such a positive thing, so he decided to abandon this action. He decided to eat this pill and did it. But this was not so as not to return it, but he simply did not want another idiotic story to be told about him again. The man heard the voices of people who tried to stop the guy and asked him not to eat the pill. He I didn't understand what kind of chaos was happening in the temple at such a late time. He turned around and decided to leave the temple at that moment he was thinking that the head of the Asa group was an unrecognized martial arts master in Murim and he did not understand how this vile and young gentleman could get away with him. He thought that certain people didn't get the pill using their machinations and they didn't kill anyone and they shouldn't brag about it. Yunho said that that old man said that he had already said goodbye to this pill, but his hands were very fast so they took it for themselves. He walked along the stone bridge and thought that he should have swallowed this pill as soon as he found it and it all happened because of that talkative kid. He looked at the sky and thought that maybe Jan Sambong cast some kind of spell on him before his death, because every time he comes here, something absurd happens. Suddenly the guy turned his head and saw something very strange and he immediately turned his attention to this object. In front of him was a large cave, but the entrance to this cave was closed and tied with a red rope. This cave was familiar to him and he even knew where it came from and why it was here. This place appeared after he dealt his strongest blow and after this blow a cave appeared. That day he fought against these idiots. He thought that some managed to escape and wet their pants, 
and some were unable to hide. Above the entrance to this cave there were two signs, one of them said that this was the demon's cave. And on the wooden signs it was written that entry here was prohibited. But Yun Ho understood that not a single cave could stop him and therefore began to enter it. He stood in this cave and attentively looked at everything here. Yun Ho understood that there was empty space inside the rock and he became interested, could he consider this cave his discovery? He saw a white fog that appeared in the darkness of the cave, he wondered what it was. He began to feel something very strange in this cave and went to the edge of the rock and the cave was making various sounds. Yun Ho assumed that his power was sealed here in this cave and he was happy about this because he could now return it. He immediately jumped off the cliff and although he went down to the very bottom of this cave, when he was below, the bright blue fog became even brighter and he was right in the middle of it. He understood that this was not just a blow, but that the fog frozen in the air was his strength that was invested in that blow. He couldn't believe that even after hundreds of years this power remained the same. He extended his hand forward and spread his fingers and a blue bright mist immediately began to envelop his palm. Several thousand years have passed since he was last in this place, but nevertheless the power remained the same as it was on the day when he threw it out. Morning came and the fog again lay at the foot of this mountain, emphasizing its majestic appearance. Yun Ho was in his house, which shamans told him to spend the night here. The young monks brought clean clothes for the master. Yun Ho's clothes looked clean and smelled very nice. The monks asked the young master if he needed anything else or perhaps he was thirsty and needed to bring him water. The children tried to be very friendly and constantly asked questions and were interested in the well-being of the young master. They offered various services to somehow improve this gentleman's morning. Yun Ho asked his friend why are these little children bothering him since the morning. But Lee said that it's not morning anymore and the sun is already at its zenith. Therefore, it's the very beginning of their working day for them. Lee Ryan told the very good news that elder brother had found the Azure Life pill and shared it with the clan. Yun Ho was very angry about this news because now he was a real hero for the mutant clan. This means that they will love him as a very respected guest, but he can't stand these monks. Lee smiled standing in the doorway and said that it was all thanks to his efforts. But Yun Ho blamed the guy for taking the pill away from him because of his loose tongue. They brought food and put it on the table. This food was rabbit meat, they prepared meat especially for them. After all, everyone knew that the young gentleman did not accept vegetarian food. Yun Ho was also very surprised because these monks broke their rules and brought meat for him. Yajin smiled and said that he and the monks decided that it would be too impolite to feed the young master only vegetables and the young master is not part of their clan. At this moment, Yun Ho drew his attention to the fact that the master's entire sleeve was stained with dirt and blood. He became very interested in how this master got stains of blood and dirt on his sleeve. And he wanted to know what this master was doing. Yun Ho sat down at the table opposite the master and asked the old man who caught these rabbits and prepared this delicious meat for him. Yajin laughed and said that the rabbits of Mutant Mountain accumulate energy like monks, so they are very difficult to find. The monks who were supposed to guard the task of the young master and master Yajin heard very joyful exclamations coming from the building. One monk said that he had never heard Master Yajin laugh so carefree when communicating with one of the guests. The second monk said that he had been smelling fried meat in the air since the morning and at first he thought that someone was crazy and did something stupid, but now everything is clear to him. He asked the third guy who was standing far away from them. Is it really true that the young master of the Supreme Coalition attacked the Aso group and found the Azure Life pill? He did not want to answer this question because he did not believe that these rumors were true and he was angry that the entire clan admired this young master. Yajin left the building with his guest and told him that the young gentleman could come to him at any time as he passed by and should not be embarrassed about it. Yajin went down the stairs and saw his three students, he ordered them to go to the training ground and improve their martial arts skills and new techniques. Yun Ho saw one guy among these second students that he really didn't like. This guy ordered two junior monks to escort Master Yajin. When everyone left they were left alone opposite each other. He looked at this young gentleman with a contemptuous look and wanted to show with this look all the disrespect that he felt for him. Yun Ho smiled and realized that something interesting was about to happen because he knew that he was very annoying this guy. 
Yun Ho said that he can see from this guy's face that he doesn't mind fighting and maybe it's because he learned the smell of meat and felt left out. But this man accused the young master of being a vile thief and he couldn't just leave it all like that. Yun Ho was shocked at this moment to see that this guy had just dared to insult him. He looked at this offended monk and asked him to repeat once again in his pitiful voice what he had just said. He looked at him with a contemptuous look and realized that his anger towards this young master was reaching its peak. He made a high jump and in one movement of his bags approached the young master. He landed right in front of Yunho and looked into his eyes trying to convey his disrespect. He said that the story that Yunho told Master Yajin was just a lie and complete nonsense. He accused Yunho of being a common thief and a liar who stole the patterned life pill. The monk pointed at him with his hand and said that this is an obvious fact and he is sure that Yunho returned this pill only for his own benefit and greed. Yunho listened carefully to all the accusations of this monk and after that he said that he is just an ordinary pathetic weakling who does not understand what he is talking about and asked where such thoughts about a righteous man and a monk come from. The monk got angry with the guy and said that if his words were not lies then let him just prove it. The monk asked to prove to him that he was not lying, starting from the moment the young master of the Supreme Coalition was able to defeat the leader of the Aso group. Yunho didn't understand why this guy was talking about Yunho being the young master of the Supreme Coalition. Yunho understood that this monk simply did not believe that the son of an ordinary merchant was able to defeat the entire Aso group. Suddenly one adult monk appeared and shouted that Myung Jin was an ordinary scoundrel and began to blame this monk for his actions and words. The monk said that Myung Jin should explain why he has such a bad opinion of the noble benefactor who found the life pill and gave it to the clan without asking for anything in return. Myung was very surprised when he saw Master Taeho who is now scolding him. This man approached the young master and said that his name is Taeho and he is a doctor here who monitors the health of the monks. He took the guy by the hand and thanked him for finding their azure life pill, he explained that for their clan, this young master had become an undoubted hero. Taeho said that Myung Jin was a scoundrel and he didn't teach him to treat distinguished guests this way, the guy didn't know what to answer. He simply bowed his head and tried to explain the situation as it really was. Taeho ordered this monk to shut up because he said that he heard everything perfectly and therefore does not need excuses. The guy lowered his head down and listened to how the master scolded him, who said that the monk should bow immediately and apologize to the young master. Yunho said that everything is fine and this monk should not apologize for that conversation. Yunho told this master that his student was just a very curious guy who wanted to know how the young master managed to defeat the Aso group. Taeho said that from what he heard it sounded more like the young monk accusing the young master. Taeho smiled and said that everything was as he expected and the young gentleman is a very understanding person, so he voluntarily gave away the pill that someone else would have expected to keep for himself. The master ordered his student to look again at this young gentleman who is a benefactor and learn good manners from him. Yunho smiled at that moment and realized that now is the perfect moment to play with these monks. He said that now he wanted to satisfy his curiosity because he was thinking of somehow showing this teaching his martial art. Taeho was very surprised when he heard that this young master wanted to demonstrate his martial arts. Muyung didn't understand what was going on and why this guy started talking about martial arts now. Yunho wanted to prove to this guy that he is a very experienced warrior. And the most important thing that he understood was that the guy himself ran into a fight and now it needs to be organized. Muyung thought that this boy was an ordinary weak kid who is the son of a merchant and he knew that if this kid came to him in the battle arena, then he would go straight into the tiger's den. There was no reason to refuse this fight because it would solve the whole conflict once and for all. Young monks trained in the battle arena, honing their blows with wooden swords. These monks practiced their blows under the supervision of their master. The master was meditating at this time and trying to concentrate, but his ears were always ready and he heard everything that was happening around. When the doctor came to the arena he was very surprised to see the master here. I didn't expect to meet him here today. The master asked what brought the doctor here today. And Taeho replied that something very interesting was planned here, so he came to take a look from the outside. The master was very interested in the words of this doctor, he became interested in what would actually happen here now. Senior monks began to arrive at the battle arena and they ordered all the monks who were now training here to leave the training area. Yunho followed his opponent and was very calm, he hummed songs because he understood that for him it was all like a game. 
Yajin and Teho were very joyful because they understood that now they were about to see a very interesting battle of good fighters proficient in martial arts. Myung was very worried due to the fact that Master Yajin was also here if he disgraces himself now then his reputation will fall even more in the clan. Yunho said that he would be happy to fight, but before the fight starts, he wants to know what the rules will be. Yunho wanted to know what the purpose of this battle is and what needs to be done in order to win. After all, if they need to use wooden swords to knock each other down and we understand it. Myung said that there is a training called Jijin training, it is considered the best among other training methods because it allows you to exceed the limit and become stronger. Myung explained that the essence of this training is that in a short period of time they must fight with wooden swords while standing inside this circle. He remembered that when in past lives he came to visit these monks. They used these attacks on him. Myung explained that if the guy leaves the circle territory or loses consciousness or gives up, then everything will end. Myung said that if this guy screws up and loses, he will have to admit that he is actually a cheating thieves. Yunho said that he would obediently follow these instructions if it was interesting and exciting, otherwise he would do it his own way. Myung turned to all the other monks who were present in the training arena and asked them if they had just heard the words of this young master. Myung ordered these monks who stood along the contour of the circle to run and complete this task and not pay attention to the fact that this was happening to him for the first time, he asked him to give his best for a couple of days. The master smiled and said that it would be a very interesting sight watching the young master encounter these students for the first time. The doctor asked the master, will this young master be able to withstand such hard training because he has never done anything like this? Yajin said that when three gather, their strength is equal to five, but when five gather, their strength is equal to ten soldiers. He said that this Jijin involves eight amazing students who are good with their weapons and are not the first time testing other students' strength. Yajin said that it would be a very interesting sight that would unexpectedly brighten his day. Myung tightly grasped the wooden sword in his hand and held it out in front of him. All this time he was thinking that this guy would not be able to survive this Jajin and he had no chance. All he could do was disgrace himself in front of Jajin. The monks stood along the contour of the circle and collected their internal energy in order to begin the task. Yunho felt that these monks were simultaneously directing their forces in his direction, he realized that now they would begin their attacks. He thought that if he succeeded, they gave them all away at once. Will there be rumors about him again that he is the strongest warrior? The first Manak took his step forward and after that began to accelerate and gain speed. This monk took a swift leap upward and then swung his sword to strike. Yunho was trying to come up with a plan at that moment to confuse these guys so that they wouldn't understand anything. He allowed this monk to make the first strike and pretended as if he did not notice this monk from behind. Myung didn't understand how this happened, he thought that this guy would be able to dodge the blow, but he just missed it. The monk also didn't understand what had just happened. Usually such blows are always repelled first, this guy just got hit in the head with a wooden sword. The doctor was afraid for the young master to believe he had just received a strong blow to the back of his head with wooden swords and this could have caused him certain injuries. Yajin was also very surprised that this boy was not crazy, bite was such a simple blow, he told him that it would be crazy to defeat an entire bandit group, but he would definitely be able to block such an attack. Yunho lowered his head down and acted like he was feeling really bad. Yunho began to fall to the ground after being hit on the head by the monk with his wooden sword. Myung didn't understand what was happening and how it could even happen. It was surprising to him that Yunho fell after the first blow, because he claimed that he alone dealt with Aso's group. He looked at what was happening now and could not understand how a simple first attack could immediately defeat him. Myung started gloating because this guy proclaimed himself to be a strong martial artist but in reality he was a liar. Myung thought that this guy is not a hero and he is certainly an unrighteous person and he will be able to expose this as a liar. Yajin saw what just happened in the battle arena and said that apparently it will be a difficult training. The doctor jumped up from his place and began to shout as a monk that they could have made the first attack not from behind in front so that the guy would have time to react because this training is familiar to them. But for the young master this is the first time. Master Yajin said that this training will not be any problem for Yunho and therefore there is no point in worrying about it. After Yunho fell, he immediately began to rise up. Myung was very surprised when he saw that this guy could get up after such a blow, he completely stopped understanding what was happening. Yunho got to his feet and stood with his head down, 
he looked as if nothing had happened to him. The guy smiled and realized that these idiots fell for his joke. Yajin said that most likely the problems will be just such students because Yunho is a very arrogant guy and will not allow them to pass this test just like that. Yunho started scratching his head and laughing. He tried to feel with his finger if he had a bump on his head or not. Yunho said that these monks will not be able to finish the test without even starting it. So now they will have to work hard. Yunho looked at the monk who was standing behind him and said that his attack impressed the young master because it was unexpected and he didn't even have time to feel it. Myung at that moment began to get angry again. He thought that even after being hit in the head from behind, he remained in full health, but this did not stop him and he still wanted to defeat this guy. Yajin was surprised that among all the monks, only he was able to notice Yunho's action and he was surprised that everyone appeared blind but his cunning plan. Yajin noticed that the young master was able to deflect the sword strike with the help of defensive chi energy in a split second and did not receive damage. Yajin understood that his level of martial arts was excellent, but still the guy continues to use his childish pranks. Yajin noticed how this guy feigned pain and fell to his knees, but in fact he was pretending and realized that only children do this when they want to play. Yunho informed all the monks that the line was not crossed, so he does not understand why the test was stopped. Myung began to get even angrier when he realized that this guy had deceived everyone and continued to behave so impudently. Yunho asked the monk who is standing behind him why he doesn't do anything and just looks at the young master. The monk immediately reacted and realized that he needed to attack this guy because he actually stood motionless for a long time. He stabbed with his sword and immediately missed because the young master dodged this blow very quickly. The monk did not understand how this happened at all and why this young master I was moving so fast. Yunho saw that another monk was approaching him and was already trying to stab him with his wooden evening. But the guy was able to dodge even this sword by making a quick lunge back. Another enemy began to fly at him from above and also tried to deal him a crushing blow. But even this monk could not touch the master with his sword because he dodged again. The doctor jokingly said that after that blow to the head this guy began to move completely differently and now no one can hit him. Yunho dodged these blows very quickly and said that if he stands in one place, will they be able to hit him or will they also miss? One of the monks telepathically transmitted a command to the rest of the monks that vertical blows and lunges should be avoided. The rest of the monks listened carefully to this guy and thought about hitting horizontally. Thanks to their ability to communicate at the level of telepathy, they decided that they would attack this guy with three of them at the same time. Yunho smiled as if he could calculate in the eyes of these guys and their plans that we had not just agreed upon telepathically. He saw the three of them trying to simultaneously attack him and said that he did not expect from these monks that they could not communicate using their brains. Yunho waited for the perfect moment to make the jump. When he jumped, they were all shocked because the guy was able to choose the perfect moment to evade all the attacks with this jump. But while flying in the air, he realized that he had underestimated the strength of his opponents. At that moment he remembered that monks also know how to fly in the air. And his most important omission was that eight people were involved in this exercise. Myung didn't understand why this guy is so agile, how he manages to dodge all attacks for so long. Yunho at that moment realized that, purely technically, he would not be able to evade such a large number of these swords and it was necessary to take new measures. He took his wooden sword tightly in his hand and decided to finally use it. He made a thrust with his sword and immediately knocked the weapons out of the hands of his opponents and threw them back. Myung didn't understand how this was even possible and where did this guy get such great abilities in martial arts. The doctor was shocked when he saw what just happened in the air with these monks. They all scattered to the side and he could not understand how it happened. One monk shouted that this guy is coming down and they must meet him because this is the right time to deliver the attack. They raised their wooden swords in order to take their opponent by surprise and attack him at a time when he was unable to defend himself and was in a weak position. Yunho very quickly did several of these at his opponents and they all scattered in different directions. Some started on one monk still trying to stay on his feet after such a strong attack. They didn't understand how they could continue to act and attack this guy because he dodges all their attacks. And now he also started using his sword to fight back. They did not understand that this had just happened, the young master was able to throw back all the fighting monks with one blow. Myung immediately turned his attention to the aura that appeared around his sword and realized that this guy was using a special technique. 
The doctor asked Master Yajin what just happened on the battlefield because he couldn't explain what he saw in words. Yajin said that it was too fast for the human eye and an ordinary person would hardly be able to notice it. But in fact, Yunho's wooden sword was like a flash of light. Yunho stopped near the edge of the line and stood there without moving. He asked these guys why are they standing still and doing nothing because he still hasn't crossed the line. He said that now he will change the rules a little in this game and he will also attack them in response. Myung didn't understand how this was even possible and why this guy had the right to change the rules of this test. One monk said that he had the impression that it was not they who drove him, but that he drove them into a corner as his victims. He was thinking that the elder brother said that all the heroic stories of the young master are lies. Is it really so now? The monk asked his brother to stop the test, because this guy has already proven that he is a strong warrior. Myung said that it's still early and they need to continue the test until they defeat this guy. Yajin thought that if the course of the battle changes, then our techniques often become useless and we need to use new techniques. Yajin tried to mentally convey to Myung the advice that if you are not able to control even the battles then it is better to give it up. Myung did not agree with this idea and said that this was just the beginning and the most interesting things would come next. Yunho laughed and asked his opponent when the pride of Mount Mutant will finally make its move. He got angry that this guy acted so arrogant all the time and therefore activated his inner chakra. He took a step forward and began to run towards his opponent. Myung jumped into the air and swung his sword. He wanted to strike a quick and crushing blow to his opponent. Yunho looked at this guy like he was an idiot and said that he would beat him like that now and that he would remember this fight for the rest of his days. Myung looked at this guy and thought that he couldn't stand people like him because this boy was born into a rich family and behaves very arrogantly. He thought that while he was born in poverty, he worked hard every day and could not tolerate such bullies, so he wanted to bring him down from heaven and disgrace him in front of everyone. But he was not prepared for the fact that this boy is actually a very capable fighter and his abilities amaze Myung. He couldn't believe that this guy was actually a very strong opponent and still he wanted to defeat him. Yunho looked as if he was not at all afraid of his opponent, ready to fight him at any moment. Myung saw this guy's eyes and couldn't believe that people like him could actually be strong martial artists. Yunho parried this guy's blow with a slight movement of his hand. Yunho started laughing when he saw chips flying from this guy's wooden sword. Myung couldn't believe that his opponent was able to repel this attack and did it very calmly as if he didn't have to make any effort at all. The hospital had a large window that illuminated the room. This window was located directly opposite the patient's bed. Myung jumped out of bed or scream, he didn't understand what happened, his head was wrapped in bandages. The shaman who had been in the hospital all this time and was sitting at the table saw that the patient had finally woken up. He asked Myung how the guy was feeling and whether he had a headache or was dizzy. But the guy at that moment didn't understand at all what had happened. The shaman explained that he was beaten by a young master from the Supreme Coalition to such a state that he had to be taken to the hospital. Myung tried to remember what time the fight would have been but his memories were very foggy. Myung remembered that he was in a state of rage and attacked this guy, but the young master parried all the blows and had a soft smile on his face similar to the smile of the Jade Emperor. But then things got even worse because in an instant he turned into the Death God Pit and hit him so hard that his memories ended. He stretched his muscles and said that this is all he remembers and he knows where he was hit but does not remember how it happened. The monk said that given the fact that Myung was on the verge of life and death, it's not surprising that he doesn't remember anything. He asked what Lord Yajin said about this battle. The monk looked at this guy in surprise and said that the Lord did not comment on this fight at all and everyone got the feeling that he didn't care at all. Myung tried to get out of bed and go outside to the Manak, forbade him to do this and ordered him to lie on the bed and rest until he recovered. Myung said that he embarrassed himself in front of Yajin and he can't just lie here on the bed and rest, he has to fix this as soon as possible. The monk said that it was just an ordinary training and there was no way to embarrass himself here, because loss of consciousness and fractures are a common occurrence in these trainings. Myung still felt humiliated and disgraced because he could not defeat his opponent and despite the fact that this test was his idea, he still felt disgraced. Mount Mutin, as always, looked out from under the mists and touched the clouds with its top. Yajin sat on top of a high stone and meditated, he tried to concentrate his attention on internal energy. At the moment of meditation, he constantly recalled moments from this fight which he was lucky enough to see with his own eyes. 
Yunho appeared before his eyes as a memory and he remembered the daring look of this guy who is capable of single-handedly crushing an entire empire. Yajin smiled because he knew that he had never met anyone before, he could remind him of Yunho. The old man thought that great people appear in every era and perhaps this young man was born at this time to become his savior. He thought that great people such as Jan Sambong surpassed the 108 Arhats shamans or the first heavenly demon who cultivated Gunryanpa in the last years of his life. Yajin understood that in comparison with these great warriors, this boy had not yet earned respect for himself, but still his victory in Jajin was an indicator of his strength. Yajin smiled and thought that given his skills that allowed him to easily cope with obstacles on the way, he could become a great man. Yajin spread his hands to the side and shouted very loudly so that the whole valley heard him. He was very upset because this guy chose his own path and did not want to be a shaman. After all, if he had been a shaman, he definitely could have become one of the best warriors in the clan. Yajin smiled, he didn't understand that he had been carried very far in these thoughts, he became curious. If this guy remains just as greedy for power, then where will this path lead him? But then he thought that it was clearly not for him to decide the future fate of this boy and that life would put everything in its place and decide to use his power. The doctor approached Yunho and told him that Myung had always been worried about his lack of achievements in martial arts and he hoped that today's example would be a great lesson for him. They were in a large house that was intended for high-ranking craftsmen. The doctor gave the young master a small box with a golden life pill that was inside this box. Yunho asked the doctor why he decided to give this pill to him. And the doctor explained that the chief physician should express gratitude to the one who found the azure pill of life. He said that this is Zer's life force pill and it may be inferior to the azure life pill, but it is still a valuable medicine. Yunho was very surprised when the doctor gave him a vitality elixir pill, for him it would be positive gestures of friendliness from this person. Yunho asked the doctor how difficult was it to make this pill. The doctor replied that each such period requires a lot of time. The doctor said that he himself could only make so many of these pills and these are the most basic pills made in the shaman clan. He said that if the main needles of the pine trees of the mutant mountain are left here for three years, they will become the pill of the elixir of vitality that he gave to the young master, while retaining the natural strength of the mutant thieves. He pointed his hand at the containers with needles and said that the Azure Life pill that was returned to him takes about 10 years or even longer to make and is easier said than done because the process is so complex that the possibility of getting at least one is considered more than heaven. The doctor explained that this is another reason why the Azure Life pill is considered a valuable treasure of the shaman clan besides having a miraculous effect on the body and enhancing martial arts. Yunho said that it's working out. They just need to wait until everything they need grows and the doctor replied that it's worth noting that it all depends on mother nature. Yunho was very interested in the stories of this doctor, he became interested in observing these pills. He thought that this all means that these pills are unfinished and they must complete themselves. Well, if they are placed in different conditions, then something can happen to them. Yunho imagined what could happen to these pills if he moved them to another place and filled them with different energy. Yunho said that this life energy elixir pill is too big a reward for him and he can't take it. He asked to give it to someone who really needs it more than him and just give him a few unfinished pills. The doctor said that incomplete pills would not help the young master improve his internal energy. But the guy asked if these pills could have any medicinal effect in the future. He thought that this was actually true, but those pills certainly couldn't replace a good doctor. He said that if the young gentleman wants to refill these pills, then he can take not just a few but as many as he wants, and therefore suggested that he take any quantity because he can make them again. Yunho was happy and said that he would take as much as he needed. The doctor did not expect that this guy would play with these pills so much that he would take away absolutely everything that was here. But he couldn't blame this guy, because he himself said that he could take as much as he wanted and realized that next time he would need to formulate his thoughts correctly. Yunho walked out of the building and had a large chest of pills on his shoulder. He was very pleased and happy because he was able to take such a large number of these pills. Yunho decided to use the cave that he once made with his blow because he knew that this cave contained very strong energy. For a long time he could not think of a use for this energy that was in the cave, and now he was finally able to figure out what to do with this energy. Now, thanks to these pills, he can fill them with his strong energy and then refine his internal energy.
Yunho remembered all the doctor's words that you just need to take the pill to the right place and wait until it ripens. He thought that if he allowed these pills to be filled with his yokai energy that had been here all these years, he believed that they would become heavenly pills that would surpass even the azure life pill in their power. He waited and couldn't get enough of the brilliant idea that came to him, he already wanted these pills to ripen. When Yunho left the cave, he was very surprised when he saw a man at the entrance, he did not expect that anyone else could walk here besides him. But standing in front of him was not just any monk, it was the same Miyang whom Yunho had recently beaten during a training match. Miyang had his head wrapped in bandages and his facial expression conveyed his dislike for Yunho. The guy decided to come closer to this monk and find out what he was doing here and why he was watching Yunho. He started to get angry when he approached this monk because he doesn't like being watched and when someone finds out about his affairs that he would like to hide from others. Yunho didn't understand how this monk was able to follow him and at the same time Yunho didn't feel like he was being watched. It was very strange. He assumed that he was able to not notice this guy because he was very happy due to the fact that he had a lot of pills that he wanted to take to the cave. Myung accused Yunho of going into the cave even though there were prohibitory signs there. Thus, Yunho was not afraid to ruin his reputation. Yunho smiled and said that this cave is called the Demon Cave and he was very curious to know what was inside. He started laughing and then said that the further he went into this cave, the worse he became and he was able to walk even a few steps and he was lucky that he was able to get out. Yunho knew that the Yukai energy could have a very strong resistance on an ordinary person. The young master said that they had clarified the situation and for which he went into this cave. And then asked why Myung followed him all the way despite his wounds. Myung didn't want to answer his questions, instead, he asked him a counter question and asked who Yunho really is. Yunho was very surprised when he heard such a question from this guy. He couldn't even think that this idiot could suspect him of something. Yunho remembered a moment in his life when his master taught him martial arts and the master that day said that in some cases, when you hit your head with your fist, you can forget recent events. The master then explained to the boy that people get concussions and forget some moments of their lives. Yunho that day was all beaten up and his head was bandaged, the master looked at the boy and said that he also forgot something. Yunho was very curious and asked the master what was he talking about and what exactly did he forget. The master said that they had already talked to the boy about this before he lost consciousness. Yunho didn't understand what they were talking about before he lost consciousness, but the master didn't want to explain anything and tell the guy that he now needs to eat and gain strength. Yunho looked at Miyang and thought about what to answer his question and how to explain to him who he really is. Yunho looked at this monk and thought that in the current situation it is awkward to answer him that he is a person. Therefore, he still needed to think about the answer. Yunho suddenly I realized that he had been thinking about the answer for too long and didn't understand why he should answer anything at all to this guy who does whatever he wants. Yunho planted his fist and thought that now he would answer this as it would be easiest for him. The young master also decided to ask a counter question to this guy and asked him, is he always so unhappy when he talks to those he doesn't like? Myung again made a dissatisfied expression on his face because it was the stranger who started to make him angry every time he behaved arrogantly. Myung decided to have a long conversation with this guy and just threw him a wooden sword. Yunho didn't understand what was happening, it was strange to him that it was you, the downed monk, who was still thirsty for battle. He caught the wooden sword with his right hand and looked at it. He lowered his weapon down and examined it carefully. He could not understand why his opponent had just thrown him a wooden sword. Yunho said that this was a very strange act on Myung's part and asked what he wanted to achieve now. He threw him a wooden sword. Myung replied that among all the people he meets on his way, Yunho has the worst moral principles. But he explained that despite these terrible moral principles, the guy is one of the best martial arts fighters he has ever seen. Yunho was very surprised that this pompous monk who can't see beyond his nose just praised Yunho. Myung said that he couldn't properly evaluate his strength at the training ground because he was in control of his emotions and that's why he asks to show Yunho his martial arts again. Myung said that this is his sincere request and he actually wants to learn something from Yunho. The guy at that moment felt very awkward, he did not expect that this would come to him and ask him that he wanted to learn something. Yunho was very arrogant, but nevertheless he was never stupid and understood that Myung was most likely planning something and wanted to set him up. But nevertheless, his face expressed sincere intention and one got the feeling as if he was not lying at all. 
Yunho saw this guy's gaze and thought that his gaze was different from that blurred squint that was on the training ground and now his eyes shine like those of a curious child. Yunho couldn't believe that this guy was actually sincere right now. Yunho calmed down because he realized that this guy was not interested in his business. In the cave, this was the most important thing. After all, if this monk was interested in what Yunho was doing in the cave, he would have problems. He smiled and said that learning is always a good desire. But Yunho still reminded this monk that last time he tried his best to brand the young master a thief. Myung admitted his mistake and said that he was petty. Yunho reminded this monk that, unlike the training ground, there is absolutely no one here and having fought now, you might think that he is taking out his anger on Yunho. Myung said that he doesn't care at all about it. But Yunho at that moment began to rejoice and said that during the battle he might accidentally kill the monk. And asked how ready Myung is for this. Myung stood in one place for several seconds and did not move. He was very thoughtful because he had to make the right decision. But as soon as he remembered his goal for which he came here, he immediately took a fighting stance and realized that he wanted to fight. Yunho looked at this stupid monk with a sly look and thought that before this guy seemed just a proud fool and from a clan of shamans. Yunho smiled and said that he was ready to fight but warned that he would show his fighting skills only once. Myung said that he is still ready to fight despite the consequences that may occur during this fight. Myung had a very confident look and was ready to fight until his strength ran out or he fell to the ground unconscious again. At this moment, Yunho thought that he had reached a dead end and reached a dead end in martial arts, but suddenly such a strange person appeared in front of him. Myung carried a box of offerings to the Yokai temple and said that he had put his whole soul into this box and he was embarrassed to return just because of him. But suddenly he heard the voices of people in the temple and thought that it was high time for them to leave this temple and free it. When all the people left the temple, this guy entered the temple and began to pray in front of the portrait of the great Yukai, a white fox. Myung was talking to a respected Yukai about a young master who recently arrived at Mount Mutant and this is a young master from the Supreme Coalition. When Myung was leaving the hospital, his friend the monk told him that his defeat was just a training session and therefore there was nothing shameful here, and the guy thought that the appearance of the young master was just a training session that the respected Yokai had prepared for him in advance. Myung perceived all this as a test that the great spirit of the white fox provided to this guy in order to test him. Myung took his wooden sword in his hand and thought that if everything is so, then there is no reason to doubt it just because he fears for his life. He thought that he should not miss the movement of his opponent for a second and now his mind and vision became clearer than before. Yunho looked like a very dangerous opponent who was capable of destroying the entire clan of monks alone because he emitted very strong energy. Yunho asked his opponent if he was ready to start the battle or would he just stand still and watch him. Myung shouted loudly that he was ready to start the battle and was ready to defeat his opponent and pass the test. Yunho decided that he should attack first and therefore began to run towards uh, this monk. Yunho thought that this monk decided to do stupid things until the very end. He was approaching his opponent and all this time he was thinking that this guy's passion for martial art touched his heart. Yunho remembered moments from his life when he was trained by his master and sat on his knees obediently waiting for his teacher. Yunho swung his sword and thought that he really sympathizes with this guy's passion for martial arts and he even envies him. That's why Yunho decided that now he would show him something that would go beyond this world, but he didn't even understand how much the stupid monk could see with his own eyes. Yunho understood that if this monk managed to notice even the slightest detail, he would look at martial arts from a completely different perspective. Myung didn't understand where his opponent had gone, it was as if he had simply disappeared. But at that moment he began to feel very strong pain. Yunho launched a combination of very fast attacks on different parts of the body and it all happened in one second. Yunho hit this guy about 100 times and his body couldn't stand on his feet anymore. Myung didn't understand what was happening to his body, but he felt very strong pain and understood that it was all the work of this young master. He saw pieces of his clothes fly into the air and Myung began to fall to the ground. Yunho stood not far from this monk and watched him fall. Yunho smiled and asked this guy if this lesson was enough for him or did he want to see more. Myung understood that he was defeated again by this young master but nevertheless this time he was not upset because he himself wanted it and he smiled because he had just seen the best martial art in his life. Night began again and Mount Mutin looked magnificent as always at this time of day. From the house where Yunho and Lee Ryan lived, 
one could hear the very surprised voice of a young fortune teller who was shocked by Yunho's proposal. The guy repeated his proposal again and asked the young fortune teller if he would like to have a drink together today. Yunho smiled and said that today he had the most pleasant day of this whole trip and that's why he says that there's nothing wrong with drinking a little alcohol today because there's a reason for it. Lee looked at his friend with a sly look and said that if they want to drink, then they must have a very good plan. How to get alcohol? Lee explained that shamans do not drink alcohol and the guy himself also did not take any alcohol with him because he almost never drinks it. Lee asked Yunho where the young master was going to get his liquor. Yunho said that he has one idea that will easily help them solve this problem. But I wanted to know if Lee Ryan would like to drink too. The guy looked thoughtfully at his older brother and didn't immediately answer him, but from his eyes it was clear that he didn't mind having a little drink today. Myung tried to get to the hospital all day because his body was very tired and wounded after the fight with the young master. It was very difficult for him to move because all parts of his body hurt, but nevertheless he tried to be strong and continued to walk. When Myung reached the settlement of shamans who were on the top of the mountain, Myung Song saw him, this is a monk who works in a hospital and he immediately drew attention to his wounded brother. Sun Myung immediately ran up to the wounded monk and grabbed him by the arms to help him walk and asked what happened to him. But Myung replied that everything was fine with him and he didn't want to tell anything about today. But still, he told his friend the monk something. He said that today was the best day of his life. Yunho went to the man who was in this settlement of monks and when he approached his house a man met him and said that he was very glad to see the benefactor who returned the azure pill of life to the clan. This man introduced himself and said that his name is Sun Yang and he is the master of this palace. Sun Yan asked the young master what brought him instead of managing the finances of the shamans at such a late hour and the guy replied that he was not at all interested in the finances of the shaman clan. Yunho asked this man if he went to the pharmacy today. Sun Yan was very surprised when the young gentleman asked him this question. Vitya did not expect that anyone would know that he went to the pharmacy today. Yunho said that he smelled a strange smell that you would never find in a pharmacy. Yunho said that it was a very strange aroma that could never be smelled very much. Sun Yang said that he doesn't understand what this young gentleman is talking about and would like to hear an explanation. Yunho immediately used his nose and started smelling the man. He tilted his head towards him and began to sniff his clothes. The man jumped aside and asked the young gentleman to stop sniffing him because it made him feel embarrassed. Yunho said that this is exactly the smell that he hears in the pharmacy and this is the smell of alcohol that permeated the body of this man. Sun Yang immediately began to make excuses and explained that he couldn't drink because he was training as a monk and he couldn't drink alcohol. Yunho smiled and looked at this man. He said that despite all the rules of the shaman, this man still drinks alcohol. Yunho turned around and began to leave, but before leaving, he asked how the shaman could buy alcohol with such a prestigious aroma without stealing the clan's finances. Yunho said that he was on his way to have a cup of tea with Mr. Yajin and asked Sun Yan if he wanted to go with them. Sun Yan grabbed this guy's hand in his clothes and asked the young hero to stop for one minute. He asked Yunho what he wanted and said that he could do anything so that the young master would not tell anyone about it. Yunho at that moment looked at this financier and thought that he still had a fox nature in him and his cunning was passed on to him in this life. He held a bag of coins in his hand and said that if they go down from the eastern part of the mountain, they will come across a building called the Moonless Pavilion. Yunho said that this place serves a famous drink called Yanwa Dehak. Lee replied that he could not believe that there are drinking shamans. Lee opened the bag that his older brother gave him and saw that in this bag there were a large number of coins tied with a rope. Lee was very surprised when he saw such a large number of coins. He asked his elder brother. Did he really have to rob this financier? Yunho said that this is his reward for keeping his mouth shut. He smiled and said that it turned out that he is one of those who manages the finances of the clan and he bought alcohol with the money that should be in the vault of their clan. Lee was very upset by the actions of this man because he was a shaman who also drinks alcohol and steals money from the clan. Yunho said that the young fortune teller is clearly not the person who should judge this financier because he is now also going to drink alcohol with the stolen money. Lee said that he is not a shaman like this financier because he is from the Doran faction and given its history, he is more of a true shaman than most of the current shamans. 
Yunho asks the guy what shamans he is talking about and are these the same shamans who use ridiculous techniques in the market and immediately run away at the sight of Yunho's face. Li began to say that the techniques he uses are good and he can proudly say that his shamanic skills are at least at the level of Jigal Saga. Li said that the elder brother was able to see through everything because of his exceptionality. That's the only reason. Yunho thought that this kid's techniques were a little chaotic, but nevertheless they were quite effective for techniques used in a hurry. Yunho remembered this moment in which he was chasing Li. And he remembered well that when the young fortune teller disappeared, Yunho realized that he had fallen into a trap. Li shifted his feet and waved his hands, he said that he needed to wait a little and the day would come when he would properly demonstrate his skills. Yunho smiled because he realized that this kid is so easy to tease and he's always funny when he's angry. They were finally able to descend from the top of the mountain and approached the monks who were standing near the gate. Yunho took his sword otherwise look at it he informed the monk that there were several scratches on the ball. The monk, in a frightened voice, said that he wrapped this sword in many layers of lye cloth and it could not be scratched in any way. Yunho looked at this monk with a menacing look and said that he would take a better look at his sword when the sun rose. Li lowered his head down and sighed heavily, he understood that his older brother, as always, was scaring everyone he didn't like to take care. They walked along the forest and the young fortune teller said that the elder brother had a very bad character, but the young master answered as his late master said. Li said that from the moment they met, he constantly thought that his elder brother had a very bad character that could not be tolerated. Li walked next to his older brother and talked about how the older brother is so incredible in martial arts that the whole Muran should discuss him and he has little interest in what is going on around him. Therefore, I have not heard the story about Yunho. Li asked him what Yunho's status is in the martial arts world. And the guy replied that he had no status because all this time he lived a quiet life and didn't think about it. Li could not believe that his older brother had not had a single feat in his entire life. Yunho asked his young friend if anyone is stronger than the 24 strongest martial artists. Li said that generations before them, there were people called the Three Emperors, but they had long since disappeared into the shadows of the martial arts world. Yunho asked his friend who is stronger than the Three Emperors. Li said that those who are stronger are those who have gone beyond the trance of inventory and have reached the mythical realm and these people are truly powerful figures standing at the top of the world of martial arts. Yunho remembered that the master once upon a time told him about the mythical kingdom. He said that even if he accomplishes the great feat of reaching the mythical kingdom before adulthood, he will not become the strongest. The master's words were very true and the guy understood why. In the Yukai world, even if it is called the mythical realm, he knows that he is not strong enough to defeat even the weakest of the great Yukai. Yunho understood that for this reason he did not give up on his desire to become stronger and became stronger every day, although he had already reached the mythical realm. He does this because he is not interested in his status in Murim, but in how strong he can become in this human body and he is interested in his limit. Yunho said that he is approximately at the same level as these great warriors about whom legends are made. Li looked at his friend in surprise. After all, he didn't expect to hear such words from him. Li took him by the shoulder and started laughing because this phrase made him laugh a lot. The boy laughed and said that his older brother had gone too far in his imagination and imagined that he was the best warrior in the world. Yunho was surprised by Li's reaction because he was laughing because his older brother was saying that he was strong enough to compete with the heavenly demon and Jiang Sambong from ancient times. Li laughed because it all seemed very ridiculous to him and he didn't even know what to answer. Yunho continued to look at this guy in very surprise and could not understand his reaction. Li saw the serious face of his older brother and it made him laugh even more because he understood that the older brother actually believed in all this. Suddenly Li realized that he had been laughing for a very long time and his older brother was starting to get angry because of this. Li immediately calmed down and stopped laughing and didn't feel awkward because his older brother was looking at him like that. Li asked if Yunho really seriously thinks that he is so good at martial arts. Yunho smiled and said that he just wanted to tease Li and nothing more. That's why he said that he was so good at martial arts. Li said that Yunho had a very serious face at that moment and he thought that this was actually not a joke and now he wanted to know the truth. There were a lot of clouds in the night sky that covered the moon and stars. Li saw in the distance a very beautiful bright building, it was the same place they were going to. He was very happy when he saw it. Yunho said that apparently they came to the place they needed. 
Li said that this landscape looks like a painting come to life. Li admitted that he could not even imagine that there could be a tavern in such a place. Yunho agreed with his friend and said that he also didn't expect to find a tavern here. Yunho said that he was very interested in how such a large tavern could end up in such a wilderness. He thought that this building had fulfilled all his expectations and this must be the reason why this moonless pavilion seemed suspicious to him. This building was very large, it had several floors and red lanterns hung on each roof of this building. A female voice said that for some reason one red lantern is not lit. The girl suggested that the lantern might not light because a filter had fallen into the oil or it had simply run out. Another girl who was in the room at that moment asked the first girl who told her to look at the extinguished lantern. This beautiful girl in red clothes looked carefully at her interlocutor and said that if she has free time, she can walk through the guest rooms and check if the alcohol has run out. There was a security guard at the entrance to this building, not allowing guests inside. This guard tried to explain to the young guests that they had come to the wrong place and no one would let them in here. Yunho said that they came exactly where they needed to and didn't understand why they weren't letting them through. Li tried to be polite and asked this guard. Is there really another one in this city called the Moonless Pavilion? The guard said that if these guys want to visit the Moonless Pavilion, then they have come to the right place. But he still explained to them that they do not accept the first people they meet as guests and therefore cannot let these guys pass just like that. Lee explained in a whisper to his friend that this hotel would not accept anyone as guests and this meant that the courtesans must be incredibly beautiful in this place. Yunho asked this guard to explain what criteria do they use to determine their guests. The guard asked Yunho if he is a member of a rich clan that rules the province or if he is a rich merchant. But the guy replied that he did not fit any of these criteria. The guard suggested that this guy might be a follower of some sect, but then he looked at his clothes and realized that this was unlikely. He carefully began to look at the details of this guy's clothing and scratched his beard at that moment suddenly he noticed something interesting. The guard asked the guy if he was a famous martial artist. He asked this question because he saw an expensive sword on his belt. Yunho replied that he is not yet a famous martial artist. Lee explained that this was all due to the fact that this guy had entered into a rather solitary life. The guard asked the guy if he had anything worthwhile that he could let him through. Yunho said that he is the eldest son of a trade association merchant. The guard immediately became happy and said that in this case, it all depends on the name of this trade association, if this guy is from a trade association like the Supreme Coalition or the Association of 10,000 Villains, then he will be allowed to come here. Li raised his hand up and said in a joyful voice that in this case, this guard can open the door and invite them inside. Yunho explained to this guard that he is Mr. Ha Yunho from the Supreme Coalition. The guard was very shocked when he learned that the young master from the Supreme Coalition personally came here. Yunho replied that everything is exactly like that and he already wants to go into the building as soon as possible. But the security guard was in no hurry to let these two guys into the building, he lowered his head and started laughing. Suddenly the guard raised his head up and started laughing very loudly looking into the eyes of these guys. The guard said that he is not a fool and you will never believe in your life that these guys are members of the Supreme Coalition. He pointed his finger to the side and said that if they are from the Supreme Coalition, then they need to go over there and he doesn't understand why their heir would look for a tavern so late at night, and even in such a remote place. The guard pointed his finger at this guy and said that he doesn't look a bit like the young master from the Supreme Coalition because the young master is now bedridden. Yunho understands that it will be very difficult for him to explain the whole situation to this guard and make him believe himself. The woman looked at the extinguished lantern and then thought that this was a stupid woman doing unnecessary things. He stood on the balcony and looked at this lantern and didn't understand why this woman was making her angry. Suddenly she heard strange sounds coming from the street and turned her head in that direction to find out what happened there. She heard strange sounds that some guy was handing over and saw the body of a guard flying in the air. This guard fell to the ground and ended up in pain very injured after a fight with these guys. Yunho didn't understand how the owners of this establishment could leave such an idiot to guard these doors. Lee didn't like the fact that his older brother started fighting with the guard. But the guy replied that the guard made him look like a fool and said that the golden tablet of the Supreme Coalition was a fake. The other guards who were inside the building were very surprised when they saw that two strangers had beaten their guard and broken down the door. These guards approached the guard lying on the ground and ordered the stranger to say his name and introduce himself. 
The guard said that he tried to stop this guy after he insisted that he was the young master of the Supreme Coalition. The most important man among all these guards looked carefully at the guy and thought that he needed to deal with this issue. He looked carefully at these two guys and wanted to understand whether they were actually members of the Supreme Coalition. Yunho asked his friend if they could consider this man's look to mean that they were recognized as guests. Lee replied that it's unlikely. Yunho said that they still have a chance and they will definitely become guests who cannot be refused. And they will end up in this tavern called the Moonless Pavilion. The man informed these two strangers that people were now vacationing in their hotels. He ordered his guards to get these two guys out of here and to do it as quickly as possible. Lee said that he was not sure that he could cope with these guards and allowed his older brother to deal with them himself. Yunho asked does the young fortune teller have any techniques that could help in this situation, but when he turned his head his friend was no longer here, he simply ran away and hid to avoid the fight. Yunho was upset that his friend ran away so quickly and at that moment a guard was already thrown out of formation on him, you wanted to attack him. Yunho slowly raised his hand up and prepared to fight. He immediately punched the first guard in the face. After that, he hit the second guard with his fist right in the nose. And he hit the third guard on the cheek with his palm, but this blow was very strong and the guard flew to the side. Yunho was able to defeat three guards at once using only his left hand. He smiled and looked at these guards, after that he realized that this would be the easiest fight of his life. He clenched his fist and realized that he would now start beating these idiots. Yunho very easily and simply beat up these three guards and didn't even give them a chance to counterattack. The girl carefully watched this battle while standing on the balcony. She was very interested in this young man who was now single-handedly beating up a whole group of security guards. She turned her head to the servant who was standing near the door and asked who is this man who is knocking down the guards. The servant replied that this man claims to be the young master of the Supreme Coalition. She asked the servant if they checked his words for truth. And the servant replied that they have no confirmation of this yet. But he said that they recently received a report that the caravan of the Supreme Coalition had arrived at the shaman faction. She got angry with her servant and asked why he told her about this only now. The servant replied that he did not think that this girl would be interested in this news. She was angry with her servant for not understanding her desires at all. She decided to take everything into her own hands and solve this situation herself, so she left her room and began to head towards the exit. She walked very quickly to the central gate in order to have time to meet this young gentleman. On the way to the central gate, she recalled her recent conversation about this gentleman. She said that no matter how strong the warriors hired by the Supreme Coalition were, they would not be able to destroy the bandit lair alone. The servant stood near the door and said that there are rumors that the young master of the Supreme Coalition did this alone. He said that these were nothing more than rumors. But those who were in that forest also say that this was the work of the young master. She was very angry about this whole situation and anger filled her mind so she walked even faster than before. She was thinking that if the news that the Supreme Coalition caravan had arrived at the shaman faction was confirmed, then the person who destroyed the riots right now might actually be him. The girl asked her servant what the name of this young master was and he told her that this guy's name was Ha Yunho. She remembered his name and made a dissatisfied expression on her face, now she wanted to see him in person and chat. Yunho smiled and continued the fight, he enjoyed beating these guys. He liked it when they attacked him first because then he could beat up these idiots absolutely carefree. After all, they themselves started the fight. When he is white, this guy at these moments simply enjoyed the fact that he could play with them. Sometimes the guard even had enough strength to deliver his blow, but the guy calmly dodged him. He slammed his heel right into the jaw of one of the guards. He beat them and after each blow these guards received very strong damage and flew to the side. The girl approached the central gate and saw the guards one after another fall to the ground and be beaten by this young master. She was shocked when she saw that the big strong guard had just fallen to the ground and lost consciousness. She couldn't believe that all this was actually happening now and this was not a dream. A large number of guards had already accumulated near the central gate and were trying to defeat this young gentleman, but he calmly fought off all of them. She was shocked that this guy was able to defeat her artificial and strong warriors who were carefully raised by her. The beaten guard turned to Mrs. Lord Lowe and said that she need not worry about this situation and they would sort it out, but she said that they would not do anything against him. She understood that if the rumors about this young master were true, then this was the expected outcome from fighting him. 
Lo understood that in this case it was actually the same young master from the Supreme Coalition. Yunho is at this moment beating up the guards and enjoying the fact that they don't end because he can rarely stretch his fists in battle. Lo looked at this guy and he seemed incredibly handsome to her. She didn't expect that she might like this young master so much that she would even be speechless. Lu shouted very loudly and ordered all her guards and this young master to stop fighting immediately and move away from each other. Law scolded her guards for showing their disrespect in front of the young master of the Supreme Coalition. Yunho was happy because at least someone could recognize him in this place. Yunho said that he heard from the guard how they call this girl Lord Lo and suggested that she is the owner of the Moonless Pavilion. Lo didn't answer this guy right away and only made a dissatisfied expression on her face so that he would understand that she was not very happy to see him. She looked at this guy and assessed him. She realized that he was arrogant and self-confident because even many followers of famous sects did not dare to stand so self-confidently in front of her. She understood that, no matter what, there was no need to resist his confidence. Lo decided that in this situation it would be best to just smile and behave politely with this gentleman. She bowed before him and said that her name was Surin and she was the owner of this establishment called the Moonless Pavilion. She welcomed young master Ha Yunho from the Supreme Coalition to her establishment. He repeated her name Surin again, because it seemed very beautiful to him. He looked at her and thought that this faithful young graceful woman with such a beautiful name. He smiled and thought that this gorgeously beautiful girl was talking to him as if they were old friends. Surin said that she understood why the young master was angry because he had overcome a long time. The flesh and her people did not take this into account and were rude to the young master simply because they rushed to conclusions. He said that he wanted to have a drink but it didn't work out. Because these guys didn't believe that he was the young master supreme of the coalition and so he decided to enter as a strong martial artist. He said that he could show more if this was not enough, but the girl replied that this was quite enough and she did not want to see how her people were beaten. Yunho praised this girl for spending a lot of time to hire such experienced martial artists and if they were injured or killed, the damage would be huge. Surin said that it seemed to her that the young master was more interested in the finances of the Moonless Pavilion than in the courtesans. But she agreed with the guy and said that undoubtedly they had to pay a lot of money for these fighters. She said that's why if he would be so kind as to order more drinks and food, it would help her cover expenses. Yunho asked her if these words meant that she was finally ready to welcome him to her establishment as a guest. Surin smiled and said that it was a great honor for her to meet the young gentleman from the Supreme Coalition. Yunho suddenly said loudly that he was done dealing with these guys and asked where his friend was now. Surin was very surprised when she learned that the young master had come with someone else, but she was very afraid that it could be some woman who could interfere with them. They heard someone behind the fence making strange noises trying to climb the wall. Suddenly Lee appeared and fell from the fence straight to the ground. Yunho said that he took with him this stupid shaman who wants to fill his belly at his expense and Lee asked his older brother not to talk about him like that. They went to the central house which was located on the territory of this institution. They were brought a lot of different delicious food. There was everything one could dream of. Whether beer was alcohol and constantly told funny stories and laughed at them, his face was already red but he was very happy at that moment. The courtesan constantly asked the young shaman whether he really knew how to read the signs of both heaven and earth. And he boasted that he could do many different things. Lee said that thanks to his great talent, many people's lives have changed for the better. The girls immediately began to ask the great shaman to look into their fate and tell them what would happen to them. The courtesan who sat next to Yunho constantly poured him alcohol and said that he had a very interesting friend. Yunho said that this kid is actually a very funny guy. She smiled and asked what kind of person is the young master if he has such an interesting friend. Yunho asked her what kind of person she thinks he is. She suggested that he was one of those who are happy when he does what he likes. Yunho was a little drunk, his cheeks turned red and it's not clear whether it was from alcohol or because of a nice conversation with this courtesan, but he said that this girl is quite insightful. He took a glass of alcohol and drank it, the girl carefully watched this young gentleman. Suddenly this girl looked away and began to dream. The second girl continued to entertain the young shaman but noticed that her friend was daydreaming at that moment. They remembered what Surin had said and that the young master of the Supreme Coalition has enormous power and also owns the enormous wealth of the Supreme Coalition. 
Surin said that from the very beginning everything did not go according to plan and this young master is also a difficult opponent. She said that if the girls managed to win his heart, she would be of great help to them in the future. Surin asked her two best courtesans to win the heart of the young master at any cost. She looked at him with loving eyes and did not take her gaze off him. Yunho looked at this girl and tried to understand what she wanted from him because she had been looking at him for a very long time. The girl said that she didn't know how the young gentleman would take it, but nevertheless, I asked him for permission to find out more information about him. Yunho looked up and thought, what would be so interesting to tell this to a girl? She brought her head closer to him and asked if the young master would actually allow her to tell more about himself. He took a cup of alcohol and was about to drink it. Yunho brought this cup to his mouth to drink and said that even if he tells more information about himself, he is not sure that this girl will be able to withstand all this information. Yunho knew that Fox Yukai have unique abilities that ordinary people do not possess. These abilities are called the falling in love charm. If someone falls under the influence of their charms then that person, monster, or immortal will all fall into their trap and turn into fools in love. People have a similar martial art specializing in charming other people and it is called Sukgan. Yunho understood that the actions that these girls are doing now are reminiscent of a martial art called Sukgan. These geisha are now using similar techniques to charm Yunho but unfortunately they don't work for him. Yunho looked at his friend and saw how their technique fascinates him and he is now acting like an idiot, most likely he has already fallen into this trap. Yunho took the cup of alcohol from the table and thought that if these girls just wanted to take their money and they would give them alcohol, but the reason they went this far means that they are trying to charm them with this seductive technique. He knew that it was absolutely pointless to think about the reason why they were doing this, because even if they were lucky enough to catch Yunho in this trap, he would easily get out of it. Yunho held a glass of alcohol in his hand and was about to drink it. He told this girl that she could hardly stand the story that he could tell her. She answered the young master that he didn't have to worry about this because she would endure everything and she had already heard a hundred different stories. The girl began to ask and beg this young gentleman to tell her this story because she couldn't wait to hear about his life. Yunho looked at her and at that moment he felt some strange sensations in his body and he did not understand what was happening to him. She looked very beautiful and charming when he looked at her it turned out that the whole world was disappearing before his eyes and he could only look at her. Suddenly Yunho realized that this girl was trying to charm him with her charms and she was doing it very openly and was not afraid of it, he thought that he should punish this naughty girl. He used a fighting technique called intangible chi energy. She didn't understand what was happening, but her eyes suddenly turned blue and she seemed to have lost control of herself. The second girl also succumbed to the influence of this intangible chi energy. Her eyes are also suddenly old blue. At this moment, the building worked only for them and no one except them was inside this room. Yunho drank alcohol from a cup and tasted that nice rice wine. He smiled and said that he really liked this alcohol because he had been waiting all evening for the moment when he could drink good alcohol and finally his wish came true. Yunho said that he was able to feel the taste of this alcohol only after finishing the first bottle and only now is he starting to feel good. The girl suddenly wrinkled her face and for some reason she looked very sad and dissatisfied. She was very angry about something and could not hide her emotions, sweat was dripping down her face at that moment. Yunho noticed that the girl who was sitting next to him for some reason began to behave very strangely and she began to cover her mouth with her hands. He asked her why she was acting so strangely and what happened to her. She told him that nothing happened and she was fine. He saw that blood began to flow from her nose and that blood seeped through her fingers, but he did not understand what happened. The shaman also noticed that his girlfriend was behaving very strangely and he asked her what happened to her, but she replied that she was fine and also started coughing up blood. She looked at her hand and saw blood on her palm, the girl realized that her internal blood flow had been disrupted and blood flowed into her mouth. But she did not understand what this was connected with, and Yunho understood that his technique, intangible chi energy, began to act and it is called that because it has no form. He thought that these girls are now in confusion because they don't know what hit them. He noticed that these girls are very well trained because it is difficult to remain calm while enduring the pain of crushing internal organs. A fly was sitting on the table at that moment and did not move, as if she had frozen. Yunho turned his attention to this fly and the fly began to irritate him with its presence because it was bothering him. Yunho said that this fly had been flying here for a long time, 
but the geisha didn't understand what this guy was talking about now and asked him what he meant. Yunho hit the table with his palm and tried to kill this fly. He raised his palm up and saw that the fly was already dead. He said that this happens when you boldly meet face to face with someone you cannot defeat. Yunho bent down, looked at the geisha and asked her if she understood what he was talking about now. The geisha said that now the table on which the fly was sitting was stained with blood and she said that she wanted to go get a rag to wipe everything off. But just as she was about to get up from the table, she again felt some strange pain. She did not understand what caused such sudden pain and why this pain appeared to her only now. Yunho at that moment was sitting opposite her, smiling, he understood perfectly well what was happening with these girls and therefore could calmly control the situation and not worry about anything. Suddenly, a lady came into the room and said that the insect spray that she had recently sprayed in this room had already run out and because it had stopped working, insects flew in here. Surin held a musical instrument in her hands and watched the guests who were in the room, she understood that the girls were not coping with their task and she had to intervene. Yunho was very surprised when he saw the lady holding this musical instrument in her hands, he was happy because he understood that finally something fun would happen here. Yunho said that he did not expect to see a lady holding a heptichord in her hands. He asked her. Is the owner of the establishment going to play this instrument for him herself? Surin said that she would join their company because she wanted to entertain a special guest and apologized for the fact that they did not have enough entertainers. Yunho understood that this lady is very cunning and it is unlikely that she makes such performances for all her guests. He looked at Lady Surin and thought that she had been watching them all this time and came here with a heptichord as a last resort. Yunho said that he would be very happy if the lady played this musical instrument because he likes to listen to music when he drinks alcohol. The lady told him that she came on time. Yunho asked everyone in the room to be silent so they could listen to Lady Surin's speech. She smiled because she thought that this boy had just been hooked and now she just had to finish the job. She sat down on a chair and began to prepare her fingers so that she could now play her favorite melody on the instrument for these guests. She took a deep breath and then exhaled the air from her lungs. Surin looked carefully at the strings and mentally began to prepare for the fact that she would now start playing. She slowly touched the strings with her fingers and very quietly began to play the melody. Yunho smiled and looked at how this cunning woman would now try to charm them with her play on this musical instrument. Surin lowered her eyes and focused only on the game. Suddenly the music she was playing began to get louder and louder and she very quickly fingered these strings with her fingers and it seemed as if many beautiful sounds were emanating from this instrument. Lady Surin played excellent music which she created with her fingers using this instrument was excellent. She rotated her head in order to find the necessary frets on this instrument and continue her melody. She plucked the strings with her fingers and could immediately use several strings to create beautiful sounds. Yunho was a very attentive listener and he absolutely loved the music that now set the mood in the room. He slowly began to close his eyes. He realized that he wanted to close his eyes completely so as not to leave anything unnecessary and enjoy only this music. He decided to trust his ears, which now heard these melodies and rejoiced at every sound. When he was with his eyes closed, the world around him disappeared and only he, she, and the music that this mistress creates. He heard in this music something more than ordinary melodies, he heard the pure sounds of dew drops flowing beautifully like fog and understood that this lady had incredible skill in playing this instrument. The melody slowly came to an end and again stopped very quietly in order to go into nowhere in the same way as it appeared from nowhere. Lady Surin finished playing this instrument and raised her hands up to demonstrate the end of the performance of this piece of music. She exhaled to calm down, because playing this instrument is a very intimate activity for her. She asked the young master whether he liked this performance and whether he was able to enjoy this moment. Yunho replied to the young lady that the performance was not bad, but not at all what he expected. He smiled and said that he still had something to say. Yunho offered to compensate the young lady for her efforts for the performance and he wants to do it out of politeness. She smiled and told him that she did not play this melody for the guests in order to get anything in return. Surin said that because the young master didn't like her performance, she didn't think she deserved to be paid for her music. Yunho offered to fulfill any of her wishes in exchange for the fact that she had just played this music for the guests. He smiled and insisted that fulfilling one wish of the lady was a very generous reward for such a mediocre performance. She said that the young master was behaving very rashly and asked what he thought she might want from the young master. Yunho replied that he doesn't know what she wants. However, 
he has one guess and he wants to voice it. Yunho said that he has a feeling that the Hao clan wants to get his power. The geisha at that moment was very surprised when she heard such words from this guest, she did not understand who he was and why he was talking so impudently to the lady. The second girl was also very wary of this gentleman's words. I didn't understand how you knew so much. Lady Surin looked carefully at this boy and realized that he was not as simple as he might seem at first glance. Yunho knew that if anyone wanted to play a game with him, then this game would initially be based on his rules. The geisha looked at him again with an incredulous look. The second geisha felt that this guest was unusual and most likely it would be necessary to behave differently with him than with the other guests. Surin looked at this guy with a narrowed gaze and thought that he clearly knew a lot more than he should. Yunho made his move in this game and was now waiting for what to say to him, this is the lady, he was curious to watch the reactions of these girls. The shaman was very happy and cheerful, he had already drunk a lot of alcohol and was fascinated by the technique of seducing these girls, so he stopped understanding the situation. The shaman saw that all the people in this room had very serious faces and there was a very tense atmosphere in the room, so he asked what was happening here. She closed her eyes and smiled, the lady understood that now there would be a very tense dialogue. She looked at the young master and said that most of her guests visit the tavern in search of the most beautiful courtesan and this is the first time she has seen someone asking about the Hao clan instead. Yunho said that the Hao clan interests him much more than courtesans, so he decided to talk about this. He said that he found it funny from the lady that hired soldiers are devoted to protection, however, he understands that, first of all, he does not care about his life and their loyalty is commensurate with the payment they receive. Yunho said that even the shamans do not know that he came here and the tavern owner did not need to find out his real name at the first meeting. Yunho said that the lady most likely already found out that he taught rock to the Aso group and therefore, in order to check whether the rumors about him were true or not, Lady Surin had to check his identity. Yunho said that in Murim there are only two places where you can find out such information and the first of these places is the beggar sect. Surin said that she does not understand what this young master is talking about now. Yunho began to laugh and said that this is an ideal place to teach courtesans martial arts and seduction techniques and even similar information gathering skills. Yunho said that even now these courtesans are ready to pull out their hidden weapons and start attacking. He behaved very calmly and in a confident voice told the courtesans that he had better sit in peace and not move if they did not want to die. The geisha looked at the mistress, trying to understand what to do next. After all, they were completely confused when they realized that this guest had gotten in and knew everything. Yunho said that the lady is acting stupidly when she continues to refuse and admit that this place and the people who are here are originally the Hao clan. He said that he knows their plan and knows that they want to crush him with numbers and force him to remain silent. Lady Surin continued to sit silently and look at this guy. She did not understand who he was, how he appeared here before, she had never met such people. For the first time in her entire life, Surin was in such a difficult situation, she understood that she could not win this guy because he knew too much and behaved very confidently. The shaman was very drunk and happy. His face was already red because he drank a lot of alcohol and the boy shouted that he was not afraid of monsters and was ready to fight them all at once. Suddenly he fell to the floor and because there was already a large amount of alcohol in him and he was no longer able to resist this alcohol. Surin said that this guy surprised her very much. Yunho replied that despite this, the lady's face is still as calm. She said that Yunho doesn't even know how much fighting force they now need for the clan to continue to function. Yunho replied that he was not interested and did not want to know anything about it. He said that it was quite entertaining to watch how the mistress tried to seduce him and take advantage of it, so he decided to play along with her a little so that everything would move to the next level. He smiled and said that now he understands why she chooses her guests so carefully and does not allow people who are uninteresting to her into this place. He said that now it became clear to him that the lady carefully selects the people who can be allowed into this building and chooses only those who are valuable to her. She said that this is the only way the weak can survive among the strong. Yunho told her that when he hears such excuses, he immediately starts thinking about rats. Surin got angry when she heard these words and asked the guy to be careful with his words and since he revealed their true identity there is no longer any need to treat him as a guest. Yunho said that for the first time in the form of a girl who has such great self-esteem and pride, 
She hit the table with her hand and the table began to shake. Surin said that no one has the right to talk to her like that, and even more so, a stranger who sees her for the first time has no right to evaluate her. Yunho asked Mrs. Did she really just get so angry with him? She replied that it was the first time she had seen a person with such an arrogant outlook on life and other people. She said that after his words, she begins to think about, does he really want to support their clan? Yunho said that Mrs. reacts very strongly to a common joke. She said that even rats have teeth and when they are provoked, rats begin to bite and therefore she asked not to laugh at the despair of other people. Yunho said that if Ms. is in such despair, then she should have begged Mr. on her knees instead of threatening him out of pride. He said that she herself fell into a trap because of her words and actions. Yunho said that he wants to give advice to this lady not to try to deceive him. After all, if he wants, he can easily break her neck in one second. She said that if the gentleman harms her, then he can forget about his safety once and for all. Surin said that the master of formations Jangda Yaja did a very good job on the room in which they are now. She said that it doesn't matter how talented Yunho is because he won't be able to survive in this room which is filled with thousands of traps that will attack from different sides at the same time. Yunho asked this lady to stop threatening him and not to do anything stupid because there is no point in it anyway. She lowered her gaze and looked for a very long time at the guy who was sitting opposite her. She didn't understand where this man came from in her life. The shaman suddenly woke up because he heard the word trap and said that he wanted to tell this lady something. He said that when he entered this room he immediately saw a large number of traps and he decided to deactivate them so that they would not be accidentally activated. She looked at this boy and thought that he was completely crazy and he would hardly be able to break all the traps that were made by Master Jango alone. She realized that the only way to understand whether this boy was lying to her or telling the truth was to personally check whether the traps in this room worked or not. She opened the hidden lever that activates the traps and thought that if she had to die today, she would die along with these idiots. Surin began to slowly turn the lever and in order to activate the traps, she tried to do it so that her movement would be invisible. But when she activated these traps, nothing happened, they sat for several seconds and waited for at least one mechanism to work. The shaman said that he turned off all these traps and tried to explain this to the lady, but for some reason she still wanted to check it. Surin was very angry with this boy and said that this could not be because he could not turn off all these traps so quickly and alone. Yunho said that he initially warned the lady not to do this, but for some reason she decided to listen to him and do it her way. Yunho said that the lady just signed a death reprimand for herself and she chose the path of death instead of staying alive. Yunho said that all she can do now is just a quick dash forward to bite him. Surin was incredibly angry because this guy knew absolutely everything about her next actions and she didn't know how to defeat this guy. It was still night outside and the stars were very hard to see due to large clouds floating across the sky. The servant escorted the guests to the exit and suddenly he received a bag of money. Yunho said that this is money for food and alcohol. The servant replied that this money was too little and not enough to pay for all the drinks that were not drunk. Yunho asked this servant not to talk nonsense because they drank very little alcohol, this money is more than enough. He continued to explain to the guests that one bottle of wine costs 10 coins and asked the guests to be kind and add another 70 coins. After all, they drank 10 bottles. Surin said that everything is fine, these guests can be released because she gave them a big discount. She approached Yunho and said that she would take the missing amount from the nearest branch of the Supreme Coalition, so she asked the gentleman who stood in front of her to hurry up. Yunho said that after the resurrection, the lady is full of energy and looks very cheerful. Yunho began to walk into the distance and called his friend Lee Ryan. The boy was still drunk and did not understand well what had happened here. Therefore, he politely said goodbye to the lady and said that they would see each other again. The servant asked the lady if they really allowed him to leave. Surin replied that they had no other choice and letting them go was the best decision. The servant said that these people know who they are and that their clan is located in this place, so it would be better to send a person to spy on him. She said that this could only be resolved after she talked to Lord Amien. Surin said that it bothers her when the servant dictates to her what to do and he immediately lowered his head and apologized to the mistress for his insolence. 
She watched the unexpected guests slowly walk away into the distance and realized that this guy gave her a lot of problems. Surin returned to her room and suddenly a warrior came to her to inform her of the situation. She listened to everything he told her and was very dissatisfied with his answer. He said that this guy noticed his presence immediately when he entered the room. He said that Yunho directed his killing aura directly at him as a warning to make him understand the strength of his abilities. The warrior said that before the lady hired him, he had dealt with many martial artists but had never felt such a terrifying aura. She said that it all sounded very strange and she, too, had never seen anything like it because it was some kind of nonsense. Surin said that the Gu warrior who is now sitting in front of her is the strongest martial artist of the Hao clan and he is the captain of the Dark Squad and did not understand how such a strong warrior could claim that he could not even take a step into this guy's room because he was stunned by the murderous aura. Gu said that there was another reason why he did not enter the room and the lady immediately asked what exactly that reason was. Gu said that this gentleman knows how to use immaterial qi energy and this martial art is not even Gu's body. She listened as he spoke to me and how this gentleman naturally used this energy to punish the courtesans for their charm technique. Gu said that this gentleman is a level higher than anyone they can imagine and he thinks that Yunho is as strong as the 24 strongest martial artists. He guessed that this guy might be even stronger than these great martial artists. She was very surprised when she heard this and could not believe that such strong warriors exist in this world. Is it possible for a boy his age to be so strong? Gu replied that if he takes into account examples from the past and present, it is quite possible. Surin understood that she had contacted a very scary person. After all, this guy has huge money and incredible power at such a young age. She remembered how he sat in front of her and laughed at her threats and then said that she and her entire clan were ordinary rats. He said that if the lady was in despair, she should have begged him on her knees for help instead of threatening him out of pride. She remembered his every word and even the moment when he said that she had just died and made a mistake. Surin didn't understand how such a guy could be an incredibly strong warrior. Surin asked Master Gu what he thought about this and what should they do with this guy now. Gu replied that a conflict with this guy could be very problematic for them and they should make friends with him no matter the cost before his name becomes known throughout the world. Surin heard the answer of the person whom she trusted most in this situation and thought that it would be very difficult to gain this guy's favor and she would have to humiliate herself for this. Yunho and his friend returned to the monk settlement on the mountain. Li Ryan asked his elder brother how he allowed the guards and the merchant to leave first and not wait for them. Yunho replied that he ordered them to go ahead because they still needed to buy supplies for the Supreme Coalition and therefore it was better for them to go first. Yunho said that this time they won't go home on foot. Li Ryan said that if this time the elder brother takes him with one hand and runs quickly, he will not agree to it. They were about to leave this place but suddenly heard a very familiar voice that asked them to stop. In front of them was the same guy who lost the battle and now looks crippled and injured. Lee asked this gentleman why he got out of his bed and why he came here because it was most likely very difficult for him to move. The guy came closer to them and said that he couldn't lie in bed for a long time, so come up to them before they left. Yunho said that he had a very long journey ahead of him and therefore asked this guy to speak faster what he wanted. He looked for several seconds at the gentleman who stood in front of him and smiled. He said that he got out of bed and came here with such wounds in order to say goodbye to thank the master for everything that he taught him during this time. He said that the master taught him to open his eyes to the new world of martial arts and he is incredibly grateful to him for this. Yunho replied that that's exactly what happened. Yunho said that people who look at this situation from the outside might think that he saved this guy's life. He started to leave because he didn't want to stay here anymore and called his friend to leave this place as soon as possible. Leek began to say goodbye to all the shamans who saw them off and asked the guy who stood with a wounded body in front of him to be more careful next time and take care of himself. Lee began to ask questions to his older brother and find out what happened between them. After all, this guy behaved very strangely and he did not understand why this guy decided to thank his older brother goodbye. He watched them go into the distance and thought that this gentleman actually asked his life. The day was gorgeous, there were a lot of white clouds in the sky and the weather was very warm. Yunho and Lee Ryan went to a restaurant to have something to eat and they ended up having a very tasty meal. Lee left this establishment and said that he had not eaten so deliciously for a very long time and his stomach was grateful to him that they had just dined on these delicious dishes. 
Yunho said that he didn't even think that hotel food in the middle of nowhere could be so delicious and the shaman agreed with his friend. Lee said that this food is much tastier compared to the food that shamans eat. Yunho said that he wasn't impressed with the food, but at least it was edible. Suddenly they saw something very strange ahead and stopped, they didn't even know how to react to it. Lady Surin stood next to the cart that brought her here and said that these lovely gentlemen looked so happy. She looked at them carefully so that they would not understand that she had a serious conversation with them and just like that. They could not ignore her. Lee said that he could barely recognize this lady and was delighted when he realized that she was the owner of the Moonless Pavilion. She said that apparently these two gentlemen are heading to the Supreme Coalition. Yunho immediately began to examine everything around this lady in order to understand the whole situation that was happening now and he noticed something very strange. Yunho saw that there was a man standing behind her who was trying to hide his face. It was the man who was watching him and hiding in the room. Yunho replied that they are actually returning home but they don't understand why is the lady asking them about this. Surin said that this is very good news and invited the two guys to go with her in the carriage because she has business in Wuhan and they need to go in the same direction. Lee said that it would be nice to sleep in the carriage because after he ate deliciously he really wanted to sleep. The shaman invited the elder brother not to refuse such kindness of this lady and to go with her. Yunho said that Lee looks very pathetic if he likes the way he looks then he can ride with this lady as much as he wants. Lee didn't understand why the older brother refused such kindness and decided to go on foot, because if they had gone on a carriage, he definitely wouldn't have grown horns from his ass. Yunho said that the horns have already grown. Surin is very upset because this gentleman refused her offer. She realized that it would be difficult, as always, to come to an agreement with him. She approached them and joined their company. She said that she also didn't like riding in carriages because it was very stuffy there. Surin said that she wanted to go with them because she was in no hurry and it would be interesting for her to take a walk in such an interesting company. Yunho asked this lady why did she decide that the two of them would walk to their house. Li Ryan realized that this moment has come and now he will have to endure a very long and uncomfortable journey in the arms of his older brother. Yunho took the baby in his arms and looked at the mistress's reaction because he was sure that she did not expect such a turn of events. He said that he has one more free hand, if the mistress wants to go with them, she can join. Surin was shocked by such a proposal and she didn't even know what to answer. I think Mr. Yunho said that the lady herself wanted to travel together and he could only offer this option. She replied that this was a very tempting offer, but she was a little unsatisfied with this option. Yunho began to slowly walk away or said that he had completely forgotten that if he touched the lady something very strange would happen to him. Surin began to get angry because she couldn't just trust this man and it would be very strange if he carried her in his arms. In the end, she had no other choice and she had to agree to such conditions, to see differently, she would have missed him and for this she would have lost her life. Surin understood that there was no turning back and decided to trust him. Because now her most important goal was to accompany him. Lee told the lady that from personal experience he can advise her to squint her eyes and breathe only through her nose and it's better not to open her mouth, otherwise the strong wind will dry it out too much. She looked at the shamans and thought that she was already embarrassed to death and couldn't imagine what else could be worse than this. Yunho said that if everyone is ready to hit the road then it's time for them to start their journey. He began to pick up speed and said that if they don't want to fall, then they better hold on tight. Yunho ran forward, picking up speed, and at some point he pushed off the ground to make a jump. The shaman and the lady at that moment were extremely unhappy with this situation, but they could not do anything. Gu was shocked when he saw the method of transportation this guy used to get to his home. There was a lot of fog in the mountains. Water seeped through large stones and boulders and flowed into the river. The lady felt very bad after the unusual way of moving and therefore at the next stop she had to go to a tree. The shaman watched the mistress's condition and waited for the moment when it would finally get better. He sat with a dissatisfied expression on his face and said that the first time people move in this way they always feel bad. She wiped her mouth with her hand and looked to the side, she was very embarrassed because they saw how bad she felt. The lady looked at this young gentleman and was surprised because she could not believe that all people of his level were able to move through the air at such speed. Yunho asked the lady if she was okay. She replied that the young gentleman didn't even break a sweat while I wasn't moving. Yunho said that he knew that everything would have turned out like this so he tried to run slowly. 
she wiped her mouth with her hand and thought that he was acting as if he cared about her. But despite this, he treated her like luggage all the way. Yunho said that it would be much better if she left a note for whoever is following them and he can slow down because their destination is the same. He said that due to the fact that this man would still not be able to catch up with him even if he put all his strength into it. This man is still trying. And he concluded that this man is either too loyal or a complete idiot. She was very surprised because this young gentleman found out that her partner was following them all the way. He actually ran after them all the way and tried to catch up with them. He ran several times slower than the young master, but nevertheless did not give up and continued to follow them. After half a day we were still able to get to the village. There were a lot of people in the village at that moment. They immediately went to the Supreme Coalition to report everything. The gentleman was very surprised when his son told him that he had come here with a guest. The father said that every time his son goes somewhere, he always brings guests with him. Yunho said that it doesn't happen on purpose. Yunho brought his lady to meet his father. The lady bowed and said that her name was Surin. She wanted to make a good first impression. The father was shocked and his son brought a woman from distant lands with him. He didn't understand why he chose her. Father said that his name is Hajin and he is very pleased to meet this lady. Surin realized that this young master did not deceive her and he is actually the son of the Lord of the Supreme Coalition. Hajin asked his servant to prepare the snacks because he was going to make a feast. Surin looked at the Lord and thought that the rumors about him were true and he actually makes a good impression of a kind and noble person. She looked at his son and realized that the boy was very different from his father. After some time, the servants brought snacks and made hot, delicious tea for the guests. The Lord asked this lady how she met his son. Surin was confused and didn't know what to answer because their acquaintance was actually unusual. Yunho said that they met this lady completely by chance, just like he met Lee Ryan on the street. Yunho said that they just talked about different things and on different topics and then she mentioned that she had business in Wuhan and he offered to accompany her. The Lord asked the lady if she had found a place to spend the night. Surin replied that she had just arrived in the city and had not yet found a suitable place. The Lord invited the lady to stay with them in the palace. She said it would most likely cause them inconvenience. He smiled and said that the guest was his son, this means that this guest of all their family, if she agrees, she can stay with them until she finishes her business in the city. She smiled and bowed to the Lord after that she thanked him for his hospitality. Surin thought that she didn't know how to ask to come to their palace in order to live here, but in fact everything turned out to be very simple. She looked at the young master and thought that despite his carelessness when meeting her and the way they provided housing without any suspicion, the lord must really trust his son. The vice lord ran very quickly along the corridor and wanted to tell important news. He tried to find the gentleman as quickly as possible in order to inform him. When he saw the lord, he shouted very loudly to the master that they had a problem. But only a few seconds later he noticed that the gentleman was not alone now and he was sitting at the table surrounded by two guests of his son. Ha Jin informed the vice lord that he need not worry and this girl is his son's guest. The vice lord informed the gentleman that three people had died in the Honam branch. Ha Jin said that these scoundrels have crossed the line and there is no going back. Yunho at that moment had his blackout, washed it down with tea and thought that this all sounds like a joke. Surin asked about Mr. Is he really talking about the king of the forest from Hyunsa Mountain? Ha Jin asked the lady how she found out about this. At that moment she looked at him with a serious look. Yunho smiled when you heard that Surin decided to interfere in matters and get involved. Surin said that she heard that recently the king of the forest, Jean Sachik, decided to do business in the city and most likely this was the cause of the conflict between the Supreme Coalition and the king of the forest. She asked the lords did he try to negotiate with these people. She said that given the character of the king of the forest, it is very difficult. He looked at her in surprise and didn't even know what to answer. The vice lord said that from the very beginning they did not try to come to an agreement, but the king of the forest refused, so their proposal. The lady replied that it was expected. She said that since this is their first business, they may not think that agreeing to negotiate from the very beginning could harm their reputation. The vice lord answered her that after the refusal they did not make contact at all and they took measures that from now on it was impossible to take even a step on their mountain territory. 
Surin asked the vice lords are these bandits using formations? Ha Jin said that this is exactly what is happening and these people are using such a petty method to avoid contact with them and resorting to such vile actions to drive them away from Honam. Lee said that if it's about the art of information, then he can help with something. He smiled and said that if the lord trusted him in this case, he could solve their problem. Ha Jin said that the little shaman talked about traveling around the country to study and explore the ways of the teachings of Tao. He asked how the shaman was going to help. Yun Ho smiled and said that he could vouch for Li Ryan's skill in this area and he had never seen any suitable candidates better than him. Yun Ho said that he himself saw how the shaman eliminated Gu Yaja's high-level traps. The lord and vice lord were shocked and they heard this information, they could not believe that this little shaman was able to eliminate the traps of such a great engineer. Surin understood that the young master was now mocking her. The shaman said that he would definitely help the lord. After all, it was thanks to them that he was able to fulfill his dream and visit the shaman clan. Li Ryan said that although his skills may not be as good as those who do this on a regular basis, he will definitely help in any way he can to the lord and his family. And Surin asked the lord his opinion about pulling out the king of the forest so that he could show himself. She smiled and said that she thought that in that case it would be much easier to talk with him and discuss matters. The Lord said that it would be very good. She replied that she has several ways to do this. Ha Jin was very surprised when he heard such words from her and he realized that this was an unusual girl. Yun Ho asked the lady if the help of the Supreme Coalition would be too burdensome for her. He smiled and said that if they follow her advice and the situation only gets worse, Surin will personally be responsible for his advice and mistakes. Surin said that she doesn't think it's good not to help a close friend because she's worried about the future. Yunho asked her have they become such close friends already. Surin asked him in response, aren't they still best friends? The sun slowly set behind the horizon and evening came. He ran for a very long time trying to catch up with them and decided to stop to catch his breath. He stopped in the middle of the forest and you decide sometimes you need to stop because it will be very difficult to catch up with these guys. The Lord said very loudly that these scoundrels had been walking on the edge of his patience for a long time. He said that they forgave these criminals for using force to intimidate, but in this case he cannot forgive them because people suffered. Ha Jin said that they have crossed the final line and their actions are completely unacceptable. The Vice Lord replied that there was a pretext for this step. The Lord asked the Vice Lord. Is he really talking about the very act that Yun Ho committed when he single-handedly attacked the Aso group? Vitya Lord replied that it is this act that he is talking about now. He said that the Aso group is also to blame for what happened that day, but their position is not represented by the entire green forest. Ha Jin said that apparently the king of the forest considers Yunho's attempt to change the traditions of their gangster group to be a big problem. He lowered his eyes and had to think about what to do with this bandit group. He smiled and said that it was still hard for him to believe that his son would do such an incredible act. Ha Jin said that his son was bedridden and began to study martial arts only five years ago, he is already capable of destroying a large gang alone. The vice lord said that there is no need to pretend and pretend that the master does not know about the strength of young master Yunho. He said that he would need to talk to his son about this. He smiled and said that he was both excited and concerned about his son's strength. He didn't know what was best for his son and whether he should move on or be careful. Yunho lay on his bed all night and couldn't sleep, he looked at the ceiling and thought about a lot. He only now realized that the king of the forest was putting obstacles for business and his father because Yunho destroyed the Aso gang. There was a lot of fog in the valley since the morning. This fog fell on the roofs of houses and filled the entire space. Since the very morning, Yunho has been meditating and doing practices to concentrate the restoration of internal energy. He was sitting on the ground in the lotus position with his eyes closed. He tried to focus on only one task and throw away unnecessary thoughts and his heads. In front of him stood stone blocks arranged in a semicircle. These blocks stood right in front of him and created a wall. All he thought was that he would need to concentrate on these blocks in order to try his new superpower. Suddenly the blocks began to shake and move in different directions. At some point you grow so fast that you start to fall. He continued to concentrate on these blocks and focus all his attention only on them. Suddenly he created a very fast strong energy wave that quickly flew towards these blocks. Suddenly, an energy wave hit one of the stone blocks and threw it aside. He immediately created a new wave in order to shoot at the block again. 
The stone flew away again after a powerful shot. Yunho raised his hand up in a slow motion. He made a circular motion with his hand, a very strong energy flow of wind. Suddenly the blocks flew into the air after being hit by an energy wave. He opened his eyes and saw that the stone blocks had flown off into the far wall and he managed to do a good workout. He stretched his fingers and yawned very loudly after finishing his workout. There were a lot of white clouds in the sky that floated across the sky. Yunho lay on the roof of the house and looked at these clouds, thinking only that he really liked being at home. He said that when you are at home, you can calmly lie down and stretch out in different directions, after that you will eat boring food, get hungry, and then sleep. But the most important thing is that you don't need to fight with anyone. He smiled and thought that when he first woke up in this body, he was confused and did not understand what he needed to do next and in truth he wanted to beat this god for sending him to such a weak matter. He looked at the sky and thought that all this was a great choice and now he understands that God sent him to this body for a reason. Li Ryan sat and thoughtfully looked at the map that lay in front of him. He said that the layout of this building was vulnerable to attack from the outside and he proposed to use this vulnerability as his advantage. He said that when I don't invade their lair, they can use a strategy that will prevent them from escaping. Yunho stood near the door and listened attentively to Cavus Lord and his friend talking about how to break into the publication. They did not notice how the young master entered the room and were very surprised when they saw him. Lee Ryan said that he is dealing with this building and coming up with a strategy for the Supreme Coalition. The young master asked why he was suddenly so interested in this matter. Lee Ryan looked at the young master in surprise and asked him. Didn't he hear the news? Yunho looked at his little friend in surprise and I thought that he was most likely the only person who had not heard the news this morning. Yunho went to the young lady to discuss this matter with her. Surin said that there is no need to take the divine thief lightly because this time she even robbed the Sambi Association. Yunho asked with contempt in his voice is it really that serious? Yunho looked at her and thought that from the moment she arrived here, she behaves as if she became a member of the family and interferes in everything. Surin said that these true professionals are quite enough for a transcendental level master. Yunho was thinking that yesterday even you little sister called this young mistress her little sister and hovered around her all the time. He immediately realized that the lady was up to something and would need to be constantly monitored. Surin reported that the Sanfi Association is one of the four great associations of the Central Plains. The Lord said that they depend on the Mayan family and therefore it is very strange to him that such an incident happened. Surin said that most likely the Moyan family and the Muram alliance will lose face after such an incident and they must be in panic now. She looked at the master and said that in the near future they might ask for cooperation from trade associations in the case of the divine thief. The Lord said that it is impossible to hide more than one secret from the young lady. He said that this morning he received a letter from the Muram Alliance and it said that they would send an investigator to look into this matter. Yunho said that this is the reason why his father asked the shaman to check the building's defenses. It became clear to him that his father did this in case the thief could get into the palace. The Lord said that after what happened in the association, it is impossible to underestimate this thief and we need to take him extremely seriously. He said that they are one of those through whom huge amounts of money pass. Surin said that perhaps this thief has already made his move and the reason why the Alliance is sending an investigator is because they also believe that the chances of a thief appearing in the Supreme Coalition are very high. Surin asked the Lord if they had consulted the Emperor about this issue. At that moment, Yunho began to laugh very loudly and demonstratively show his attitude towards her question. Yunho said that it was very funny to listen to but it's time for her to stop scaring his father and he said that he was very surprised that she was causing so much fuss and would try something that doesn't concern her. Yunho asked his father what is the most important task with this thief. The Lord replied that he must be caught at any cost. Yunho said that if this is the main problem then he will just go and grab this thief and it doesn't matter at all whether this thief is a good warrior or a powerful opponent. The sister looked at her brother smiled and said that sometimes she thought it would be nice to have a sister. She said that Sister Surin knows a lot of different information and she is very smart. She said that she was very glad that this girl treated her warmly, like a sister. Yunho said that the lady is just fooling her. Yunho said that Surin is a very cold and calculating woman. The sister asked her brother why did he bring her to their home if he spoke so poorly to them. He replied that he did not bring her. 
Yunho said that it was the lady who followed him of her own free will and no one forced her. The sister smiled and said that the reason why this girl followed him was because she liked her older brother. Yunho said that they would never believe this nonsense in their life. Yumi smiled and said that it might all seem strange, but since she followed him, at least she finds Yunho interesting. Yunho tried to explain to his sister that the lady followed him not because she found him interesting or attractive. He said that the whole point is that Surin became interested in his great strength. Yumi smiled and said that everything is not like that at all and she finds her brother interesting because of his strength. Yumi suggested that Surin's sister is even thinking about marrying her brother. Yunho approached the central gate of the palace and reported that he had safely escorted his sister to the academy. He turned his head to the side and saw that some people were approaching him. Yunho asked his assistant are there really such a large number of people here at this time? The assistant replied that a lot of people had come because the east and west gates were closed. Yunho asked you is this related to the divine thief? The assistant replied that this was all being done because of this thief. He looked at the people and said that external security had been strengthened, the number of internal patrols had been increased, and now they were even checking the luggage and personal belongings of anyone who seemed suspicious. Yunho said that they have a lot of problems and for one unfortunate thief. The assistant smiled and said that they could not do anything because he was an unusual thief. Yunho thought that it would be better to just let this thief in and deal with him instead of preparing so much before his invasion. The Lord said that they are unable to catch him because they do not know his appearance and do not know his whereabouts. Surin asked the gentleman to wait and watch what would happen in the near future because the Muram Alliance informed them about sending an investigator. Yunho was angry because the young lady he brought here captured even his father. A security guard stopped a man passing by and ordered him to show what was in the bag. The man stopped and asked the security guard. Is it really him who just turned to him? Yunho watched this man incredulously. He opened his bag and showed what was inside. He said that these were soybeans grown on his land. He adjusted his hat and said that he brought them here to see if he could sell them for a higher price. The guard realized that there was nothing dangerous inside the bag and allowed the man to go inside. Yunho continued to look at this man in disbelief and suspected something about him. This man slowly continued to walk forward. Yunho looked at it and tried to find something interesting. He paid attention to his feet. Yunho noticed something suspicious in his gait and immediately drew attention to it. He thought that this man's stride was too long for a farmer. The man went to the building on which hung a sign that said granary. The merchant picked up the seeds and said that they were excellent size and color. He said that if a man wants to sell only this bag, then he can get 10 coins for it, but if there are more bags, then the merchant is willing to pay 12 coins per bag. This man walked out of the building and adjusted his hat. He looked around and tried to understand if something was suspicious around him. Near the gate there were two guards standing behind all the people who passed by them. A man was walking and holding a bag in his hands. He walked accompanied by one of the guards and immediately headed towards the gate. The man with the suitcase told the guards that he was carrying the total sales volume for that morning and the guards let him inside. At that moment, the straw hat man stood near the column and watched him. He thought that this man is now carrying a suitcase with money, you are the vault of the Supreme Coalition. Security guard asked the man who tried to get through, which brewery is he from? The man replied that he was from the Heavenly Valley Brewery and the security guard had already asked him about it the other day. People walked along the city streets and went into different shops to buy food or some goods. He walked along the street and tried not to attract too much attention to himself. Suddenly he turned into an alley and walked along this alley. He went to the cable wall and pulled out a brick from the wall. He stood for several minutes near this wall with his back turned towards the street. He put some piece of paper in the hole where the brick used to be. After that, he returned the brick place and did everything so that no one would suspect that this brick could be pulled out. Yunho was standing on the roof of the building at that moment and watching this man. The man suddenly heard a strange sound behind him and was surprised because no one should have been there. Yunho jumped off the roof and made it clear to this man that he was not alone here. Yunho pulled a brick out of the wall and told this guy that he had a very strange gait and didn't look like a farmer, and that he had also been hanging around the Supreme Coalition storage facility for too long. Yunho took out a piece of paper from the wall and read the inscription, it said that we need to meet at the Supreme Coalition tonight. Yunho turned her head towards him and asked this guy what he was going to do tonight. 
This guy replied that he absolutely does not know what this gentleman is talking about. After that, he began to run away very quickly and tried to run at such a speed that they could not catch up with him. Yunho landed in front of him and very quickly blocked his path so that he could not escape. Yunho said that only fish forget what they do a few seconds ago, this guy definitely couldn't forget that he just put a note on the wall. This guy made a dissatisfied expression on his face and thought that he had no equal in his escape skills, but this guy was able to stop him. Yunho said that this guy is not as impressive as the rumors say about him, but his skills are actually quite good. The man replied that he is not the thief they are yet. Yunho asked this man was he scared because he was caught. Yunho said that he never called this man a thief and for him it is strange that this man just called himself that. The thief made several jumps from side to side and pushed off the walls in order to escape. During the flight, he felt some strange sensations. He saw that they grabbed him by the leg and did not allow him to move further. Yunho asked Var, will he tell everything himself or assume for beating? The thief looked at this guy with a frightened look and did not understand what to do next. Ha Jin saw that a new guest had arrived at their palace and greeted him. He smiled and said that the guests should have informed about their arrival in advance and then they would have been greeted properly. Guest asked the Lord didn't he receive the letters that were sent to him in advance? He smiled and said that his name was Chu Guanga and he came here not as the elder of the beggar section, but as an investigator of whom the Muram Alliance sent. The Lord asked about the elders. Has he really started working as an investigator? Chu Guanga replied that he is the best in finding people in the central plain. The Lord thought that they sent not just anyone but an entire elder of the beggar sect as an investigator. The Lord thought that Lady Surin was right when she said that it was you who the incident greatly hurt the pride of the Muram Alliance. Surin asked her partner how confident he was in his words. He replied that he was absolutely sure of this and all three witnesses named the same time and place. Surin said that she felt that someone was behind this, but did not think that such a figure would be involved in the case. He asked if the lady from the general public was talking about this young gentleman, the Supreme Coalition. He said that if she didn't do this, his sword might turn against them. She said that they had already crossed the line by sticking their nose into this matter and therefore he had better stick to his original goals. He looked at the mistress with a dissatisfied look and did not know what to answer her. He said that although it may sound rude, he still wants to ask a question. He said that he wanted to ask about the relationship that she wants to build with the young master. The elder said that the beggar sect had been watching him for a long time. The elder said that their surveillance team had encountered this thief more than once. The Lord asked how the progress was going. The elder said that he was ashamed to admit, but every attempt they made to catch this thief failed, but nevertheless it was not in vain. The elder said that in terms of maneuverability, the divine thief has no equal, but he lacks combat skills. The Lord said that based on this information they planned to take countermeasures in the territories of the Supreme Coalition where he might appear. The elder said that he did not think that anyone outside the beggar sect would find out this information and asked him to tell how the master knew about it and was able to plan everything. Suddenly he heard the voice of a woman who entered the room and greeted Mr. Surin said that she did not know that the Lord had guests today. Surin suddenly realized that this was the same old effect and beggars and her facial expression changed dramatically. The elder was also not happy to see this girl. He pointed at her with his hand and said that now it became clear to him who told the Lord all this information about the divine thief. Surin just now I realized that the Muram Alliance sent this old man here as an investigator and I didn't like it at all. The elder asked Mr. Lord to immediately throw this woman out the door and never let her in again because this woman is the head of a malicious dirty sect. The Lord said that this woman is his guest and he cannot throw her out the door. The elder asked the Lord how such a cold-blooded, terrible and shameless woman could be his guests. Lodget asked the elder to calm down. Ha Jin smiled and said that he knows who these women are and yet he insists that she is his guest. Ha Jin said that the respected elder should treat his guests with respect no matter who they are or what their relationship is. The elder was dissatisfied with the Lord's words, but nevertheless he could not do anything about it because now he was on his territory. Surin understood that one day she would have to reveal her identity and talk about who she was, but she was afraid that after that the Lord would kick her out of the house. She looked at him and thought that even after he found out who she was, he turned away from her, this confirms that a gentleman always remains a gentleman. Surin thought that if she had such a father-in-law, she might even think about marrying the young master. 
The elder said that he is still dissatisfied with the fact that this woman lives here, but he has no right to change anything. He said that they should prepare well, because even with increased security, new loopholes may appear and he will send a request for several martial artists so that they have more hands. Surin said that she heard that many strong experts were in the Sanfi Association during the theft, which did not help at all in that situation. She asked, is it worth wasting effort on such little things now? Surin said that the Supreme Coalition has masters who are not inferior in skills to people from the Alliance, there are those who have excellent combat skills as well as strategic ones. She said that there are still two people who are excellent at both. She tried to say that no one else is needed here because there will be no help from them. The gentleman asked. Does she really want to offer only two? Surin apologized to the Lord for not being able to tell him about this earlier. The Lord said that he means something completely different. He wants to know who these two are. Surin said that I am one of them, the young master, and the second is the master of the shadow detachment under her command, Gu Hui. Ha Jin thought that he couldn't believe that his son was so good and everyone was responding so well about his ability. The elder said that the young master is no different from a novice master in comparison with the great master from the shadow detachment, and apparently, due to lack of experience, the head of the clan made hasty conclusions. Surin was thinking that it seems they still don't know what the young master is really capable of. The elder said that he does not belittle the young master's abilities, but nevertheless, this is his opinion. The elder said that even if he wanted to, he could not trust the words of this woman and her information. The elder said that it seems to him that the goal of the divine thief is not money at all. Surin said that most likely the goal of the divine thief is not even glory because in that case he would not be hiding. The elder smiled and said that most likely the lady was able to find out something and asked if she understood what was behind it. The Lord said that he had completely lost the thread of the conversation and asked him to explain everything to him in more detail. The elder explained that the whole truth is that they stole very little valuables during the robbery of the Sanfi Association, but rumors greatly exaggerated this and spread quickly. The elder said that this caused panic among investors because their money was invested in the association and as a result they began to withdraw their funds from it. He smiled and said that he believed that the goal of whoever was behind all this was investor confidence. The elder said that with such a trick he forced them to withdraw money from the association and the trust of people was undermined. The Lord asked who was behind this case, a question mark, a crack, and answered that they still don't know. The elder said that after the withdrawal of money, they will begin to invest it in another place and in this way they will be able to gradually reveal who exactly did it and where they were redirected. Surin said that this is a very weak method of just waiting until the criminal reveals himself. The elder told the lady to take this network too lightly and she doesn't even know who is behind it. He said that it is very strange that she does not know who this person is because the Hao clan has the best intelligence in the whole world and compared to the sect and the beggars they are still completely newbies. Surin looked at the elder with a dissatisfied look and listened to him laugh and look straight at her. She said that recently a secret meeting of the unorthodox faction and Nanman representatives took place in the Hao clan tavern and she still does not know the details of this meeting. She said that we were talking about the leader of the orthodox faction, Mu Sung, and tried to prove to the Lord that she was sure that this person was behind the divine thief. He looked at the lady in surprise and thought that Alexei's nerve the faction involved in this case would greatly change the course of events. The elder looked at her in surprise and didn't know what to say. Yunho grabbed this robber by the ear and started torturing him. Yunho asked him about Mu Sung, who was a member of the Neurotadex faction. The thief replied that this man gave the order to rob their coalition. Yunho asked why rob the Supreme Coalition if she is not involved in it. He didn't want to say this information but his ear hurt really bad. Suddenly he felt incredibly strong pain and his face turned green. He let go of this guy's ear and let him fall to the ground. Yunho asked this guy what happened to him and hoped that he had not died yet. At that moment, a masked man was standing behind him. This masked man said she gave him poison because she thought he wouldn't be able to keep his mouth shut. He said that he would not allow this thief Yang Jin to calmly tell about those secrets and after that still stay alive. He had a wooden structure in his hands from which he fired a poison shot. Yang Jin feels very strong pain due to the fact that I spread throughout his body very quickly. Yunho understood that these people were most likely the ones who hired this person. The old man said that Gu poison is a means of dominating others and is considered the most deadly poison in China. 
He said that these types of poison are used in pairs like a female and a male, and despite the distance between them, if one feels pain, then the other will feel it too. Poison goo is used to control a person and often one parasite was planted in the human body and the second parasite was crushed and then both creatures felt the pain. He said that as soon as one parasite felt pain, the second parasite in the human body began to torment him and the person experiences incredible pain from the creature that was injected into his blood and I cannot describe this pain in words. Yunho said that the rice tasted very wet. At that moment he was holding stones on his head. Yunho asked the old man. Does he really want to discuss such things over food? The old man replied that he liked the taste. Yunho thought there that after I get into a person's body, he dies in agony or commits suicide and they say that they are exploited to the very end and then they meet a miserable death. Yunho said that he would not take this rubbish on his own, I know that in the end he will die. He said that from the current situation he can assume that he is not working with him of his own free will. He asked this gentleman if he thought the same. Yunho smiled and said that it doesn't matter anymore. Yunho said that this is all just because this guy is more pleasant to talk to than the people who are standing opposite him. Yunho spread his hands to the side and said that they can wait a little and stop his suffering for a while, because if I don't continue, he'll die now. The masked man said that the guy in front of them is a crazy idiot. He said that this guy had heard the name of their master and he could cause a lot of problems and troubles for them. The boss ordered his ninja to attack him and kill him immediately. Yunho said that if they die now they shouldn't blame him and he suggested that they discuss everything in the peaceful key. The ninja jumped and swung his blade to attack him. Yunho dodged the blow of this blade and realized that they were serious about killing him. Yunho immediately realized that these people were aiming at his acupuncture points on his neck and he knew that the methods of criminals were different from the righteous factions. Yunho smiled and thought that he needed to fight back against these guys. He wanted to mock these opponents before they realized his true strength and so he tried to hit this guy on the head with his fingers. He hit his opponent on the forehead with his finger and the opponent flew to the side. Another ninja was jumping and wanted to strike from above with his knife. Yunho looked at his enemy's knife and realized that he was already too close, but nevertheless he was unlikely to be able to break through his defense. Yunho used an energy barrier that did not allow anyone to get too close and pass his protection. Yunho asked the ninja, is this the first time he has seen such energy protection? Some strange sounds were heard on the roof of the building. Suddenly the ninja flew into the air and flew over the roof. He hit the surface of the roof with his back and fell down. His partner turned his head back and saw that the ninja had just hit his head on the ground. Yunho ordered the guy in the mask who stood in front of him to give him this very thing. Yunho realized that the enemy was not going to give him this thing just like that and had to hit him. The object flew into the air and cooled down only to catch it with your hand. Yunho was surprised that all this fuss around was connected only with an object that was smaller in size than his fist. He said that if I had not given him this item right away, no problems would have arisen. When he opened the wooden lid in the form of a crushed caterpillar and realized that it had already died and splashed out all the poison, Yunho turned his head back and asked the thief who was lying on the ground, was he alive or had he already died? The thief asked for forgiveness for the fact that he could no longer endure this pain and asked the master to kill him immediately. Yunho said that I'll try to do something now in order to save him, but if he doesn't succeed, the thief will die anyway and therefore he just needs to shut up now and endure. Yunho touched life with his fingers on important points and organs on his body. He said that he couldn't do anything against the released poison, but if he could lock the poisonous creature in gloves made of chi energy before it released the poison, they would ask him. He tried to find this creature inside his body. He looked for it inside the body but could not understand where exactly it was located. Suddenly I felt movement inside the body and realized that it was a caterpillar somewhere here. Yunho said that he finally managed to find. He understood that she would soon die and he needed to hurry so that this thief did not die. He tried to hide her in an energy trap that would not allow her poison to spread throughout the body. He hid it and it no longer harmed the wearer. Yunho said that it was already too close and just kill him. Yunho said that he managed to block her before she died and released her. The thief asked him. Does this mean that he will not die? Yunho said that now all that remains is to get her out of his body. Yunho realized that it would not be as easy as it might seem at first glance and this situation confused him. He looked at this thief and thought that he needed to find out when he last went to the toilet. Jan Gwag said that he last went to the toilet two days ago.
Yun Ho asked how many times he ate after that. Yang replied that he had eaten about three times recently, but he didn't understand why this guy was asking him about such things. Yun Ho asked this guy to artificially call for work. Yun Ho said that this caterpillar is in the body itself and a lot of different food will come out with it. There were a lot of clouds in the sky. Yang bowed to the gentleman who saved you and thanked him for not letting him die. Jan asked this gentleman how can he thank him for saving his life. Yun Ho replied that he can repay this right now. Yun Ho said that he still hasn't heard the answer to the question he asked him in the alley and he wants to know the reason for the robbery of the Supreme Coalition. Yang said that he does not know the reason why they want to rob the Supreme Coalition. Yun Ho was unhappy with this answer. Ian said that he actually didn't know anything, and he didn't even know anything about the robbery of the previous association and simply followed the order. Yun Ho said that this is not at all what he wanted to hear. But before that, he was the one who was insulted by that creature. Why did they try to get rid of him? Yun Ho asked him if he knew the location of coal garbage. Ian replied that he knew this information. Yun Ho said that this was more positive news and ordered him to be taken to this place immediately. Yun Ho said that these people were the first to attack the Supreme Coalition and he doesn't care about the reasons, but they will answer for it to him. Yang asked the young master is he seriously going to do this? Yun Ho replied that he never jokes in such matters. Yang thought that this guy had gone crazy, his rival, one of the 24 strongest warriors in and the king of death, Cole Garbage. He thought this guy was looking for death, but he didn't understand why this guy was so confident that he could deal with him alone. He put his hand on his stomach and said that I don't even understand what the motivation for this exercise is. Well, if it weren't for him, he would have already died from poison. Yang said that the gentleman needs to follow him, after which he began to run forward. Yun Ho thought that this guy is actually very fast. Yun Ho said that it is very inconvenient to run when you don't need to drag anyone on top. Some strange sounds were heard near the castle. The warrior said that it was a great honor for them to meet with the Supreme Master of the Central Plains, Cole Musen. He smiled and said that the Supreme Master is a very funny nickname for him. Cole said that all people from the South know how to throw around empty words. The warrior asked the Supreme Master. Doesn't he believe in the sincerity of their word? He asked to refrain from making such accusations. Cole asked them not to address him from now on in front of the king of the forest either. The warrior looked at the gentleman in surprise, I thought that nothing good could be expected if they insulted the representatives of the king of the forest. Cole said that this is not an unreasonable request, because they are sailing in the same boat and he is afraid that they will end if they offend the king of the forest. The warrior said that they were very sorry, but because of their position they could not do this. Chul said that this is exactly what he is telling them about. Chul looked down on them and said that they should clarify their position even if it offends him but he does not promise that he will not cut their throats. The wolf felt hostility from this gentleman and began to growl at him. The wolf began to bare his teeth and wanted to attack this gentleman in order to attack him and protect his master. The warrior ordered his wolf to stop and calm down. The guards kept the wolves on a leash and did not allow them to approach the master. He said that Chul's jokes went too far and suggested that he speak in a peaceful manner to avoid misunderstandings. Cole said that as I expected from the wild animals of the south, they are completely different and are not afraid to bear their fangs, no matter who their opponent is. He raised his hand up and said that the wild beasts of the south came to check him the first time and because they are loyal to their masters and he apologizes if he went too far. The warrior thought that they had united for the purpose of invading the central plains and nothing more. And despite the fact that he was not the one with whom he would cooperate, but he had to endure it. Yang pointed to the castle with his hand and said that the fortress of the non-orthodox Iron Blood faction is over there. He said that Musong is located in the very center of this fortress and it is guarded by about a hundred martial artists. Yang said that there might even be real Nan Man masters there, and in that case he might have to confront their wild beasts. Yun Ho said it all sounds like a lot of fun. He asked his guide. Will he really stand here and miss all the fun? Yun Ho flew down very quickly and thought that soon he would have to fight with interesting opponents. Ian said that this guy is definitely out of his mind to say that this is all very funny. The wolves calmed down and lay down on the stone steps, awaiting a new order from their masters. Cole said that they were doing well and now if Yang Jintai quickly robs the Supreme Coalition and the Golden Association, even more people will come to take their money from there. The warrior said that even after returning the money, 
their worries will not go away and the thief has still not been caught. Cole said that when because of their three they completely lose trust in the four main associations, in that case, according to their plan, they will create a new association. Chul said that they would have to impale young Jidi's head. The warrior said that then it would be the safest association that could deal even with the divine thief and it would also be guarded by the faithful animal's nanny man. He turned his head towards the gentleman and said that he would have to make it clear that their wild animals play an important role even now in the association and in this case everyone will quickly run to invest their money there. Chul said that it was obvious and he always thought that the wild animals of the south were the best in their field. Chul smiled and said that soon they will have a lot of work and the end of the era of four-headed associations will mark the beginning of the era of the Iron Monsoon. At that moment, very loud sounds of falling and screams of people were heard in the building. Cole immediately drew his attention to these strange sounds. He ordered his servant to immediately go and check what was happening in the building and why it was so noisy today. The guards were surprised when they looked at the big gate and saw that this gate was shaking. They didn't understand what was happening to the guys who were outside. Yunho swung his fist to make a powerful punch. Every time he hit the big gate with his fist, it shook and cracked. The guards understood what kind of monster was now standing behind the doors and breaking them from the outside. Yunho continued to hit this gate with his fist and said that these guys built very strong doors. Yunho dealt the final blow and the doors broke out of their hinges. The guards were shocked. What is this even possible? They jumped in different directions so that the doors wouldn't fall on them. Yunho stood in the doorway and they couldn't see him because there was smoke and dust all around and only his dark silhouette was visible. Yunho asked where such a strong door appeared in the bandit's lair that cannot be broken through with ten blows. Yang said that the Green Forest and the Iron Blood Fortress are the heart of the unorthodox faction and they are head and shoulders above the ordinary bandits. Yunho said that this is some kind of nonsense and he will never believe that these bandits are so cool. He said that in the end thieves are thieves. Yunho approached one of the guards and said that this is an ordinary guy whose legs tremble at the sight of him. Yunho accelerated and kicked him in the face with all his strength and the guard received very heavy damage. This guard flew several meters back after being hit in the face. The guard said that they need to immediately kill this guy and show him what they are capable of because he has completely lost the edge of reality. Yunho realized his head was up and saw that the opponents had just taken off into the air. He smiled and used his inner energy, he was wondering that I could not oppose him. He again used his internal energy to create an energy barrier and his opponents were unable to break through his defenses. Yunho said that if I don't survive this battle, he advises them to live a good life after this. Chul was shocked and the servant told him that all this noise in the castle was because of one guy. Cole shouted that he ordered to subdue this guy, but he was informed that he had unusual skills. Cole asked his security guard, does he really want to ruin his reputation in front of the guests who came to communicate about serious issues? He pointed his hand forward and ordered to grab this guy immediately before the banquet began and deprive him of his head. Suddenly another guy appeared and said that he wanted to go and deal with this enemy personally. He said that he would return a little later and meet him in the banquet hall after he beheaded this guy. Ian still couldn't believe his eyes and he was shocked when I saw how this guy destroys opponents. He looked at the warriors who were lying on the ground and in his chest there was a sword sticking out that Yunho stuck into him. He looked the other way. He saw that on the other side there were also opponents lying and many of them were bleeding and killed, and some were seriously injured. At that moment, he thought that the young master was not lying when he said that this battle was just a fun game for him. He looked ahead and thought that this guy was actually really crazy. At that moment, one of the guards ran towards him, swinging his sword and trying to strike him. Yunho extended his hand forward towards the blade approaching him. Yunho hit him on the leg with his finger and the opponent felt very strong pain in his knee. Yunho was able to throw the enemy back with one hand and saw that new enemies were approaching him at that moment. His opponents hit him in the chest with their swords, but they didn't succeed because he had energy protection in front of him. Yunho said that they won't be able to win this way. He released internal chi energy and pushed those opponents back. The guard said that this is impossible, he can believe his eyes because not a single blade can penetrate this guy's defense. Yunho jumped, raised his fist to strike and said that these guys are just weaklings. Yunho kept knocking down his opponents and he played with them like training dolls. 
The guard thought that this enemy was too strong for them and he had not even drawn his sword yet and was dealing with them using only his fists. Yun Ho put his hand forward and ordered them to immediately get out of the way and in this case they would live. They did not listen to his word and continued to attack him, it was all useless and each of their attacks failed and they received incredibly powerful damage. Yun Ho used the power of energy to make an explosion near them and after this explosion they did not scatter in different directions. The warriors couldn't believe that one guy could destroy an entire crowd of opponents. They looked at him and shouted that this could not be and that he was capable of using even the energy explosion technique and that he was a real demon in the flesh. Yun Ho thought that this was all reminiscent of the time when he entered the lair of those ant monsters. Yun Ho smiled and thought that if he remembers correctly, it took him two days to deal with their endless horde and their queen immediately bowed her head as soon as she saw him. They shouted at the same place if they die they must not allow this enemy to enter the territory of their castle any further and therefore they must lay down their lives in order to stop him. Yun Ho continued to push through this crowd. Yun Ho continued to push them aside with the help of his energy, he destroyed the opponents who were trying to create a wall from their bodies. Yun Ho said that their efforts are pointless and this all looks very funny and until he meets Kol Musang he will not take a step back. Yun Ho continued to take those confident steps forward. Yun Ho made very strong energy explosions, after this explosion the enemies scattered in different directions. He laughed and felt the chaos that was happening around him and a feeling of excitement awoke in him and he wanted to create even more chaos in this place. But suddenly he saw a bright flash in the sky that was rapidly approaching him. Yun Ho realized that among these warriors there was some real professional who masterfully wielded a sword and was able to throw his blade at him. He fought off this sword with the help of his protective energy. Yun Ho saw how this blade ricocheted from his defense and flew up he said that this was a very sneaky attack. The man on the top of the box caught this sword in his hand with his palm. He looked down on this guy and said that he was acting too arrogantly, like a child who decided to break into this territory. Yun Ho said that this man appeared very pretentious and stood on top of the wall looking down at him and he definitely shouldn't tell others about arrogance. Yang looked out from behind the wall and asked the young master to be careful with this opponent. Yang said that this warrior's name is Muk Hyolgium and he is the right hand of Kol Muzin and the second person of the non-orthodox faction he is called the Silent Bloody Sword. He continued to look arrogantly at his opponent. Muk Hyolgium saw a little baptized boy standing near the wall and said that he recognized Yang Jinte. Muk said that everyone in this sect knows that traitors are hated here, especially those traitors who bring opponents and teachings here from unrest. Mook said that they even promised that they would spare him if he did what he was told. Ian said that he would never believe in this nonsense again and they did not help him when he was in trouble and even tried to kill him. Yang said that this young master saved him from poison goo and oh, now he has nothing to do with them. Mook said that he was just an ordinary idiot who thought that getting out of the unorthodox faction was easy. And the poison that was in his body is not his main problem. Yun Ho scratched his head and said that this gentleman talks a lot and if they want to talk they can do it somewhere else because he has urgent business right now. Mook looked at this guy with a dissatisfied look. He took a fighting stance and spread his sword. Mook said that if this is not the case, then he will give the two of them a peaceful death. He very quickly began to run towards the young master in order to attack him. He shouted that the silent bloody sword would punish his opponent again. He circled his body and tried to perform his signature punch combination. His sword was emitting very strong black energy and he wanted to pierce the young master's chest with the blade of his sword. He lunged and stabbed his opponent with his sword, at that moment an explosion of black energy occurred. He didn't understand what the problem was and what was happening now. Yun Ho caught the blades of this sword with his finger and started laughing because it all looked very funny. The warriors couldn't believe their eyes that this guy was able to defeat the best warrior in their organization. Yang was shocked when he saw this, he thought that this guy could stop such a great warrior with his bare hands, he only used two fingers. Yun Ho said that the enemy underestimates him too much and has a good one, but the person who wields this sword is an ordinary weakling. Mook couldn't believe his eyes, he shouted that a simple tail shower had just been able to stop his sword. Yun Ho started laughing and said that he had not shown his true strength yet. Mook didn't understand what this guy just said and what true power he was just talking about. Yun Ho immediately knocked the sword out of his hands and continued to attack. He kicked him in the chest and threw him back. Mook flew back and barely stayed on earth. He couldn't believe his eyes and he had just been defeated by this guy and he couldn't even do anything to oppose him. 
Mook saw that this guy made his sword float in the air with the help of his energy and without this sword he could not do anything. He understood that this guy was holding on less with the help of chi energy and only a true outstanding martial artist could do this. Yunho said that most likely he already knows what's going on here. Yunho said that he is right and this sword is too good for a thief like him. He moved his hand forward and made this sword fly forward. A few seconds later, the sword pierced the enemy's body and a through hole appeared in his chest. Mook was still conscious for several seconds and could not understand what had just happened, but he saw blood. This blood splashed out from behind his body and scattered in different directions, and he himself began to fall down. Yunho continued to stand still and watch the reactions of the people who saw him defeat their strongest warrior. Yunho said that he gave him a dignified death. He once again used his inner energy to lift this sword into the air. The sword flew out of the ground and began to fly into his hands. Yunho grabbed the hilt of the sword with his palm and now he became its full owner. Yunho said that from now on he will cut the throat of anyone who gets in his way. The wolves sensed the danger and got up from their places to come closer to the entrance. The warrior asked the gentleman if everything was all right in the castle now. He said that his wolves are now starting to retreat, scared, and they never do this without a reason. The gentleman replied that their guest was not worth even getting their hands dirty on him. Cole said that they will start as soon as they are ready for reception and judging by how quiet it is outside now, you would think that they have already dealt with him. The wolves began to growl loudly and show with their appearance that they did not like the enemy who was approaching them. The warrior said that it would be better if they saw it for themselves. The wolves approached the door and waited for the passage to open them. Near the door, steps were heard towards a person who was approaching them. Yunho opened the doors and they saw the silhouette of a man. He opened the doors and calmly walked inside the room with a wide gate. Yunho said that he wants to see the same clan that he was told a lot about. Yunho asked does the Soap clan have common affairs with a scoundrel named Cole Muzun. Cole thought that all his guards turned out to be ordinary non-entities and he did not understand what happened since they could not stop this guy. Cole saw that this guy was holding that legendary sword in his hands. He couldn't believe that this was a brat from the Mahadalit of the Great Mook Hyalgium. Yunho asked these idiots why they stand there and are silent as if they had swallowed their tongues. Yunho said that you want to talk to a freak named Chiol Musun, but instead they only see his displeased expression on his face. Yunho said that judging by how bad he looks and his arrogant look, you can understand that he is the same Cole Muzono. Chul got angry at that moment because this guy just insulted him. Chul said that judging by this guy's antics, he really doesn't want to die today. Cole advised this guy that if he can't control his ardor, he can let him out somewhere in the mountains but he doesn't understand why come here to the castle and make a mess. Yunho smiled and said that this one was coming and didn't understand anything, despite the fact that he tried to explain it to him several times. Yunho said that compared to what he does against the clan in the central plains, his antics can hardly be called lawlessness. Cole didn't understand how the guy didn't know about his affairs in the central plains and who he even was. Yunho said that one thief who came back to life admitted that he was the one who robbed everyone during the recent clashes. Yunho said that this thief admitted that he did this on the orders of Kol Musum. How hard can one believe that this guy knows his divine thief and could he really praise him? The warrior looked at this gentleman and realized that he was very pathetic and that he had just made loud statements, but now he looks like a real weakling in front of this boy. Yunho said that he had never told anyone that these hand thefts were the work of Chul and in this regard he was incredibly lucky. Yunho asked him how he feels about stopping these robberies. He said that at least his reputation wouldn't be damaged. Chul started laughing and said that this sentence sounds like a real joke. He asked is this brat now going to challenge the real king of evil, Chiol Musung. Yunho said that if he threatened him, this king of evil would already be on the verge of death and first he beats and then verbally intimidates. Chul said that this is the first time he has seen a guy so tall. Chul said that he doesn't know how this guy managed to steal the sword of blood, but all he gets in the end is just a headless body and an unmarked grave. The warrior said that if the master is now going to kill this guy, then I can't let my predators feast on him. He thought that he now had a feeling as if he was cleaning up unfinished business for someone but if he wants to at least slightly expand the position of the south, this must be done. He ordered his wolves to attack this guy immediately. 
The wolves very quickly began to run towards the enemy and opened their mouths in order to prepare for a bite. Yunho pulled out his sword to prepare for defense. He used his inner energy and used it to look at these wolves with a special look and said that he had never seen such cuties before. The wolves stopped in front of him and at the very last moment decided not to attack. The animals bowed their heads before this enemy and shook with fear, afraid to come closer to him. The warrior thought that whoever this enemy was and did not always run, sleep was gnawing at his throat, and now suddenly they tucked their tails between their legs like real cowards. Cole thought that all this was impossible, these dogs looked at him, flashing their fangs, this guy was not suddenly scared. Yunho patted these wolves on the head and said that these guys look very smart and safe. He said that these animals understand that he is not an opponent at whom you can bare your teeth. Cole realized that this couldn't go on any longer and pulled out his sword. He said that these hats still irritated him and did not give him peace, so he had to deal with everything alone. Yunho said that he offered him a chance to save his reputation and not screw up, but apparently the master himself wants to be humiliated. Chul said that he will only save his reputation if he chops his opponent into pieces. He took a fighting position and put a sword in front of his body, very strong energy was radiated from his body. The warriors put their swords in front of them and took up fighting positions. He looked at this gentleman and realized that he was finally able to see the power of one of the 24 great masters. Yunho said that this idiot strength looks as ugly as his face and it's absolutely not scary. Yunho said that he definitely gave him a chance, but since the master decided to ruin his reputation, nothing can be done about it. He smiled and then started laughing. Yunho also decided to show his true strength and a powerful flash of blue energy appeared around him. The two opponents stood opposite each other and emitted incredibly powerful energy from their bodies. Chul was shocked when he saw that this brat had the same incredible powerful energy as him. The warrior shouted in fear that this guy had the same power as Cole. They collided in battle at that moment there was a very strong explosion. After the explosion it was hard to see anything because there was a lot of dust, smoke and fragments that scattered in different directions. Yunho radiated much more power than his opponents due to this sealing him in the blue energy trap. He couldn't believe his eyes, it all looked like some kind of bad dream. After all, ordinary boys possessed the power of great warriors. They understood that he was an unusual guy and when they looked at him they did not see a real demon in him. Yunho laughed and radiated incredible energy from his eyes and made it clear that he was just playing with them. Yunho saw how he penetrated, flew into the air and found himself inside a fiery sphere. After a few seconds, he landed and tried to stand firmly and steadily on his feet. He felt strong resistance and had to make a lot of effort not to fall. He did everything possible to stay on his feet, but nevertheless he was too weak to resist this force. He couldn't believe that this child had just been able to push him away with his strength and it made him incredibly angry. Yunho continued to radiate a large amount of energy from his body and asked his opponent why he had not yet cut him in half because he was so eager for it. Yunho smiled and told his opponent that his name was on the list of the 24 greatest martial artists and of course he was not paralyzed by fear at the sight of the strength of an ordinary boy. The man did not understand how this impudent child allowed himself to behave so impudently in his presence and why he possessed such incredible power at such a young age. Yunho he said that if he wanted to save at least a grain of his honor, it would be easier for him to just commit suicide, but looking back at what is happening and now even this will be difficult to do. And th these words seriously angered the bandit and he replied that until that moment he had never met a pernik whom he could not cut with his cry of truth. He began to run towards his opponent in order to cut him down and said that despite the great strength of this child, he is still no exception and he will be killed in the same way. He jumped and swung his balls to cut this guy's body once and for all. Yunho continued to smile and acted very calmly, he said that he had not seen such funny people for a long time. Inside the building, the walls broke and people who were on the street saw bright lights that came from this building. A few seconds later there was a very strong explosion that broke the building into many small fragments. Smoke was visible that appeared in different parts of the city. The palace of the main bandit was destroyed, almost nothing remained of him. Yunho stood on the ruins of this palace and looked at the foggy smoke slowly dissipating and in front of him he saw destroyed buildings. He looked ahead with an arrogant look and thought that it was much easier than he thought. From under the stones and asked the young master if everything was okay with him and Yunho looked at him in surprise and asked if he had been here all this time. 
The man asked what happened to Chul Muzanam but Yunho spread his hands and said that men themselves should see what happened here. He turned his head and said that this vile criminal ran away like a real coward. Yunho looked at the fog and said that this man looked like he really wanted to kill him and fought like crazy, but then he corrected himself and disappeared behind the collapsing buildings. The man looked at the young gentleman in fear and said that they should not let this cunning bastard leave and they should hunt him down and kill him immediately. Yunho said in a dissatisfied voice that he doesn't want to follow him because it sounds very boring. Yunho smiled and asked if there really was any point in hunting for this weakling, now I will be tormented by the thought that some kid humiliated him and then when he can't bear it he will appear to take revenge and this time he will die completely. Suddenly we didn't see the silhouettes of some guys in the distance next to whom the wolf was standing. The man asked if these people really came here from the south, but Yunho replied that he had no idea who all these people were, where they came from here. The men asked the young master what he was going to do with these people. Yunho looked at them thoughtfully and thought that the wild animals of the south are tamed through merciless bullying and are mercilessly destroyed as soon as they are no longer needed. Yunho at that moment understood why the spirits of the south harbor a deep resentment towards them and the poets are the reason they settled outside Samdokian to plan the murder of these monsters. Vnho took off the air and said that there is no point in doing anything against these people because they already have opponents who will take care of them. Yunho said that it was none of his business and there were people who should punish these monsters. After some time they returned back to their village. His father looked at him with frightened eyes and did not understand what was happening. The lady also could not understand what happened here and why the young master did not return home alone. The same man stood in front of them and held his straw hat in his hands and his eyes were cast downwards. The father asked his son who this man was and Yunho ordered the man to answer these questions himself. Yunho once again repeated the questions and ordered this man to answer who he is and introduce himself to the residents of this house. The man raised his eyes upward and said in a trembling voice that his name is Yang Jint and people know him as a divine thief. The father and the lady did not understand what was happening in this house and why Yunho brought the thief here. She got angry and said that bringing a thief here is unacceptable and Yunho has gone completely crazy. But Yunho looked at her with a contemptuous look because he understood that she had no say in this at all and asked why he thought it was bad to bring a new friend here. The father turned around and said that he would inform the elders and move the courtyard to the Muram Alliance and the lady said that she, too, should collate the information about how yours was caught. Yunho asked his father which elder he was talking about and his father said that he should talk to the elder of Cabana because he arrived as an investigator from the Muram Alliance. Yunho said that this person did nothing it's bad and he just arrived and all he will do is just drink and eat food, so he doesn't understand why give him to the alliance. Yunho said that since he caught this robber, it means he should receive honors for this. The lady said that now is not the time to discuss who deserves the honor and we need to find out who is behind this person. Yunho said that Cole is behind him Monsun head of the Sape clan or Merciless Blades. The father asked his son in an angry voice if he really brought this man here knowing who was behind this and Yunho replied that he caught him and the poets brought him here because it was not wrong to let him go. The lady pointed her finger at him and said that if the head of the Merciless Blades clan finds out that the thief is with them, he will not sit idly by and he will do anything to kill or kidnap him before he himself is caught. She continued to say that in this case, not only would Chong Hajang be in danger, but perhaps the fact that she was here would also bring danger to the Hao clan and Yunho was surprised when he heard this. She turned her head to God and said that for now it is necessary to publicly announce that my alliance has caught the divine thief and she will contact the Hao clan to study the situation around the Merciless Blades clan. She turned around and began to leave and at that moment she thought that this boy has incredible strength, but he still has too few acquaintances with the intrigues that are happening in Murim and Cole Monsun is a swordsman and if he has found a rival in this case, do not underestimate him. But suddenly a sword fell in front of her face and got stuck in a stone slab that was on the floor. She was shocked when she saw this sword and couldn't believe her eyes. She looked carefully at this weapon and thought that it was impossible and she was probably dreaming about it all. In front of her was a bloody sword that belonged to Cole's right hand Monsuna. Yunho said that this sword looked useful so he decided to take it for himself and move it to the palace. She turned to him and asked if he was in the clan of Merciless Blades. Yunho smiled and said in a carefree voice that there was no point in worrying because Chul Monsoon couldn't do anything against him. 
They gathered in the room to discuss everything that was happening. Yang replied that everything that the young master talked about really happened in reality and Chul Monsun suffered huge losses after which it will be very difficult to leave at the moment and Mook Helgum was pierced through the chest and died on the spot. Yang said that after this battle Kol Monsun abandoned his clan and ran away like a cowardly donkey. It appeared at the table and everyone was thinking about the words that this yard had just told. The father could not believe that his son's fighting skill was so great that he forced Kol Monsuna flees the battlefield in disgrace. She looked at him with a surprised look and thought that he was at a level far beyond her expectations and he could be as strong as the twenty-four great masters or even stronger than them. She thought that it might turn into trouble if someone in Murim realized his powers, but if she continued to keep him close and take care of him then it wouldn't be a problem. Suddenly she said that even she was surprised that the young master had such outstanding ability in martial arts. She turned her head towards the master and said that Cole Monsoon is probably very angry after what happened and will not be able to accept his defeat so easily and without any doubt he will try to strengthen himself and again find an opportunity to attack. She said that she was still sure that he posed a significant threat to Murim, but Yunho continued to look at her with contempt and still did not understand why the hell she was constantly interfering in the affairs of their family. The father sighed heavily and after that said that he agreed with the lady as Yunho's father, he was much more concerned about his well-being. Father said that he will see the situation with Murim but Yunho should stay as far away from all this as possible and not get into such troubles. Yunho was dissatisfied with the fact that everyone was telling him off and scolding him, and if he had not initially known that everything would turn out exactly like this, he would not have even started this business. Yunho said that he should have brought this matter to the end, but these words began to anger his father. Yunho said that now that he thought about it, despite the significant alliance of Murim, this guy will shamelessly pay for continuous problems and the response of the combat union and will not even make him flinch. The father got angry and repeated to his son to immediately stop thinking about it and listen to his orders. Yunho smiled and said that he heard from his father and would never dare to go against his will and if he realizes that this is too much for him, then turn to his father for help. He smiled again and asked not to worry so much about him because he is no longer the same Yunho that his father knew. These words seriously worried the father and he looked at his son with a frightened look. After this meeting, the lady went to the outskirts of the city. She asked her assistant if he had managed to find out anything and he replied that they were studying everyone who was in any way connected with the clan of Merciless Blades, but so far they had not received a message that the trace of Cole Monsuna was found. She replied that this was all very strange and it would be difficult for a person like him to hide and she could not believe that there was no even insignificant clue. But the assistant said that they still managed to get something. He said that this rumor came from one crazy old man who managed an ancient tavern, so its reliability is highly questionable, but if you listen to these words, the old man says that he saw not a person, but a real evil spirit. The lady asked if he was talking about a faithful one called the Mountain Boar and asked her assistant where this tavern was located. He looked at her in surprise and could not believe that she would actually be interested in the words of this crazy historian. She came to the gentleman to tell him everything she managed to find out. He looked at her in surprise and asked if she was going to go to the Inwen residence in Hyungsen. She replied that the gentleman understood everything correctly and was comparing the observation data and Cole's location they sketched out as possible routes for Monsun and came to the conclusion that this is the most likely place where he could hide. The gentleman said that there was long-term enmity between the Merciless Blade clan and the King of the Forest, but the lady said that she herself initially excluded the Inwen clan from the list and the investigation into this. But I believe the data that she received, the situation is such that they simply don't like being compared to each other, but despite this they are very close friends. Lord turned his head to the side and stood silently for several seconds and thought about it all. And she asked him what she should do now with this information, because the young master asked her to tell him as soon as they found out Cole's location Monsuna. The gentleman lowered his head down and continued to stand silently, he needed to think about everything carefully before giving her an answer. He went outside to the gazebo which was located near the pond. Father said that these are just guesses, but if it's true that Chul Monsun fled to the Inwen clan, then he will have to deal with two of the twenty-four great masters at once. The father decided to ask his son if he still hadn't changed his mind about his decision, but Yunho replied that he would be fine and his father shouldn't worry about him. Yunho said that you didn't even take this into account, he soon planned to collide with the king of the forest, Chin Sachk. 
The father narrowed his eyes and looked at his son as if he was too self-confident. They went towards the palace and the father said that his mind was in a state of confusion, but everything looked as if Yunho was enjoying what was happening and the boy did not understand the depth of anxiety that his father was experiencing. Yunho said that if the father is very worried about all this, then it's better for him to just put it out of his head and not worry about it. Yunho said that he is on all 24 masters and the father can be sure of this. The father looked at his son in surprise and asked if he really wanted to meet all 24 masters. In the city at that moment there were a lot of people walking around the city and young fighters practicing their blows at the training stadium. The scene moves to Penga province. Two strong guys stood near the large gate and discussed the fact that since the day of the funeral he had been behaving very strangely. One of the guys said that he locks the training grounds every day and doesn't allow anyone to go inside. He had a gold earring on his ear and his long hair was tied into a tight bun. His muscles became bigger and bigger every day, he looked like destruction machines and everyday training strengthened his body and made him even stronger. He practiced his blows and tried to accumulate a large amount of energy to open up new potential for himself. He tried to channel his rage and anger into the power through which he would one day be able to defeat this impudent child. He constantly replayed in his head the very moment when he fought with this guy. He couldn't forget the blows of this child who cut his shoulder with his ball. This boy's eyes shone a bright blue and he resembled a real demon who will not stop until he defeats his enemy. He began to get angry and veins appeared involuntarily and these thoughts constantly crawled into his head and prevented his thoughts from concentrating. He was thinking that no matter how many times he goes through all this in his head and cannot find the answer to it, in the end he always loses the battle with this guy and loses his head. He could believe that this guy is not so strong and he has no other choice but to admit defeat. Suddenly he heard the voice of this guy who asked if he was now remembering him and he turned his head back in fear. He saw the silhouette of a guy in front of him and asked who he was and how he ended up here. Yunho made the chief forward and came out of the darkness after that he asked him if there was any point in introducing himself. Yunho smiled and asked this rock if he had a good time all this time until they saw each other. At that moment clouds were flying over them. He laughed very loudly and couldn't believe that Chul Monsoon ran away like a cowardly girl when he fought with Yunho. He laughed so loudly that he could be heard throughout the palace. Yunho made a calm expression and said that Chul Monsoon, unlike some, kept his rage in check and did not stick his neck out begging for death. He raised his finger up and said that there was no need to delve into the past and he was forced to behave this way at that moment. Yunho he said that the past no longer matters and he came here to ask the big man to go with him to the Inwen residence and help him. Yunho would require and the boy replied that this was his request, if he went alone, his father would worry about him. The big man started laughing and said that it seems that worries about sons are a common feature of all fathers in the world. He smiled and said that watching them be trampled can be very exciting and it is not particularly difficult to fulfill the request for the problem is that Hogwan from Mount Tantuk can declare war and no Krimo. Yunho just continued to sit silently and listen to everything his partner was telling him. The big man clenched his teeth tightly and said that this could all lead to a serious conflict in the future and therefore wants to ask Yunho again if he is sure of his idea. Yunho continued to look at him silently and his facial expression did not change at all after this question. Yunho said that this thug's breath stinks and if he doesn't stop talking this nonsense right now, then he'll have to break his neck. The big man scratched his neck with his hand and asked and they were leaving and Yunho replied that as soon as he received confirmation that Chul Monsoon in the palace they fight will go. He looked at him and said that in that case they have some free time. He said that as payment for fulfilling his request, he wanted to ask for one favor. They went to the palace and were behind the strong walls of the building. The guy looked at the unexpected guest in fear and couldn't believe his eyes. Yunho looked at the boy and smiled as if he knew that this was very important. The guy said that he now understands what exactly his father meant when he said that he had a request. The guy asked his assessor if his father really wanted him to study with this vile idiot. He hit his son with the palm of his club and said that he followed the words and did not insult the guest with such words. The big man asked young master Yunho that he taught his son and in return he was ready to give anything. The father came to the door and before leaving said that if his son left this training ground without permission, he could consider that he was deprived of any heritage. After these words, the father slammed the door and left the training room. The guy turned his head back and looked at his new teacher with an angry look. 
He waved his hand and asked this idiot what he told his father and why his father chose him as a teacher because he had never treated his son so strictly before. Yunho said that maybe it was because last time his son didn't receive a rag, but nevertheless, during all this time he never learned anything. Yunho said that from now on, at the request of his father, he will be his teacher and first of all, he must show respect to his teacher. But these incredible words made the guy very angry and he said that he was not going to put up with it. He took a fighting stance and used a blow to hit this idiot in the face, but Yunho deftly dodged the blow. Yunho at that moment was thinking that his teacher felt exactly the same way when he first met him. Yunho used his leg to sweep and throw his student off balance. Thus, with one light blow, he threw his student and did not put much effort into it. Yunho grabbed this guy by the leg and was preparing to do the next drum before that. He said that unfortunately his student had not understood anything during all this time and it was impolite to lie on the floor in front of his teacher. The guy looked at this idiot with no fear and did not understand what he was going to do now. Yunho used one of his hands to lift the guy up and began to rotate him around his head. He ended up throwing this guy at a wooden door. The father placed a large stone near the door so that his son could not leave and at that moment he saw that the doors began to shake as if someone had crashed into them. He realized that now it would be very difficult for his son, but he would have to pass this test in order to become strong. He looked at the sky and thought that he wanted only the best for his son and that's why he sent him to this training to make him stronger. Stars appeared in the sky and were visible through the clouds. In the city the lanterns were lit, the lights were on in the windows. Two guards walked along the street holding a large torch in their hands and using it to illuminate their way. They walked forward and looked at everything around them, trying to find anything suspicious. The man sat on the roof of the building and tried to remain unnoticed. He thought that after the recent arrest of the divine thief, all security measures were returned to the old level and he was no closer to his goal. He turned his gaze to the side and thought that among all the big markets, security in Changhejiang is the most serious. He stood up and quietly walked along the roof and thought that Mrs. Surin had asked him to find her if something happened and she should have told him in advance which mansion she would be staying at. He ran along the wall trying to climb onto the next roof of the building and said that he had a lot of trouble because of this lady. A few seconds later he jumped over the roof of the building and found himself on the other side. After that, he landed down and ran forward with very quiet and long steps. He again climbed onto the roof of the building in order to jump over it. After that, he again found himself on the other side. He landed and decided to stop for a while and understand what was happening. He began to look at everything around him and it seemed to him that something very strange was happening. He felt as if he had already passed here several times and everything was repeating itself. Suddenly he raised his head up and saw that he was now trapped with large walls that surrounded it. He couldn't believe that he had actually been trapped all this time and now he wouldn't be able to get out of here. At that moment the shaman was casting a spell and wanted to drive out the evil spirit. He heard the terrible voice of this shaman and could not understand what was happening and where these sounds came from in his head. He heard the shaman asking him how he dared to shamelessly climb the walls of Chonghejang. He turned his head back and didn't know what to answer to this shaman because he was in a hopeless situation and his some spruce branches. The shaman asked this man who he was and why he came here and asked him to answer his questions immediately. The shaman wanted to find out who this person really was, a thief or a murderer. The stranger did not answer anything and continued to remain silent. Then he used his magic and began to wrap his body in magical ropes and the last time he said that he wanted to hear answers to his questions. Clouds continued to float in the sky and at moments stars were visible that were hiding behind these clouds. Suddenly the Chelkash shamans pumps his fist and prepares for his speech. He saw that the lady was standing in front of him along with this stranger and were not trying to explain why this man was walking here and when the shaman listened to them he said that he should have been warned in advance. The man recovered and asked the hats for forgiveness, he had never before in his life encountered such a complex formation and frightening brains, and Surin replied that it was her omission that she did not warn him in advance. Surin said that in any case, it was quite unusual for him to show up for no reason and ask if something important had happened. The assistant said that there were reports that high members of the clan without merciless blades were constantly visiting the Inwan palace and that the clan structure had been reorganized so that they became its core. He said that they can be sure that Chul Monsun is in the Inwan palace and this information confirmed all the guesses. Surin said that without his order the reorganization would have been impossible and, as expected, he is there. 
she said that she would immediately inform the young master and ask him to prepare immediately to go to this place. Yunho ordered his student Sang Tsungu get up from the ground immediately. Yunho asked him if he still wasn't tired of his rude behavior but Sang didn't answer him and slowly tried to get up on the floor. Sang sat on the ground and said that Yunho beat him until he lost consciousness, then brought him back to consciousness and beat him again until he passed out again. Sang stood up and said that he already had a broken ankle and didn't understand how much longer the teacher would mock him. He shouted very loudly in a dissatisfied voice and asked Yunho if this is called training. But for his insolence he received several punches to the face and body. Yunho continued to strike and tried to knock out all the anger and nonsense from this guy's body. Yunho he has a very long way to go in learning and until he learns to respect his teacher this will continue again and again. Yunho hit again very hard and threw his student aside. Sang fell to the floor and hit his back against the stone wall that was behind him. A few seconds later the dance floor is down this wall and I put my head down. Yunho said that he is so strong that even his most ordinary blows are the highest level of combat skill. Yunho said that he would make three or four more attempts if his student did not learn anything he would simply give up. The father saw his son after training and could not believe his eyes, he was delighted with what he saw. The father could not believe that the young man standing in front was actually his son. Yunho sat on a bench near the wall and said that the state of trance enhances human abilities and develops instincts to the limit and training in this state will impact his body greatly and will soon become his usual state. The father, in a surprised voice, asked if they were really trying to train in an unconscious state and decided that his son could succeed greatly in this. Yunho replied that his son became about a third stronger than he was before. Yunho sighed heavily and said that it was difficult to bring him to such a result due to the fact that he constantly resists, but his father smiled and said that to advance so far in just a few days is an incredibly good result. But suddenly a servant knocked on the door and said that he urgently needed to see the master and the master allowed him to enter the training room. The servant replied that guests from above the class had arrived. Yunho said in a calm voice that it was most likely Surin who came and well, at this moment his son's training can be considered completed. He asked to make sure that he was fed and on the train before he woke up and, well, to be allowed to sleep so that he could regain his strength. Surin said that Lee Ryan went to Hyungsun ahead of everyone else to figure out how to get more information and Yunho replied that he missed this guy. Surin looked at him with a surprised look and said that despite all this, the crookedly greedy Lord Pan Chiol is a very strange choice of a person to meet. She asked Yunho how he managed to pacify his explosive temper and asked why he was so sure that the Lord would quietly follow them. Yunho replied that there were no persuasion and he only asked him and one of ours and the Lord gladly agreed to join them as soon as he heard that he would fight with the kings of death and the forest. Surin said that Pan from the Hebei family has incredible influence throughout the Murim and every step in a situation like theirs should be thought out because the idea that he would simply follow them is inconceivable to her. The Lord with him told his services that as soon as his son begins and he needs to be fed with any food he wants except alcohol. Yunho answered the lady that probably it would be more painful for him to have Yunho's early feelings than to be involved in political squabbles. He turned his head back and said that he recently gave him a good fight and taught him for one of his unpleasant actions. She looked at Yunho in fear. She couldn't believe that this boy could even subdue the bloodthirsty Lord Ban Chiol even a fly. Pan looked down at the man who stood next to him with a pimple, who was he and could he really be their new coachman? The man replied that from time to time he can do a lot of work, this is his main craft, and at that moment he thought that he knew that all the overwhelming power of one of the twenty-four strongest would be for a giant so that it was so he couldn't even believe it. Yunho got angry and ordered Pan Chiol to move as quickly as possible because he talks too much and is wasting time, but Pan asked if he couldn't say a few words to the new member of the group. Yunho answered the Lord that if he likes to talk so much, he can walk next to the cart. The men did not understand why the young master treated the bloodthirsty lord so rudely and where he got such influence over this man. Surin, I climbed into the carriage and asked my assistant to move out as quickly as possible. He sat down in the coachman's place, held the reins in his hands and ordered the horses to move out immediately. They set off and bowed in farewell. All the way, Yunho and Lord constantly sorted things out and quarreled like cats and dogs. After some time, evening had already come and it began to get dark outside. Some strange sounds were heard in the mountains, as if a group of people were wandering between the mountains. One of the guys said that summer ends in this very place and they can't find anything further. 
The leader asked if they carefully examined the surroundings in all directions and the rest of the guys replied that they examined absolutely everything and found nothing. He said that they were absolutely useless since they could not find any clues because these people could not disappear without a trace under their noses. But suddenly we heard some strange sounds far from you and thought that this might be that clue. They looked into the distance and saw that a carriage with people was driving along the main road and someone in Korea was scolding very loudly for driving the carriage too fast. People looked at them in surprise and thought that these people had suddenly appeared here and they did not understand how they were able to drive under the road so unnoticed. The carriage was driving along a mountainous area and constantly ran over stones and therefore the carriage was constantly shaking. Pan jumped every time she hit a stone and his body shook and it started to make him angry. Pan shouted very loudly that it was necessary to hire a professional coachman and he did not understand how they were even going to get them to their place in such a carriage. The man at that moment was thinking that he used to be a professional killer and a member of the Hao clan and now works part-time as a cab driver and is still forced to listen to all this nonsense. But suddenly he saw several people in front of him with their red balakins who blocked his way. Pan and the rest of the team who were in the carriage suddenly felt that the carriage had stopped. Pan shouted very loudly and in an angry voice asked why they stopped again. Dima still has a long way to go. But Yunho I realized that they stopped for a reason and most likely they had unexpected guests. The man got off the cart and ordered to let them through immediately since they don't know who else these people are. But the guys in robes said that they still need to check the cart to be sure of this, but the man replied that these guys should not do something that they will soon regret. One of the guys in the red robe said that this coachman was too cocky and he should behave politely with strangers. He was already starting to get angry because these people also mistook him for an ordinary person and a cab driver. He grabbed his sword, which was behind his back, with his hand and wanted to show me that he was capable of sitting with his hands folded for the winter. He pulled out his sword and said that he once again repeats that you shouldn't do something that you won't regret in the future, anyone who dares to touch the cart will be killed. Such a daring act surprised the guys in robes and they did not expect that from the towers he would be so confident in his words. He raised his hand up and said that this made him even more interested in the contents of this cart and they slowly began to take out their weapons. One of these guys began to run forward holding a sword in his hand and was preparing to attack his opponent. At that moment he stood unshakably in his place and was conditionally a titan and was preparing for battle, and at that moment he made a countdown. He saw that I was approaching the enemy, there were 14 seconds left before the attack. He held the hilt of the sword tightly with his right hand, there were already 11 seconds left. When he reached zero at this moment he delivered an incredible fast blow and cut his opponent's body and at the same time dodged his blow. He exhaled air from his mouth and steam appeared. After a few seconds, blood splashed out of this guy's body. Pro fell to the floor and there was a bloody puddle around his body, he was killed with one blow. Angry, he asked these guys what they were not going to do next and whether they wanted to try to inspect the cart again. One of the guys said that he did not expect to see such a talented coachman in these places. But suddenly he felt as if someone had appeared behind him and he did not expect to see his opponent behind him so quickly. He turned his head and realized that the enemy he had just killed was able to rise to the ground and on Sunday it looked very creepy. He didn't understand what the hell was going on here and why this guy stood up as if nothing had happened to him. This man began to get angry after he was resurrected and began to sound very energetic. He didn't understand what was happening here and who these people were and where they got such abilities from. He looked at how his enemy took his blade in his hands and thought that his heart was pounding like crazy. The enemy struck with his saber, but he managed to pull out his balls in time and block this blow. Thanks to blocking, he did not receive damage, it was incredibly difficult to contain it. He understood that he could not cope on his own and if they attacked him all together, he would definitely die in this battle. But they don't sparkle in the west and Pan came out and grabbed this guy by the head with his big hand and started squeezing his skull. Pan lifted this guy up and broke his neck in one swift motion. He looked at these opponents with a dissatisfied look and didn't understand why the hell I didn't dare stop the carriage and stand in their way. He tore off this guy's head and threw it aside and when the rest of his group saw it they got scared. One of the guys thought that he didn't understand where this man had such incredible strength abilities. Pan said that these guys wear blood red cloaks and there is only one clan in Murim that can afford this. 
Yunho got out of the carriage and looked at these guys and said that most likely these guys are from a blood cult. Yunho didn't want to waste time and threw his blade forward in order to deal with these guys as quickly as possible. His blade cut right through the body of one of the opponents and flew out of his back, leaving a through wound in his chest. The enemy felt incredibly strong pain and said that this could not be true, he could die so quickly. Suddenly the blade began to cut his body from different sides, probably quickly and with speed, and the enemy thought that he could not even think that the carts would hide such a monster. The blade cut his body into many small pieces and after that began to return to the hands of its owner. Yunho grabbed his blade and stood in a fighting position, showing with all his appearance that they had no idea who they were dealing with. Yunho I saw how the enemy's body turned into a bloody explosion and it's unlikely that anyone will now be able to recognize his dead body. Yunho he said that they killed six opponents and most likely it was all enemies, but the bunch replied that most likely there could be other members of the group nearby. Han said that it is very unfair to wield the heavenly blade when Yunho is not even 20 years old and the king of blades would be shocked if he saw this. Yunho said he was disappointed that Pan had a hard time defeating only six opponents. Pan turned to him and said that it wasn't hard for him and they planted some suspicious drinks, leaders of them immediately became much stronger and he changed his tactics a little and it wasn't hard for him to fight them, it wasn't hard for him to defeat them. Shurig looked at their dead bodies and said that their bodies and distorted veins are monstrous and this is a side effect of absorbing more and more chi essence. She covered her face with a scarf so as not to breathe this corpse air and said that it seems that these pills forced them to quickly absorb internal chi, which gave such an explosive increase in strength. Yunho said that essence's chi is a double-edged blade and if it is used properly, it is very useful, but if it is squeezed out until it is completely depleted, it will only lead to inevitable death. She looked at him with a contemptuous look and said that apparently they realized from the very beginning that this would be a fight to the death. Han replied that there is no doubt and it is a blood cult, but Yunho said that as far as they know, the blood cult ceased to exist many years ago. Han said that the destruction of the blood cult was described in the history of Murim about five years ago and they always, despite the fact that they were cut out at the root every time, appeared at the most unexpected moment and caused a lot of trouble. Surin said that they should notify the Murim Combat Union about this, and if they can fight like this, it means they have already restored their strength and numbers. Yunho asked her in a surprised voice if she really wanted to notify them right now and she replied that he understood everything correctly. She turned to the coachman and asked him to pay attention to herself. Surin said that if the settlement nearby is not a small village, then there must be someone from the union there and you need to hurry up and tell them everything and the coachman replied that he would take one of the corpses with him just in case. Pan quickly began to run towards him and said that he needed to wait and see if the pile left, in which case there would be no one to take this cart. Yunho looked at Pan with a narrowed gaze and showed with all his appearance that he had a plan about who would drive this cart next. They were driving near large mountains and there was heavy fog around them. Pan drove the cart and was angry because he was the one who had to do this work. Yunho asked the lady what to do if the constant one enters to the side and in this case, should he hit the horse or the driver. The next morning the weather was good and it was warm and sunny outside. There was practically no fog in the mountains and thanks to the bright sun the mountain surroundings were clearly visible. On the ground lay a map on which small stones were laid out and next to each there was a brush and ink and some kind of talisman. Lee Ryan was sitting near this card, counting something out loud, he stopped at the number 30 and then froze. Lee raised his gaze up and looked in front of him and looked carefully at the mountains. He saw that there were a large number of high mountains in front of him, but nevertheless he said that it was worth a try. He took a stick and began to draw some drawings on the ground with it, constantly dipping it in ink. He was busy with the process and did not pay attention to what was happening around him. Yunho and his team came out of the forest and were approaching the place where the shaman was located. Yunho saw shamans in the distance and wondered what this guy was doing now. Li Ryan carefully looked at the picture he had drawn on the ground using a larger stick and ink. In front of him was some kind of seal that he drew and Li looked at it carefully. Yunho started walking towards him and said that he felt like they were wasting their time. Li asked him to stop and be as careful as possible in this place and not spoil the drawing because this formation is calculated to the last detail and must be depicted without the slightest mistake. Yunho said that all they need is to make a hole through which they can come inside and there is no need to fuss so much about it, but Li replied that it's not so simple, 
because the palace is huge, it's structured very complicated and 13 more points need to be destroyed at the same time. Han looked up along with the rest of the team and said that they just need to break into the Inwen palace and there is nothing difficult about it. Lee replied that everything that is not seen is an ordinary mirage, so everything is not as simple as it seems. The shaman explained that the mountains that I don't see aren't real, they're just a mirage. He approached the edge of the ledge and said that if you just enter it, you can get lost and walk in circles for an eternity, and if you are completely unlucky, then the one who seems to be inside the world will collide with another group, then you can die or get seriously injured. He looked back and thought that this was not all that important. He saw a big man standing near his friends and asked who he was, why was he traveling with Mr. Han answered most likely now there is a monk standing in front of him who doesn't really care about vile things and that's why he began to introduce himself. But Yunho interrupted Pan and said that now there is no time to listen to all this and explained that they couldn't meet me later. Yunho asked if this mirage can be dispelled and this is the first time he has encountered such a large and complex mirage. The monk pulled out yellow seals from his pocket and prepared to use them. He smiled and said that fortunately his ability to treat the Kurds is higher than what this world needed, so he knows how to deal with this problem. Li threw all his yellow seals into the air and they began to fly away in the wind. He stood in the center of the circle, closed his eyes and began to read some spells. After that, he hit his stick on the ground and appeared yellow, which activated his spell. Yellow pieces of paper began to fly in different directions and glow with a bright yellow light. Yunho created a bright flash in the air and after that his yellow seals began to obediently take their place positions. Each of his seals went into the circle intended for it. When all the seals were in place they began to light up one after another and glow as if they were candles and after that the seal that he drew on the ground began to activate. They looked in surprise at the capabilities of this shaman, they couldn't believe that this boy was capable of such things, but Yunho was earlier that his friend plowed to surprise these idiots. Vnho looked at this guy and thought that at such moments he begins to think that this shaman is not so bad. Li Ryan concentrated all his attention on activating this seal in order to remove the mirage from this place. Suddenly he shouted very loudly and ordered this magic to obey him and listen to his order. At that moment, the sounds of training and some loud noise were heard in the castle. One of the warriors hit his back against a stone wall and felt severe pain. The second warrior just hit him hard in the stomach and knocked him back after which he crashed into the wall and left a dent in the wall. It was yours who said that he suspected that something had happened when the guy who usually does nothing but complain remained silent. He said that he knew that this idiot would change his mind one day and change his mind. He wiped the blood from his mouth and said that if he already understood everything, then why didn't he tell him earlier? He stood up and leaned his hand on the wall, after which he said that in that case he would have gotten out of his sight much faster. But these words angered the warrior and he said that in this case he does not like the way Chin Sachik conducts business. He smiled and said that he noticed that something had improved since he killed the three warriors from Chonghajang and now it was threatening small traders that it would break their necks if they traded with Chonghajang. He put his hands to the side and said that this matter went wrong from the very beginning and the whole of Nokram seemed to blindly not notice his shortcomings and he was wondering if the 18th department of Nokram was aware of this. He started laughing and said that he needed to come to his senses immediately and they were not originally born to be merchants. But this warrior closed his fist and was preparing to hit him, he ordered him to shut up immediately and said that they do not have to stay on the path of Nokram all their lives. After that, he hit him very hard in the face with a big fist and his head turned to the side. He said that as a tribute to their past, he was inclined towards him and tried to understand the whole cloud that he was trying to tell. But the second man did not agree and replied that he had nothing more to answer and he didn't care what would happen next to Nokram and it was no longer his concern. He raised him up with his hands and said that Chagwan is a real traitor and bastard. But Chagwan replied that he absolutely doesn't care anymore and he can do whatever he wants to see with him, he's not even strong enough to decide what future awaits him. Near the gates of this castle it was very quiet and calm and there were no signs of trouble. But suddenly one of the guards who was on the watchtower saw something unusual and did not understand what was happening. He raised his head up and saw that a bright star appeared in the sky and was flying up very quickly. They all stood and looked at her, trying to understand what was happening now and where this star was flying. One of the guys suggested that it might be up, but he didn't understand who decided to launch these fireworks. Suddenly the fireworks exploded and broke into many different pieces. 
one of the men went to the window and saw that many bright yellow flashes appeared in the sky. He said that this can't be true, he doesn't believe his eyes because it all looks like a bad dream. Lee smiled and said that when the formation is destroyed, the mirage will immediately disappear and the true appearance of Hyun San Mountain will be revealed to them. He raised his stick up and said that from now on it was time to end the spell. He hit the ground with the stick again and the pebbles scattered into different stories and the light became even stronger. After this, the yellow seals began to fly down very quickly and rapidly. The two wars did not understand what was happening and why there was such a loud noise in their village, it confused them and gave them no peace. He called his servant and asked what was going on outside and the servant replied that he would go and check immediately. Chagwan also did not understand what was happening and felt blood flowing from his mouth, he asked what happened and why there was so much noise in the village now. Suddenly the mirage began to collapse, this barrier slowly cracked and collapsed. It looked like glass that had been broken with a stone. The whole world began to be destroyed and it seemed that soon there would be nothing left of these landscapes. Lee was very happy that he was able to perform his spell and he asked the team if everyone saw what he was capable of because his ability to destroy 13 formations is a unique skill. But when he looked at his friends, he saw that only one lady was standing in front of him. Lee asked her this one disappeared and Surin replied that they had already gone to Inwen Palace a long time ago. At that moment, Yunho and Pan ran very quickly and swiftly towards the palace in order to find themselves below as quickly as possible and beat as many opponents as possible. Pan said that without the help of this Shimano he could take Yunho to the palace and Yunho replied that it would be advisable to do it quickly. He returned to his master and said that he had some not very good news that he had to tell. He put his hand forward and said that all the formations superimposed on Hyungsang Mountain had just been destroyed and collapsed right before his eyes. Chell ran into the room and said that a bloodthirsty horse was approaching them. He said that this is the same guy who humiliated him in the iron yard with blood and he is now approaching their village. The owner turned his head towards the TV guy and got angry, he was so angry that steam began to appear from his wear. They continued to run quickly towards the village and tried with all their might to crash into the central gate. They were almost near this gate, there were a few seconds left before the collision. When they crashed into this central gate, it instantly collapsed and many broken logs scattered. The residents of this village did not understand what was happening and they were not prepared for the fact that someone would now break into their settlement. They didn't understand what was happening here and why their gate had just exploded as if someone had used a large bomb. When the smoke cleared and they didn't see some big man standing in front of them, he looked at them with bright glowing eyes and smiled as if he were a real monster. They continued to look at him with frightened eyes and could not believe that the Rayal Pan Chiyol was standing in front of them. They didn't understand what this great warrior forgot in their village and how he even got here. Pan turned around and shouted very loudly that among all these bandits there was no one who would truly recognize. He continued in a loud voice and said that if anyone dares to interfere with what is happening here now, whoever it is, he will personally crush him without a drop of regret. But the bandits still had a question in their heads about why he decided to break into their settlement and break down the central gate. Sudden buildings higher up, the main bandit said that he didn't expect to see Pan Chiyol here and asked what fate brought him here. Pan replied to this robber that they had not seen each other for a long time and they remained the same unpleasant smelly bandits. Pan said that he needs to find out if it's true that Cole is not hidden here Masuna heard that this scoundrel was here and ordered this robber to show his cute face. Of the bandits asked him how he knew that Cole Monsoon is here. But suddenly I noticed that this big guy came here alone and another guy came with him. He saw the silhouette of some guy standing on the roof of the gate and watching them and Pan said that he had just admitted that Cole was here. Yunho smiled and replied that he had no idea that he was unable to keep his mouth shut. Yunho shouted very loudly and ordered Chul Monsoon immediately came out of hiding and said that as soon as he leaves the Inwen Palace and his life will immediately end and this time he will personally take care of it. The leader of the bandits shouted very loudly that he had not seen such arrogant idiots for a long time and asked where he got so much impudence to speak to the leader of the bandits Chin Sachik in such a tone. Yunho smiled again and said that most likely Chul Monsoon forgot to tell the leader of the bandits about who did and want to but apparently it was beyond his pride to admit that he was beaten by some boy. Yunho said with a smile on her face that he is the one thanks to whom they will meet their relatives much faster than planned. These words incredibly angered the leader of the bandits and he finally realized that standing in front of him was Yunho, the same guy who has been talked about so much lately. 
Chul was incredibly scared when he saw that the young master had personally come to kill him. He looked at this young idiot and thought that this guy humiliated him once and came here to finish his job. The leader of the bandits began to laugh and did not quite understand what situation he was in now. He raised his axe up and said that most likely Mr. Yunho is thinking very narrowly if they think that they will kill the leader of the bandits, the king of the forest, simply because he gave a bowl of rice to Chiyo Musunu. Yunho looked at him in surprise and said that commission was too weak a word in his situation. He pushed off from the roof of the gate and jumped forward to get as close to him as possible. The bandit watched this guy fly in the air like a bird, they couldn't believe that someone could fly just like him. Yunho landed on the step that was in front of the leader of the bandits and stopped there. He raised his head up and asked whether this bowl was worth more than the lives of three innocent people, as well as attempts to destroy a thriving shopping area that his father worked tirelessly for many years to improve. Yunho said in a calm voice that now the leader of the bandits dared to insult his father right in front of his eyes and the reasons to kill him are simply endless. Suddenly an ordinary bandit appeared and said that this brat has no right to doubt the greatness of their master and will be punished for this. But Pan did not stand idly by at that moment and immediately hit this idiot's head on the floor and broke his skull. Pan turned his head back and asked these idiots who gave them permission to interfere in adult conversations. The leader of the bandits understood that he was now in a difficult situation and this violent bear was bringing him a lot of problems. He looked at the boy who was standing in front of him and said that if this is his goal then he has no other choice. He said that he had no choice but to make his father regret sending his son to such a terrible place. Yunho smiled and realized that he still managed to make him angry in spite of himself and now the most fun part of this task will finally begin. Surin at that moment sat with the shaman and waited for this couple to return back and said that Modin the young master would undoubtedly be killed by the queen of the forest and Lee Ryan replied that he knew about it. Surin asked him, if he knew about this, why didn't he stop him because he is a monk, but Lee replied that despite the fact that he is a monk, he is also a master of pharmacy. Surin said that as far as she knows, even the master of information values human life and less than the monarchy. Lee Ryan replied in a calm voice that he would like to stop the young master hundreds or even one thousand times. He said that despite the fact that he values human life, he also understands that not all the problems of the world can be solved through dialogue and on the way here, and they observed all the hardships of deprivation that fell on the heads of local traders due to the tyranny of the Nokrum clan, but Surin said that in this case, it turns out that taking his life is a necessity. Lee said that in his opinion it is simply a commensurate sacrifice that is worth making trill balance in the world. She looked at him and smiled because his words seemed very sweet. She said that he is a very wise monk despite the fact that he is still very young, but Lee replied that this is all just because he really likes to drink alcohol. The bandit leader swung his weapon to strike the first blow. And then the axe flew into the air and the blades of the axe were preparing to cut the head into two halves. Yunho stood calmly and waited for the courtyard to get as close as possible in order to surprise her opponent with her capabilities. At the very last moment he was able to dodge the blow and the axe and jumped to the side and the axe cut the stone step. The impact was so strong that half the steps were destroyed after you touched the stone. Han thought that the guys were the axe, this is the quintessential concept of a heavy weapon. Chin Sachik got angry when he saw that I couldn't stop loving the enemy with his axe and after the first blow, but at least he was able to show him his strength and perhaps he was able to scare. Chin swung his weapon again to deliver another powerful blow and despite the fact that he was wielding a heavy weapon, his movements were very agile. He moved quite quickly and would be able to get close to his opponent with incredible speed. Yunho was not prepared for the fact that his opponent was moving so fast and did not manage to dodge this blow in time. Chin smiled and said that all these heroes who come to him with threats can only chat and make loud statements, but in reality they are not capable of anything. Yunho was not stupid and was able to block his axe with the help of his ball which he pulled out at the very last moment. Yunho began to laugh and said that his opponent was fast enough and he did not expect this from an old man who could hardly lift his axe. He smiled and said that it would be nice to save his life and make him work as a firewood collector for the winter. Pan understood that these words would now greatly anger the bandit leader and he didn't like it. Chin became incredibly angry and veins began to appear on his face. He asked this guy in a dissatisfied voice what he meant. Why the hell does he allow himself to make such statements? He swung his axe again to deal a crushing blow and prepared to break his skull. 
Yunho blocked his shot with his ball and easily redirected his axe. But Qin did not give up and understood that this was just the beginning and he did not even show half of his power. He continued to carry incredibly strong blows and said that such a weak sword would not be able to withstand the strong pressure of this axe. Qin shouted very loudly and asked her opponent how long he could hold out under such strong attacks. Each of his blows was filled with incredible power that was ready to crush anything and after his miss the walls of buildings were broken. But Yunho continued to calmly fend off these blows and did not feel that he was in any danger. He blocked another blow from this axe and said that his teacher would not have given him a sword that could barely withstand a couple of swings of the axe. But Qin was already very angry and said that he absolutely did not care about this teacher and now he would just hack his sword along with his skull. Yunho put his hand forward and used some kind of spell, activating his internal energy. Yunho cast a spell that activates triple heavenly thunder. And a few seconds after his spell was activated, several lightning bolts hit the operative's body and threw him back. Qin hit the ground with his axe and with the help of this movement stopped a little. But even though he plunged the axe into the ground, he still slid onto it several meters back. Qin to believe that this young guy is capable of using such an incredible powerful spell. He became interested in how the son of an ordinary merchant could use such techniques that are inaccessible to ordinary people. Han said that this boy's teacher was the eldest of the Nam Gong clan and he taught him the best fighting techniques. Han smiled and said that in the past, when he received a little weak confession, he stupidly challenged him to a fight and was mercilessly beaten and now he must understand our serious opponent Yunho. Chin could not believe that this boy was a student of that wandering old man who constantly wandered around the world. This old man once told Chin that a guy who doesn't even know humility is one of the 24 greatest masters of the project is stupid. Yunho started laughing when he heard this story of how the teacher insulted this weakling. Yunho can't stop laughing because this guy was so stupid that he challenged his teacher and lost. Chin smiled and said that this child can laugh as much as he wants, but it still won't help him win. He held his axe tightly in his hand and said that when this boy dies, the teacher who left earlier will be heartbroken. His eyes began to glow yellow, he said that if this guy died laughing, wouldn't it be less heartbreaking? Yunho raised his head up and sighed in the fresh air that surrounded him and around the house about what his teacher said just now if he saw him. He was wondering how his teacher would react and would be surprised if only he could see the life that Yunho leads in constant travel and battles. The teacher always told him that he should not shed too much blood, even if he has to shed blood, he should still try to avoid it as long as possible. When he remembered these words of the teacher, he thought that sometimes it is worth listening to the words of this old man. Chin swung his big axe again and shouted loudly that the guy should go to his teacher and tell him how much he missed him. But Yunho was able to dodge this attack and made a high jump and up. He somersaulted in flight and looked at his opponent, but at that moment he thought that in order to avoid having to kill hundreds of people in the future, he needed to make one very important sacrifice now. Chin tried to reach him with his axe and his air and cut him in flight. Yunho kicked the axe blade and threw it aside. He attacks his opponent in order to find his weak points on the body and finish him off as quickly as possible. Yunho turned around and kicked him with his club with all his might and threw him back. At that moment, Cole was hiding behind the wall and trying not to show himself so that Yunho would not find him, but suddenly he saw the leader of the bandits fall to the floor. He understood that the situation was getting out of control and he was now in serious trouble. At that moment, there was another person in the building who had just woken up and was able to get to his feet. He stood near the door and tried to leave the building, but his whole body and head hurt very badly. He left the building and held his chest with his hand, he wanted to understand what was going on here. But suddenly he saw the bandit leader flying in front of his face and screaming very loudly in pain. Chin crashed into a wooden wall and broke it with his back. This man did not understand what was happening and why his master was now losing the battle against some unfamiliar guy. Blood flowed down his face and he screamed very loudly that he would kill Yunho at any cost. He got angry and threw the wooden beams that were lying under his feet at him with all his might. Yunho felt with his back that several large wooden logs were flying at him at once and if he did not dodge these logs would crush him. He turned his head and eyes back to prepare for a counter-attack. He put out his sword to block these blows. Yunho Sosi swung his ball forcefully and hit her with a powerful blow thanks to which the log shattered into small chips. Chin took advantage of the fact that Yunho was distracted by these small fragments and decided to make a jump, swinging his axe in order to be attacked from above. 
but Yunho managed to notice him in time and blocked this blow with his sword and did not receive damage. He smiled, looked at his opponent and said that Kim could always try to attack him, but it was unlikely that any of these attempts would be successful. He threw him back and immediately struck him in the body. Chin flew 10 meters away from his opponent and fell to the ground and his palace looked like ruins after this battle. Chin was lying on the floor and could not get to his feet, he lost a lot of strength and energy, but the most important thing is that he was seriously injured during this battle. The services didn't understand what was happening in these bosses, he couldn't defeat this guy even when he was fighting at full strength. The other guys also didn't understand what was happening and didn't think that if the nightmare ever became a reality, he would look exactly like this unfamiliar guy. Yunho, as always, smiled in his usual manner and began to laugh. He asked his opponent if he felt the looks of despair that were thrown at him by his services. Chin found the strength to hit the ground with an axe and make cracks in the ground. He was able to get to his feet and said that Yunho was very mistaken. He clenched his teeth tightly and said that he was the great Chin Sachik and in order to be beaten to such a state you must be a real monster. But he couldn't sit on his feet for long and he dropped the axe from his hands and began coughing up blood. Pan looked at it all and said that Chin was a slave and anger. Otherwise the countless battles where you freed your strength and the shock accumulated from all these blows left deep wounds on him. Pan said that looking at the amount of blood that he had already Verka, most likely his wounds are deep and he can no longer fight. Yunho smiled again and said that he would like to play a little more, he can't fight anymore, so it's time to end. Chin gathered his will into a fist and tried to lift his earth axe. He took this big axe in two hands and raised it up to continue the battle. He got into a fighting stance and prepared to fight, and despite the fact that he had practically no strength left and blood was flowing all over his body and there were serious wounds inside his body, said to no one in a hoarse voice that he would fight to the very end and did not want to die like a coward. But Yunho was no longer going to play games with him and threw his sword at him, after which the sword passed through his body and caused a severe wound on his body. Chin started screaming very loudly in pain and couldn't believe that Yunho was capable of delivering such painful blows. But the sword continued to attack him from the other side and instead of killing him immediately, the blade of the sword struck at the painful points. Chin screamed very loudly in pain and could not restrain his scream, but still did not help him stop this pain. Yunho hated this vile bastard because he abused people and made the weak and helpless suffer from his power, so he wanted to make him suffer just like all these numbers were people. Yunho activated his ball's ability to hit his body from different directions. At some point, Lesser stopped and began to return to the hands of his owner, and a large amount of blood flew out of Chin's body. Yunho caught his sword in his hand and held it tightly without letting go. He began to walk forward with long strides and activated a spell called Sky Cleaving Blade Form. His sword began to emit a very strong blue energy that blinded everyone who looked at it. He said that in order to kill from his scum, he wants to use the union of blades and show this monster what real torture is before death. Yunho very quickly began to run forward towards his enemy in order to deal him the final blow and end him once and for all. Chin no longer looked much like a man and his body resembled a chopped piece of meat that was still able to stand on its feet. Blood was running down his face but he said that he was still alive and killing him was not as easy as it seemed. But Yunho solved this problem very quickly with one cutting blow, he divided his body into two parts. Pan watched him from the side all this time and thought that Chin Sachik was defeated once and for all and he would no longer be able to harm anyone. Yunho put all his anger into this blow and after he carried out his attack there was practically nothing left of the enemy's body. Blood scattered in different directions, stained everything it touched, now this place filled with human anger was always occupied by blood. Yunho smiled again with his wild gaze like a forest and said that no one from Nokrim would put him in front of his blade. The weather was nice and calm outside and the fog slowly dissipated between the mountains. The girl ran away very quickly along the forest road and was in a hurry somewhere. There was a baby on her head that hit her face and ran as if she was trying to escape from someone. She was breathing very heavily because she had been running for a very long time and had never stopped. But suddenly she saw that a man in red clothes was standing in front of her and was looking for someone. This man turned his head to the side in order to see who is now in the bushes because he had just heard some strange noise there. But when he looked in the direction where it was coming from, he saw no one and thought that it just seemed to him. Two warriors and blood consoles discussed among themselves that this girl should have run in this direction, but the second guy replied that it could have been wild animals. 
The girl hid on a tree branch and stood there calmly, trying not to attract too much attention. Suddenly another warrior from the blood cult appeared and said that if they did not find the girl, the lord would be very angry with them. He ordered everyone to go to the marked points and look for her as quickly as possible. The warriors divided into two groups and ran up in different directions, and the girl continued to stand on the branch and wait until they left from here. The main warrior of the blood said that these idiots can never do anything on their own and without his command they are absolutely useless. But suddenly he felt some strange noise behind him and stopped in place to listen. He turned his head back to see what was happening behind him. He paid attention to the top branch of the tree, but there was no one there and he thought that it just seemed to him. Cole Bandit Camp Monsoon fell to the ground and hit his face on the floor. Surin and Lee Ryan were shocked and they saw this one lying next to them. Surin said that she had already seen a lot during the time she managed the inn. But I couldn't even imagine that I would see the King of Death Cole Musuna tied up by some slave in front of her feet and Yunho replied that she shouldn't worry about him because he would make sure that this bastard didn't gain consciousness on the way to the Murum Alliance. Surin said that this should be provided to the undercover squad nearby and Yunho agreed with her and allowed it to be done. The shaman suddenly asked Yunho if he made sure that the king left this world painlessly and Yunho sighed heavily when he heard this question from the shaman. Pan suddenly appeared and smiled and said that he had made him fall to his knees from exhaustion after blocking his attacks with an axe and then cutting him in half with one blow of his blade. Pan was delighted with these events and said that blood gushed out like a fountain because of him and then rained from heaven. The shaman could barely restrain himself so as not to vomit from all the terrible things that Pan had just said. He looked at Yunho with a beleaguered look and said that he could have given him an easy death and there was no need to do everything so cruelly and he was not an animal and at least he should have been buried like a human being. Pan suddenly said that if the entire green forest fortress unsheathed their blades after this event, the young master would have to kill hundreds or even one thousand opponents with his blade. That's exactly why he made this death demonstrative so that there would be less trouble in the future and that's why the bandits of the Green Forest Fortress simply forgot how to hold a sword in their hands and they were so scared that someone even wet themselves. Yunho stood on the edge of the cliff and thought that if this was the main reason, then he had nothing more to add and apparently he was simply destined to meet one or two idiots wherever he went. But suddenly he noticed something very strange below and immediately turned his attention and decided to take a closer look. He saw how you were a strong man standing in front of you and looking straight at him. At that moment, clouds were flying in the sky and creating some incredible patterns and images of their forms. This man sat in the loda position and calmly waited for the young gentleman to approach him. Yunho stood right in front of him, crossed his arms over his chest and looked at this man in surprise, trying to understand why he was sitting here. Yunho listened carefully to this man and then asked if he was really asking to be accepted into Yunho's team he said that he definitely didn't expect this. The man replied that he was no longer part of the Green Forest Fortress and told the king of the forest that Alsib was chosen for what after he was branded a traitor. Yunho asked if he should accept him just because he is now homeless but the man replied that he is not just some beggar. The man said that he realized that the young gentleman was an unusual person as soon as he first saw him, and now he was finally convinced of this. He said in a very loud voice that the young master is the one who is stronger cold-blooded and more merciful than any other person and the one who is worthy of his loyalty until his last breath. Yunho answered in a dissatisfied voice that he wanted this man to tell him the benefits of loyalty to a bandit who made his living by extorting money and not his opinion, this bandit is absolutely useless. The man said that his name was Li Jaguan and he was a soldier before he became a bandit and he was a fairly competent general before he ran away from the imperial court because he could not accept the corruption of his commanders. He said that he is absolutely sure that there will be some use for him and he will allow him to join but Yunho answer for that he does not have a suitable place and has no intention of using the skills of this bandit. Pan suddenly said that this bandit would be a good cab driver because he used to serve in the army, but Yunho asked him how long he would continue to complain about this topic. Pan asked him to accept this guy, finally it's not so easy for a man to just bend the knee of his own free will and Yunho told Pan that if he wants to accept this guy then let him take it for himself. Pan smiled and invited the robber to join the Penga clan. Vitya writes well because their family roots go back to the army. Jaguan replied that he really appreciates this offer but he has already decided everything for himself and chose his master and is not going to change his decision. 
Han said that this guy is a real devotee and Yunho began to get angry because this damn bear is constantly pressuring him for pity. Some strange sounds were heard in the forest, as if someone was asking for help. This someone was running very fast, trying to escape pursuit and save his life. Yunho was thinking about this bandit and thinking about how he should make his decision, but suddenly he felt that he had a very bad headache. When he touched his face with his finger, he felt a strange sensation in his body, as if someone was in danger. Yunho turned his head towards the forest and looked carefully there to understand what was happening there now. Han of the young master, why did he stand up like that, as if something very terrible had happened and what was happening to him now? Yunho continued to look towards the forest and thought that this feeling was very familiar to him, he had experienced something similar several times before. The blood cult was chasing a girl who was trying with all her might to run away from them and did not throw blows with their swords after her. The girl had difficulty dodging these blows, she understood that she would not be able to dodge for long, but she must do everything possible to stay alive. She looked back and thought that she would definitely be captured and if she didn't throw them off now, she was bragging, then when reinforcements arrived she would have serious problems. She decided to turn around and run to meet them and get out, it seemed to her the only solution that could help get rid of them. But unfortunately she was unable to get through the penetration and received a very strong blow to her face with a fist and then fell to the floor. She felt very severe pain in her body and spun in the air several times and hit the ground as she fell. The warrior looked at her with his red eyes and realized that he had finally managed to grab this damn girl. She hit a tree trunk with her back and then received a severe wound that did not allow her to run further. She rolled down the tree trunk and fell on the floor, after which she lost consciousness for several seconds and could not move. She opened her eyes and saw that the opponents were approaching her closer and closer and she no longer had the opportunity to avoid them and save herself. They came closer to her and the main warrior asked how the girl was able to escape, she didn't look at all like the one who could hide from them. He said that he thought about it for a long time and decided to look at this situation from a different angle and realized that she was not trying to escape, but was pretending to run in to try to deceive them. They began to surround her and the leader said that she would now face the consequences of this decision. He spread his hands to the sides and said that she cursed them and lured them into thinking that they could catch her but in the end she fell right into their hands. The girl looked at these warriors in fear and did not understand what to do now because she was driven into a corner. The girl decided that she would defend herself to the end and therefore pulled out her blade and stood in a fighting position. The blood cult did not expect that I would resist them and the decision again surprised everyone. The leader raised his hand up and said that she needed to be careful because all the murders today were committed with this dagger and it angered the blood cult members. She opened her eyes wide and realized that eating was becoming scary, but at that moment she came up with a brilliant solution on how to get out of the trap's body. She presented a dagger to her neck and said that if they continue to play this comedy then she will kill herself. But this made the leader very angry and he realized that her manipulations were again disrupting his entire plan. She said that it would be better for them if they just let her go and let her leave calmly because she had already decided everything for herself a long time ago. She put the blades of the clinic to the larynx and said that if they don't believe her, they can test this blade on her and after that they won't be able to pull anything out of her. The leader needed to think carefully before making any decision because the situation was difficult. The leader said that her late father probably did not want her to do this and she should think carefully before committing this act. But she continued to hold the blade near her neck and with all her appearance showed that at any moment she could destroy herself. He said that most likely I had already been trained in self-defense from people like them and she should understand perfectly well how to resist such opponents. But she didn't understand how he knew all this and his words, then she understood that it was he who found her father's allies and convinced them to betray him. She made a dagger and attacked him in order to cut off his head because he was a real monster. But the leader put his hand up and blocked her blow and did not allow her to make her attack. He grabbed her head and hit her face both on the ground with all his strength and the girl could not resist such damage. The leader said that after he saw all her useless attempts to escape, he was really convinced that she was her father's daughter, but she screamed and ordered him to let her go immediately. A man suddenly appeared in the forest and ran very quickly to meet this place. He looked at her with an angry look and said that the blood lord told him to catch her and bring her alive, but if during the delivery process her arm breaks or something else, the Lord is unlikely to object. Yunho runs to this place at incredibly fast speed in order to understand the situation that is happening there. 
She screamed very loudly in pain and said that she would kill for this idiot, but the leader said that after he broke some part of her body, she would not be able to resist. He grabbed her hand very tightly and tried to break her bones. But suddenly he saw before his eyes some guy who ordered him to immediately release this girl. Yunho stood in front of him and looked with his glowing blue eyes, which had absolutely no fear and his hair fluttered in the wind. He raised his head up and looked at this guy carefully and asked who he was. The leader said that no idiot in the world would call himself an ally of this stupid girl and this guy most likely does not understand what is happening here. But Yunho continued to insist on his own and said that he must let this girl go immediately. He radiated incredibly strong energy from his body and shouted very loudly not to let it go immediately. His scream was so strong that it created a sound wave that was capable of throwing this enemy aside. The leader could not stay on his feet and flew to the side as if he had just been hit with a hammer. He crashed into a tree and hit very hard during the collision and at that moment the rest of the wars did not understand what was happening here. She was shocked when she saw the power that the stranger possessed, she could not believe that with the help of one voice he was able to throw this bastard. Yunho stood in front of her and looked at her like a real savior, he couldn't allow a squad of these bloody monsters to harm this girl. She looked at him with delight and admired him, she did not believe that there were people who were capable of doing something like that. Yunho looked at her with his blue eyes and thought that his intuition had not let him down and this girl actually needed help. He remembered the moments of his past life and thought that even though 1000 years had passed, he began to live a human life that was completely different from his past life. But he felt that this was very familiar, as if the situation was repeating itself because of his life and could not remain indifferent. He asked her if she had really been reborn and said that he didn't even know that it was she who was being chased by a blood cult. But the girl didn't understand at all what he was talking about and asked him again what he meant. In a past life, he didn't look at her the same way he does now and said that his name is Un Ho. He decided to introduce himself to her and did it exactly the same as in his previous life and said that his name was Ha Un Ho. She looked at him with a surprised, frightened gaze and could not believe that he had come to save. Yun Ho asked this girl what her name is now in this new life, but she continued to look at him in surprise and fear. In a past life she said her name was Wa Yong and he were looking forward to her saying her name in this world. The girl said in a trembling voice that her name was Wa Yong and she were wondering what his reaction would be after these words. Yun Ho looked at her and thought that her face, her body, her smell and even her name were the same as in her previous life. He sat down on one knee to be closer to her and said that he didn't know whether she would believe it or not, but she was the woman he once loved. She opened her eyes wide and looked at her in surprise but didn't know how to react, but her cheeks turned red after hearing what she heard. The leader of the bloody cult stood up and said that he could no longer look at this crazy idiot. He put his hand forward and ordered to immediately attack him and kill him as quickly as possible after that take this girl hostage. The guys put their balls forward and were preparing to attack the greenhouse in order to kill him and carry out the order of their leader. Wa Young began to look around and was afraid that there were too many opponents and Yun Ho might not be able to cope with them. He looked at these opponents and realized that they would not be difficult to deal with but he was afraid for her and therefore asked her to stay behind. Yun Ho pulled out his sword to launch an attack and finish off these opponents as soon as possible. Powerful explosion occurred in the forest after using the blade owned by Yun Ho. The explosion destroyed a lot of trees and few could survive after such an attack. Particles of grass and leaves that suffered from this blow began to fly into the air. Hua Young stood near the tree and trembled because she had never seen anything like this before and could not believe that Yun Ho was able to deal with all the opponents with one attack. Yun Ho stood in the center around him lay the cut bodies of enemies of which practically nothing remained. Yun Ho said in a confident voice that this time he will protect her and will not allow anyone to offend her or cause her pain. He looked at her with a loving gaze and smiled so that she felt calm. Wa Yong doesn't understand what's going on and this whole situation would raise a hundred questions in her head to which she couldn't find the answer, but for some reason she felt calm next to him and he seemed very familiar and dear to her. The carriage went back to the city and brought all the team members home. Jaguan was accepted into the team and took the place of the coachman to drive the horses and take the cart to the city, he was incredibly happy that he was accepted into the team and sang songs all the way. The assassin was sitting on the roof of the carriage and dissatisfaction was clearly visible on his face. Surin was also very unhappy with the situation that had developed and there were many thoughts in her head that did not give her peace. The shaman noticed that Surin's head was bothered by some thoughts, 
he became interested in what was happening to her and why she was so upset. Lee Ryan looked at her and suddenly said that she shouldn't be upset about the current situation, but she didn't fully understand what he meant. Lee said that he understands Ms. Surin's feelings because the young master closed his eyes to her words and he did his best to save the girl in trouble. Answered in an irritated voice that in this world you never know how things really are and there are no guarantees that she does not accept some kind of blood that will lead the young master straight into a trap. She remembered his appearance and said that he was too carefree and she didn't understand why he didn't take his eyes off her. The shaman looked up and bit his lip for a few seconds, wondering why the young master was behaving this way. The shaman suddenly spoke about the power of the lady, did he really just hear something he shouldn't have heard? The shaman, surprised, asked Mrs. Surin if she was really jealous of him, but Surin replied that this was some kind of nonsense and she did not feel anything like that for him. In the cave, the burner was worn out and you could hear the logs cracking inside this bone and the ashes flying up. Wayong she said that the blood cult does not need her, but the fighting skins of her family and the poets for a reason do not hunt for her and do not give her peace. Yunho asked her what kind of art this was and Wayong answered that, to be honest, this is just a footwork technique that allows you to walk on air and is not at all what the unsurpassed master turned his attention to. She sat with folded hands near the fire and said that they, through the stubbornness of the rams, were trying to give away their secrets for a reason unknown to her. Yunho thought about her words and said that they still want to get her despite the mediocrity of the technique and maybe there is some secret way to strengthen the internal energy of Qi. At that moment, she thought about the words and thought that he might actually be right. Hua Young asked him in a surprised voice where he learned about all this and Yunho realized that his guesses were correct. Yunho said that a side effect of studying the art of blood cult makes their qi instability is most likely the main reason and their internal qi did not have yin at all, but there was so much yang in it that even he was surprised. Martial arts based on only one type of energy often have limitations, if they are looking for a way to balance their internal energy, they will not necessarily find it. Hua Young asked him if her family's technology was the solution that they had been looking for for so long and Yunho replied that these were just his guesses, there was no evidence about them. She lowered her head down and said that after this, she found out it was possible and the reasons, it only made her even more furious and did not sacrifice her father and family just to go beyond the limits of her capabilities. Yunho, I looked down and realized that she had to go through a lot lately and it's very difficult for her now. Yunho said that she said that she was going to the Muram Alliance for help and the girl replied that this is exactly what she wants. Yunho asked her what she plans to do after they accept her request and she replied that she plans to restore her family. Yunho asked what she was going to do after her family was restored. Hua Young said in a trembling voice that her father died and she would take revenge on those who forced her family to go through all this horror. Yunho asked her in a calm voice if she really thought that they would sit with their hands folded and watch her hatch a plan together. Yunho thought that she was as careless as in her previous life when she sent Yu Kai to the world because of her brother and therefore decided to tell her that they will remain a threat even after the hookah agrees to help. Yunho explained to her that it is the poets who need to put revenge for their family first. Hua Yong she said that she really wants this but she doesn't have enough strength to make it happen. Yunho replied that she was very lucky because his teacher asked him for something when he was still alive and he asked him to cut out the entire blood cult if I ever managed to reappear in this world again. He said that it was an honor for him to help her, and besides that, he would fulfill the promise he made to his teacher and Hua Yong, surprised, asked him if the young master would help her again. Yunho was a little upset and asked if she was against him helping her and she replied that she was not at all. Hua Young hung her head down and said that sometimes she feels like there's nothing she can do to help anyway. And besides, she literally just said that she has nothing that she could give in return for the help of someone as great as Yunho. He turned around as soon as he heard these words and said that the main thing was that she was not against it and that would be enough. Yunho turned his head and said that he would not be able to sleep peacefully if he knew that he was constantly being followed, but now he can do so because from now on he will look after her. Hua Young thanked him for agreeing to help her and said that she would try to sleep peacefully. Yunho looked at the moon and turned to God to Thagata and said that he felt that God was somehow involved in what he and Hua Young met again. He said that God could have been more generous, but his act is already some kind of miracle. Yunho said that it would be much better if she experienced much less pain in her new life and blamed God for having such great power and such a tiny brain. 
Well, suddenly he heard some strange sound and decided to stop. He turned his head to see what was happening to her now. But she was already asleep because she was very tired today after everything that happened to her and fell asleep as sweetly as a baby. Yunho looked at her and thought that she needed a good rest, but he did not expect that she would fall so quickly. He covered her with a blanket so that she would not freeze and adjusted her pillow so that she could sleep more softly. He raised his head up again and began to look at the moon and thought that if he had not had memories of past lives, he would definitely have mistaken himself for a madman. Yunho thanked her for being able to trust him and allowing him to help in this difficult matter. But suddenly clouds began to cover the moon and the sky turned black. The sky darkened and smoke and steam appeared and there were only sharp rocks around. Inside the rock there was a geyser with bloody water in which there was a man. This man had an emaciated body, his spine and ribs were visible on his body. A man came up to him with his hands behind my head and watched him splash in this bloody water. This person said that the celestial network was interrupted and they lost track of the girl and also the location of some cult members remains unknown. The gentleman came out of the water and touched his subject's head with his hand, after which the subject fearfully sat down on his knees. The master said that someone would catch the girl eventually, but the servant asked the blood demon lord not to kill him. But the lord smiled and said that there was no demon blood here and his syllable was most likely mistaken. At this moment, the ruler otherwise exhausted his body, a large number of veins appeared on his head and he felt incredible pain. The lord sucked the life energy from his body and thus restored his life energy. Slow could no longer resist and at some point he simply fell to the floor. His body was emaciated, reminiscent of a skeleton in which there was absolutely no vital energy anymore. When the lord sucked all the life out of this subject body, he began to look a little stronger and younger. He raised his head up, his eyes glowed red, he said that he was reborn as a blood lord by the will of heaven itself. At this moment, black clouds covered the moon more and more, red energies radiated from it so strongly that it almost reached the sky and touched it. The next morning the weather was wonderful and clouds floated across the autumn sky as always. Suddenly, a strange noise was heard in the mountains, as if someone was making an incomprehensible sound. A guy with white hair in a black jacket sat on a stone and did not understand what had just happened. He felt that there was clearly a stench of blood in the air, which he absolutely did not expect to hear and did not understand where this smell was coming from. The man who stood on the edge of the cliff said that he just wants to go down from the heavenly mountain but this will not happen and the guy with white hair replied that it is true and he feels it. The man looked at him with a dissatisfied look and said that before the movement of the heavenly demon, they would immediately put all their forces on their ears and the tension from this would cause big skirmishes that would develop into huge problems. He said that the history of their cult of the heavenly demon would be over, but a guy with white hair sat on a rock and asked why it would suddenly remain in history. He smiled and said that he just wanted to enjoy the remnants of her youth and that nothing else interested him now.